they break out with a vengeance that we will never, ever again be in this situation. That breakout comes in the 1400s with the Portuguese. And they, 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 they will wreak vengeance on the rest of the world to control trade routes, economic territories. Where is the wheat grown? Where is the gold? Where is the barley? We will get control of these things because we will never be caught in the dark ages again. In Cuba, they have a Spanish dish. It's called Moros y Cristianos, which means Moors and Christians. And this dish consists of white rice, which is the white Christians, and black beans, which represents the black Moors. So this theme of a racial battle disguised as a religious battle, that's still in popular culture today. When you conquer a civilization, you're actually conquering their God. Because what do you do? You change the name of God once you change their religion, once you change their culture. So the name of God is based upon how you create God. In other words, my perception of God now rules. It's initially about greed, but it's about greed coming from a, a culture. European culture has always been a war culture. Going back as far as you can go back to the, the father's Germanic tribe, to the Vikings, the culture has been based on down of society. When they break out of that, they break out with a vengeance that we will never, ever again be in this situation. That breakout comes in the 1400s with the Portuguese. And they, 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 they will wreak vengeance on the rest of the world to control trade routes, economic territories. Where is the wheat grown? Where is the gold? Where is the barley? We will get control of these things because we will never be caught in the dark ages again. In Cuba, they have a Spanish dish. It's called Moros y Cristianos, which means Moors and Christians. And this dish consists of white rice, which is the white Christians, and black beans, which represents the black Moors. So this theme of a racial battle disguised as a religious battle, that's still in popular culture today. Grace and peace, everybody. I'm going to try to see if I can shut that on. Yeah, let me shut this one down right here and see if I can pull this up. That's part of Hidden Colors. That's part of Hidden Colors white supremacy. We're at war. We're at war with false teachers. We're at war with deception. And deception runs really deep. When we, when we start dealing with the Bible, the word of God, it, it's crazy because the Bible Almost more than anything else, the Bible warns against false teachers and deception, false teachers and deception. And we're at war with a couple of things. We, when we deal with occultists, when we deal with the devil, the wicked one, he got a couple of tools in his toolbox that he used. And some he prefer more than others. Some have become really popular and dominant in the earth. Lust and greed and pride. These are various things. But we're at war with white supremacy. And they're talking about the religion of white supremacy. But the problem is a lot of people don't know white supremacy. We're at war with supremacy in general, a chosenness in general. I'm the one that's above you. So we're at war with black supremacy. We're at war with white supremacy. We're, re we're at war with religious um, supremacy, occultic supremacy, all of this stuff. We're at war with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to play part two and we're going to get into, I believe this is part two of um, a couple of small clips and then we'll get into this supremacy and we'll and we'll get into some stuff. I'm going to bring up some of the bishop. If the bishop want to put some stuff up in the book and we're going and we going to check some stuff out. Fair use. Good morning, everybody. Period. They became churches. The Moors then, when they came into Europe, they had already had elements of ancient African wisdom, which allowed them to advance in ways that the Europeans had never imagined. And so in order to survive in this hostile environment, they had to go underground. The same thing happened with the Europeans, who also were close to the Moors and other Arabs who had pieces of this knowledge. They found that this information allowed them to reinterpret uh, the history of the world, the science of the world, and that conflicted with, uh, with Christians, uh, specifically the Roman Catholic Church. So they also had to ban those people, and that led to the development of what we now call today secret societies, or more specifically, societies of secrets. And those secrets were the ancient educational knowledge that had been developed in Africa thousands of years earlier. Islam will rise up in the course of history by the 6th century 
will cut off Europe from world trade by dominating North Africa and the Middle East. Europe was cut off totally from Asia, India, and Africa in terms of trade and access to wealth. So Europe would plunge into what we call the Dark Ages. But it was an economic depression that led to a complete breakdown of society. When they break out of that, they break out with a vengeance that we will never, ever again be in this situation. That breakout the period where they originally mosques and which period they became churches. The Moors then, when they came into Europe, they had already had elements of ancient African wisdom, which allowed them to advance in ways that the Europeans had never imagined. And so in order to survive in this hostile environment, they had to go underground. The same thing happened with the Europeans, who also were close to the Moors and other Arabs who had pieces of this knowledge. They found that this information allowed them to reinterpret uh, the history of the world, the science of the world, and that conflicted with, uh, with Christians, uh, specifically the Roman Catholic Church. So they also had to ban those people, and that led to the development of what we now call today secret societies, or more specifically, societies of secrets. Um, they're arguing that secret societies and a secret knowledge have been um, have been handed down, help Europe rule. Y'all have heard me say that multiple times. That's how come I believe that secret societies and studying them are so important, especially how they worked or how they moved hand in hand with religious, religious or secret or, or, or different organizations such as the Catholic Church. They've been involved in them and they've been at war with them and, for, and different things. But um, I want to show y'all something else, and I'm going to ask y'all something. It's interesting that y'all see what um, Alton said. Alton said it's a pseudo, where is that at now? He said that it's a pseudo salad. And we got to be careful because what we got going on is definitely a pseudo salad. It's a mixture of everything. So y'all remember that for when we move on, for when we move on to some of this other stuff. But we're talking about false teachings and and um supremacy as the tools the different tools they're talking about white supremacy as religion and remember we have said multiple times on this channel so in case anybody new come in here and i gotta block them y'all already know we say multiple times that there is a, these people have been flying supremacy under the title of um christianity and this is something that we got to admit. Let me see if I can pull some of this up right here. We're dealing with supremacy and various things right now. I'll get into the occult teachings and why the new age is dangerous. And it's going to be all tied together with supremacy and how these people have come down. But listen to this right here. U.S. belongs to us. Cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Instead of hating the Jewish people, you should love us. You should kiss our feet, you fool. We're the chosen people, not you. You should actually look at the truth and understand that the Jewish people are the greatest gift to mankind. The Gentile who listens to us, the idea is please. The Jewish people are the greatest gift. Alton, we're, we're Alton, come on up to the front here. The Jewish people are the greatest gift to mankind. Forget God so loved the world that he gave his own. Forget that gift right there. Before we get on these other folk, let's, let's see what these folks are in. Let's see what these folks are saying. Fair use, thank you. Please begin to search and to start educate yourself. You as a non-Jewish person, you have the right to become a Jew, but that's not what we're here to teach you here today. You don't have an obligation. You can die as a Gentile and go to heaven of the Gentiles. All you have to do is to follow the one and only one book of God, which is the Torah. Torah in Hebrew means instructions. It's instructions for the Jewish nation. It's also instructions to all the Gentiles. You have to learn the seven law of Noah. You can Google it. You have it all over this website. We explain it. No hide. You have to be a good person. Right. You cannot hate anybody because of race, especially not the Jewish people because they are the chosen people of God. You can't hate anybody, especially. I, I'm going to play this one more game. Let this soak in. He loves them very much. Oh, supremacy is moving strong out here. Everybody want to be God's chosen. Everybody want to be. Who don't want to be special right now? Just look all across social media. Everybody want to be special. Everybody want to get their shine on. Hating them is considering hating God himself. You won the country. U.S. belongs to us. 
cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Instead of hating the Jewish people, you should love us. You should kiss our feet, you fool. We're the chosen people, not you. You should actually look at the truth and understand that the Jewish people are the greatest gift to mankind. Every Gentile who listens to us, the idea is please begin to search and to start educate yourself. You as a non-Jewish person, you have the right to become a Jew, but that's not what we're here to teach you here today. You don't have an obligation. You can die as a Gentile and go to heaven of the Gentiles. All you have to do is to follow the one and only one book of God, which is the Torah. Torah in Hebrew means instructions. It's instructions for the Jewish nation. It's also instructions to all the Gentiles. You have to learn the seven law of Noah. You can Google it. You have it all over this website. We explain it. No height. You have to be a good person. Right. You cannot hate anybody because of race, especially not the Jewish people because they are the chosen people of God. So that's for born again Rome right there. So when y'all come and, and when y'all get the, like when we get the banging and blowing at Nathaniel and all them other folk, they ain't the only one with this chosen doctrine. Folk moving around with that Torah talking about they chosen. I'm gonna let it play. He loves them very much. Hating them is considering hating God himself. Hating them? Now, is Israel, this is a, I think Rome, Van Harrison, glad you're here. Good morning, Elder. Now, hating, hating Israel, whoever Israel, we're going to stop for a minute. I don't care whoever Israel is. Let's deal with this right here. Whoever Israel is, hating them is the equivalent of hating God or it's like hating God. It's on that devil. Type of one, type of one, if y'all agree with that right there. Type of one, if y'all agree with that right there. Now we're going to get into so Now we could go ahead and get on into it right now. Let's come on and get on to the, now, 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 now them, them was the light-skinned Jew. Now let's go to these black Jews right here. This Bishop Nathaniel right here. Let's, let's see what Bishop Nathaniel talking about right here. Fair you. Somebody put that in there. The pictorial history of Israel. All right, what do, now, now Jacob or uh, Reuben sound like light skin. Now remember what we teach over here. It's light skin folk, dark skin folk. We 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 all things jury over here, all things Israel over here. We deal with a lot of that stuff right there. Now look at the book. Look at the author's name. That don't sound like somebody that look like me. That name, at least from a little bit I know, living here in New York City, being around, because you know, outside of Israel, there's more of them over here than anywhere else on the face of the earth. New York City, I'm talking about. New York, that name don't look like somebody that look like me, but so let's look at what he's saying and let's examine what the bishop is saying. The leader, we dealing with prophets and liars, false prophets and liars and deception. That's what we dealing with right here. Inside, take a look unto thy seed. What do y'all see? You see black Jews, black Israelites working in ancient Egypt. Let's see what this is from. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechmir, governor and vizier, at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. What? So wait a minute, let me see. Um, Van Harris, who else is in here? Van Harris? I, I want to ask the not Rome, you believe there's black Jews, right? That's not, is that the argument? Van Harris, you believe there's some black Jews running around here? Just saved, you believe it's some black Jews running around here? Alton, you believe it's some black Jews running around here? Type of one. Type of one, fair use. What color are these Israelites? What color are they? This is ancient artifacts, ancient black. They are painted as black in the tombs. All right, here's Harper's Bible Dictionary. This is page 331. All right, so he just gave y'all one book. Now he's going to another book. That's good. That's okay. That's good. I like that. I like that. Let me go back and I'm going to look at the comments. Um, yes, one, of course there is. Okay. All right. No. So that's not the problem. So that's not the problem, right? 
All right. I just want to make sure on here. That's not the problem. Nobody saying nobody saying Jews are all white folk. Nobody over here saying that. Let's see what doctrine is being pushed. Let's see what doctrine is being pushed and see if it's the same tools that the other that the wicked one has used. Broad brushing. Those are tools. Stereotyping. Those are tools. Insert. Generalizing those are tools. 701 BC, Assyrian king Sennacherib conquered most of Judah, including the fortress city of Lachish. The victory was recorded in remarkable detail on base reliefs at his Nineveh palace. This scene is poignant testimony to the plight of his victims, who were deported with only what they could carry on their backs. Let's take a look at Judah. All right, wait a minute. I can't even start good. I can't even start off good. This is a pastor right here, y'all. And I tell y'all, y'all laughing, y'all joke. Preachers come around here. Plenty of elders come around here. But one thing we ain't going to do, play with them. They come around here. They're going to do the Lord's work. And that's answer questions and, and, and exhort and teach that writ. That's what they're going to do. They come around here. They just don't sit around here and twiddle their thumbs. So we got questions for them over here. That's why Timothy Isaac wanted to come over here because he know the elders, he know the bishops in the Lord Church, he know them, them light skinned professors is listening. A couple of seminary students come through over here. Y'all can say what they want. They coming through different over here. Then they all say, Sakari, a lot of them go over there, all of them believe the same thing. We got a different crowd over here, so it's different. So people come and they want to jump on because they know that the church is here and the church is asking some questions. They know Israel here. They know all Israel ain't campus is coming over here. They know all Israel ain't preaching race doctrine is coming over here. So they want to come over here to fight. Heretics want to come over here. Black power folk want to come over here. A lot of folk want to come over here. Why they want to come over here and spew their stuff thinking they coming to teach us. But no way, you don't get the floor. You're going you're gonna to answer questions. We're going to reason out this book. That's why they come over here. Now, listen to what he's saying. We got to look at this, John Williams. Just say, let's just wait a minute now. Elder Van Harris, who's a preacher in the Lord's Church, yes. I believe there are some, but not as many as the claim. So you don't believe everybody that came over on the slave ships or a large number. Okay, and that's kind of fair to where I think a lot of people, if y'all agree with that type one, that could be fair to what a lot of people are thinking that um, there's individuals arguing what's the number, historically, what's the number. And we're gonna, and I'm gonna go, and, and, tr and trust me, I'm gonna touch a little bit tomorrow night. We getting it on, not publicly, cause I can't, I can't talk about this. I'm gonna show the Stephen Darby, but I can't talk good on what I need to talk good tomorrow night. We're gonna get it on, on the dark side of apologetics. But we're gonna talk today why apologetics is important, cause we've always had false teachers, and we've always had people from the gate to counter false claims, from the gate to counter false claims. And I'm gonna help that, and I'm gonna do what I, I'm gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna help the apologists out. I ain't no apologist, but I'm gonna help them folk out. I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna do y'all like, I'm gonna do y'all like that brother Carson is talking about. Cause they're at war with y'all. Occultists are at war with y'all and y'all, and y'all running around like it's all good. It ain't all good. And we gotta stand up and do what they've been doing from the first century, what the original disciples of Christ been doing, and that's defending the faith. So, let me see what y'all say about this. He said, yes, I believe that, but the numbers are the beat. So the number, so nobody coming, pushing, like we all crazy here. We pushing blue-eyed folk over here. Blue-eyed folk rule the planet. Blue-eyed Jesus and them was blue-eyed. Noah was blue-eyed. Mary was blonde here. Nobody teaching that, but the deceivers would come here and act like that's what we believe and we teach. Watch out for the deceivers. Now, I'm going to give y'all a few keys. How can we tell a deceiver? That's what we're going to deal with. One, they broad brush. Remember that right there? We always talk about all deceivers come and broad brush. All cops are wicked. All black women are whores. All. Anytime you hear all, you know you're dealing with a deceiver. They might be self, they might be self-deceived and attempting to share with you, therefore deceiving others. Some are wickedly, deliberately doing it, and others aren't. But let's let this keep going because everywhere, I'm going to tell y'all a problem. Unlimited keys, you got to, everywhere I see you folk, I see light-skinned folk. When the light-skinned folk came around, 
That's the question for all limited keys right now. When the light-skinned folk came around, because y'all say y'all gave us Kabbalah, y'all say Maimonides, y'all say Josephus, they was all black. When the light-skinned folk came around talking down on black people, Stephen Williams, good morning, brother. That's a fair question. When the light-skinned ones came around controlling and writing books, talking about this is their book. They ain't just put it When they came around and started ruling the priesthood, and the Pharisees. This is a fair question. Because this is where the conspiracy come in, right? Conscious community got a conspiracy that the Moors were black and they had the secret science. Then they took it to turn in the Scottish right. And they ran Europe and they came over here and established this country off of Freemasonry, which was black teachers from the beginning. Israelites got the same exact teaching. This was our teaching in the beginning. Light-skinned folks stole it. Light-skinned folk running around here. This is jury. And this is our teacher from the beginning. Mass coat, same thing. So we're going to get into it. So we're going to get into it. Let's let's read. Do y'all see this? This is the snack on guard. Look at the people of Judah. Look, look at their hair. All right, let's look. Let's take a look. Ain't nobody ain't nobody scared of no original man, Doctor. Let's, let, let's take a look right here. Let's take a look what they look like right here. And look, and look a little like some people argue peasy or nappy. All right, he, this is a pictorial teaching. He's showing us pictures. Okay, okay, I remember. I remember my little niece used to do that. They want to show you pictures in the book, and they gonna narrate a story. We all right. Let's look at pictures now. If you know, we gotta keep the same energy. Y'all type of one. We gotta keep the same energy. If he wanna look at pictures, we gonna look at pictures. Let's look at some pictures and go back to some of the furthest pictures we got, and let's examine the pictures in Ethiopia. And jury open. Let's let's look at the pictures and let's go back, cause the cause the cause the pictures line up with the doctrine or the teachings and the people. Let's examine some of these. And a lot of times, many many pictures can be what they call primary sources if it comes from the time. Y'all think that's fair, right? That's how they taught me in school. I dropped out, but I remember a little bit of something. So let's look at the pictures. Remember, nobody over here saying everybody in the Bible is blue eyed. Let the demons tell y'all that if y'all want to. We don't believe that over here. Fair use. Look at their hair. This is a stone relief. Look at the little boy. These are not Caucasians. These are not Edomites. These are black men with cornrows. Two A. I'm gonna look at picture one. Picture 2A and 2B. Fresco All right, so them black folk with cornrows. The Israelites wore cornrows back in the days, right? I don't know. Jesus had dreads or Jesus had cornrows and Jesus had blonde long hair. Which one? That's what we got going on right here. But we're going to keep going. But we're just asking questions. Did Jesus have dreads? Did Jesus have cornrows? Or did Jesus have what the first century Israelites wore? They sure enough ain't had no barbershops. So we're going to throw Fervent Charity, Jason Brown. We're going to throw them in the garbage right now. We gonna get rid of them. They sure enough ain't had no bar. They sure enough ain't had no barber shops. In the sense that we know them today, with every corner, at least up here in the city. Hey, you. The Western Wall of the third century AD synagogues at Dura Europus is sitting on the Euphrates River in Syria. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So now the bishop is bringing up. So he acknowledged Dura Europa. He acknowledged that. Did y'all just hear that? He acknowledged that, right? So the head IUIC, one of the largest, most organized Israelite camps, Bishop himself, prophet of God, acknowledged Dura Europa. Now let's see the medicine that he gives us. Because we don't take the medicine. We want the medicine. But let's see the same medicine you give us. They gonna give you. And let's see. And let's see how this one pan out. The right to be depicts Moses three times from far right to left. Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Let's see what Moses and the ancient Israelites look like. Bang. There's Moses. Okay, that's Moses. How Moses look to you? 
Okay, that's Moses. Let it keep playing. Then we'll go back and look at a, a bunch of pictures. You know, they were at war. The city was all covered up. And then I think it was 1932, 1935. They were going to war. They were digging trenches. And the uh, military men accidentally found Dura Europa, accidentally found the synagogues underneath there. So we're going to look at the frescoes. We're going to look at what's on the wall. Let's go. Let's examine all of what's on the wall. But he's showing us paintings from the time. That's what he's showing us right here. They, well, they don't really look like me. But maybe, or Judah Rise, maybe you and Terry Pope, maybe Sister Lewis, maybe they look like you, but they don't look like me. He just showed us other pictures. Now he's showing us this. Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here. All right, y'all see that, right? Y'all see what he's saying, right? All right. Here and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. That is that subjective? Is that subjective? Moses look black to y'all in this one. The hand of God is black. That's Aaron. That's Aaron right there. Blackity black black. I wish she was a little. I don't know how 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 Aaron looked to you, y'all. How Aaron looked to you, y'all. Cause he's taking you to sources. Matter of fact, let me stop this for a second right here. Let me stop this for a second right here. Um, let me see. Let me see what we can do right here because we gotta. Cause I want to ask. I want to just save y'all people. Y'all y'all gotta. I don't wanna. I don't wanna deal with the deception. Dura Europa, Dura Europa. Y'all heard this is the you. This, that's what he used. That's what he said, right? We're gonna read a little bit about it, but let's look at let's look at some stuff. Let's just see what's there. I can I can make this a little bigger, right? What what this look like to y'all right here? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I, I. ah. I don't know. I'm a little. I'm a little different from y'all. I just don't see what I want to see in some pictures. I don't see what I want to see in some pictures. I don't see what I want to see in some pictures. All right, this is Moses. Let's let's look at it again better. I know they can do some stuff with some computers, but let's look at it again better. That's Moses. Shoot, he looked like them. He look like them brown people over there. Now, would he consider black? I often ask y'all about Bin Laden, but y'all act like them people that look like Bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. They wasn't around. All right, let me just let me just let's just look at a few of these. Let's just Dura Europa. Let's just look at a few of these. You see the name right there, right? Y'all see the name right there, right? We'll go into the history and everything. Let's just let's just look. Let's just take our time and look. Let's just take our time and look, because the bishop teaching us, we might as well look at these right here. All the same, all the same. Dang, it just don't look. I don't know, y'all. Let me just look and see, because the bishop, the holy prophet is teaching us. These look like what you would call an African-American, a Negro in America. Let's look. Let's just keep on looking. These are original. These are original. That's the wall right there. These are all original. Let's just keep on looking. Dura Europa. What the hell is going on here? All original. All the black original black man. That's who that's who that, that, that this from the second century. They believe this from the second century. Oh well, that light skinned people could have took over from the time of Jesus and it was light skinned ones fighting the dark skinned ones, but he brought up Dura Europa. He brought this up. He brought this up right here. Let me just look at a few more. This is what he brought up now. So if the bishop brought it up and the leader of one of the largest movement, what am I going to do? This is the bishop teaching us right here. Man of God. This is him teaching us right here. Let me just look. Let me just, let's just look at a few more. This is worth, this is worth, because listen, if it's original, so if it's, if it's primary, at least from the second century, if they look like this. If this is from the second century and so many of them look like this, because this look like the light skinned folk that they say it come from the 13th tribe that are Khazars that, that convert this look like them. So the 13th tribe, we got to throw that out the window. We got to throw that out the window because light skinned folk, we got light skinned folk six, seven hundred years earlier. 
dang, every time I look around, I see dark-skinned folk and I see light-skinned folk. So I hear a lot of Israel say it doesn't make a difference with the skin color. But then I hear so many people come through that want to tear down Jewry or those people that call themselves Jews that are light-skinned. Like they can't substantiate their doctrine without tearing those other folk down. But they say it's not about skin color, but they're going and using these folk called light skin folk. This they source. Oh, yes, 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 yes. In Crown Heights in Israel, this their source. They're anthropologists, they're archaeologists. This they, they use this source right here. So now Israel, and I ain't mad if he Judah. I'm not mad if Nathaniel is Judah. But 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 Jews, you do y'all are using the same primary sources from the second century. That's kind of, no, no, we're going to take our time on this page. We're going to take our time right here because he brought it up. Nobody brought it up. Oh, look at that. Oh, them folk lights. Oh, they, they too light for me. They bright like that. Mm -mm, uh -uh, look at it. Y'all see that right there? Alton. Hey, yo, do me a favor. Come and talk to me. That You see how that man light skin? He looked like he favored these people on this wall more than me. More than me. Kushite original man. More than me. Who look, me, Alton, or him? Who look more like those people from the second century on that wall? And we're not saying that they, oh, and, 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 and people like him, folk like him, they been bear witness with Ethiopian Jews. They bear witness with dark Jews in India. Ah, yes, they do. They bear witness with brown Jews in China. Ah, yes, they do. It's this American mess. It's this American Israel that I'm scared of and the rest of the planet. The rest of the planet is looking like what is going on. Y'all got a unique form of y'all own interpretation. I know, I know, I know. We ain't talking about skin doctrine, but this Syrian, 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 where's Syria at? Where Ruddy Brew at? Because he said, he said the Hamites were in Syria. And most of Israel in here was, was like, most of Israel ain't even agree with some of what he was saying. I played this video. Come on, Sister Lewis. Come on, Sister Lewis. That's what they call primary. That's why Nathaniel went there. That's why he went there. So let me, let's go look at a few more. It could be whitewashed. It could be whitewashed. Let's look at a few more. Let's just look around. Let's just look around. Let's just look around. What else we see over here? What else we see over here? All right, we've seen some of that one right there. Let me make this thing smaller again. Let's scroll on down here. Scroll on down on this side. Let's see what else we see. They got the outside. This is the exact. This is the exact right here. That's Moses. He just showed us that picture. He just showed us that picture. There you go. Let's 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 let's, let's nap. Yeah, let me leave. Let me leave that there right there for a minute. Let's let this soak in. That looked like that looked like all the Israelites have been on my channel. That showed they face. Some of these folks, we ain't never seen they face, but the ones that showed they face, that look like them. I can tell y'all right now, I ain't got no beef. They don't look like me. None of these folk right here don't look like me. Them folk don't look like me. I, I, I. Then they get offended when, when people come in here and try to be deep and spiritual. I know him no more after the flesh. These folk don't look like me, y'all. These folk don't look like me. And I'm not mad. I can follow the God of Israel without being Israel in the flesh. Hey, y'all, that don't bother me at all. Many people did. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the root they call the God of Israel, Enoch followed, he wasn't Israel. Oh, so I'm not confused at all. This is the site they started digging, digging, and one of the greatest discoveries of this time. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Let me just go on back. Let the bishop and them speak. We're gonna let the we're gonna let the prophets speak. We're gonna let the prophets of Israel speak. Let me let me pull the screen back up. I want to make sure I'm on the right screen. I'm gonna stop sharing this one right here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking at, I'm just looking at what they're showing. I'm just looking at what they're showing. But if I come and I already got a preconceived notion in my mind, in my sick mind, black as I am, black as I, y'all see my picture up on here, black as I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze myself in that just because of a belief. No, brother, I'm not. Come on, brother. I don't want to believe that much. That belief ain't powerful on me where I'm reading and seeing myself. That's the problem. A lot of us, this, 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 a self, a self for Jesus. We putting ourselves all in the text. We putting ourselves all in the garden. We putting ourselves everywhere. That's what's going on here. Let me share some more of this. Let's keep on going. Just the holy bishop. 
the holy prophets of God. Now, we're going to compare what the prophets teach or what they're saying right now, because somebody's false teachers. Skin color, we ain't got no beef. I don't agree with that skin color idea, but we know the Europeans have used supremacy. We know Elijah Muhammad, 5% of blacks have used supremacy. Supremacy is a tool that's being used. We're going to see what the text got to say. I'm going to see if Peter preached his skin color. I'm going to see if Peter preached what default preaching. That's the best way to compare it. That's how come, and let me bring up some Walter Martin. That's how come Walter Martin say that apologetic is needed. Why? Because we have always had false teachings. We have always had false prophets. The best way to expose a false prophet is to see what the prophet, the true prophets of Israel preached. Elijah was a true prophet. Hey, type of one if y'all think Elijah was a false prophet. I ain't talking about Elijah Muhammad. I'm talking about Elijah the Tishbite. Stop if Paul was a false prophet. Matter of fact, I'm going to block you talking about Paul wasn't crypto. Come on in here and start talking about it. Type of one, type of one, type of one. We got to compare to who we know was original, who we know walked with the Lord, who we know had visions of the Lord, who we know has established this thing. David is the foundation. Christ, Paul, Peter, James, and John. Let's see the doctrine that they preached. And we're going to compare it with others because Deuteronomy gives us, said there's a litmus test. There's a litmus test. If you speak not according to this book, hey God, I feel that in my spirit right now. If you speak not according to this book, and there's a lot of people they ain't speaking according to the book. That's all I'm saying. It sounds like the book. Because remember the 700 Club. Oh, let me pull up some of that right there. Last time Walter Martin was on TBN and all that other stuff right there. How he got how them folk got rid of him. Let me pull up some of that right there. Fair use. Is Lenora. Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. I can almost prove every time you see what these forces these people use and every time you see them folk, you see them light-skinned folk. Y'all mad because Garfield show it. You see them folk, the Portugal, Spain, you see them folk, light-skinned folk is right there. Light-skinned folk is involved in business, making it happen, doing what they do. Doing what they do, just like y'all folk, not eating no pork, got menorah, got synagogue, worshiping the one God, doing what y'all do. But no, y'all, 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 they, they, they don't count. They think we real. As a matter of fact, I can pull up some sources and show that some of what y'all saying, oh, it is, the history is right and exact, but who the face is on the pictures? Who the face is on the pictures? Israel. Now, type of one of your Europa is fake, and the white people made it up. And but Bishop Nathaniel is deceived. Type of one, because that could be it, because it had been whitewashing. Did they paint the walls like people claim in Kemet? Did they paint the, is this chemical peel like they doing in Jamaica? Or did they peel their skin to make them light skin? I would think with his background in, 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 in investigation, I would think he would know that. But he brought the source up. So being that he brought the source up, we're going to examine the source. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to read some of it. Syria is, is Syria. Come on, somebody. I know y'all going to tell me what well, Syria is on the tectonic plate. So that has to do with the color of the people. Come on, who gonna come with that madness this morning? I don't feel like it this morning. That tectonic plate sound good. Tectonic plate, Euro Europe over there. What tectonic plate Europe is on and mad black people was in Europe from the earliest of time. Let me bring up Cheddar Man. Fair use. Again, Moses with the staff held over his head and the Egyptians being drowned. That Moses, he just told you that was Moses. Let me let me look at some of these comments and see if I'm and, and and see if I'm let me look at some of these comments and see if I'm tripping. Come on, where God's people at? The folk that God's people are people that love God's word and love truth. God's people are a people that love God's word and love truth. Why would you think that Moses on the wall looked like Nathaniel? Why would he use Dura Europa? I know Israelites run from that, but the bishop being that he got one of the largest camps, most organized camps. Y'all see the level of day video and GMS videos, so don't act crazy. The purple, uh, the, these purple guys are more organized than any other of all of the camps. Y'all see them marching, y'all see them putting video footage up, got drones all in the sky. They on another level with it. Let's stop the nonsense. A Study of Race and Environment by Maurice Fishberg, published in 19, 1911, going over to page 64. Watch what it says. 
These fairhaired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these indo germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. And you know the original Jews. The original Those people never said they weren't dark skinned Jews. Them people ever said that? Did them people ever said that? Now we're going to get to the word swarthy. Come on, y'all. Where, where, where Kovi and them Bible people at? Now we're going to get the word swarthy. You know where we argue swarthy. What's the other word I'm looking for? Alton Orm. Oh, ruddy. Right now we're going to get to all of them words. And we're going to look at some other descriptions. I want to get to Walter Martin, but I, I, I feel led in my spirit. The Jews are a dark complexion race. I'm on page 149. Now, when they said dark complected race, when they said dark complected race, was there a, a, was there any any beef among Europeans? Who was that? That was Mark Twain. Who was that? Was talking about dark, tall, dark, and handsome? Were they talking about black men? Were they talking about Ethiopians, the burnt face people, or darker than the Scandinavians? What were they talking about when they used that in Europe? They were talking about different Europeans that they were encountering, or they were talking about black people that they were dealing with. Slaves and the lesser people, when they talk talking about dark, tall, dark, and handsome. That the European women were obsessed with African men. They wanted African men. Who were they talking about? Or they were talking about a nice, tanned Italian man, Sicilian man. Who are they talking about, y'all? Fair use. It is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. Bastion speaks of Negro race. Oh, so it's all right. So people been talking about Falashas. Been, people been talking about and acknowledging and knowing that they were dark-skinned Jews. Let me ask y'all a question. Was the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian that went to the... Uh, don't tell me that land wasn't the land of Ethiopian. The man in the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, that had the book of Isaiah reading and the spirit told him to go join himself to that chariot. Was he an Israelite or was he a Gentile? Jews living on the Luango coast in Western Africa. They are called there Mavambu or Judeos. And these are Bantu. Okay, there's a lot more. Those of us that came to America. So I'm showing you that. Now, wait a minute, Hebrew. Where are you at? Hebrew Israelism. Now, wait a minute, Hebrew Israelism. Now, I see, I'm pulling up this comment from a little earlier. Now, you see what he's reading right now? What about the West Coast of Africa? This way, the beef we got with Garfield and all that. Now, what about the West Coast? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me scroll this back a little few more so he could read this again. Let me scroll this back a little bit. Let me see where he's, where he's start reading. No, let me go back a little bit more now. Let's look at what he's saying. Now, what are you getting ready? I think the page getting ready is getting ready. Now, let's read this real slow. What are you getting ready to say now? A study of race and environment by Maurice Fish. Oh, Fishburg. That name don't sound like. All right. So you see the sources that he's using. Them light-skinned folk. So he's using light-skinned folk and see what the light-skinned folk are saying. Are they lying? Are they deceiving? Are they trying to hide? Does it sound like they're stealing a history or they're just talking about jury all over? That's fair? Is that fair or that's not fair? Because, you know, a lot of people say the light-skinned Jews are the ones they hide in it. they hide hiding the truth and they're deceiving y'all. And they're the ones Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 talking about. Let's go. Published in 19... 1911. 1911. That's way, way back. What, what, when, 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 what was birth? 1969 when they opened up? I ain't saying Israel. That's the first time Israel start dark skin. People start claiming Israel on the planet. 1969. Nobody's saying that. One West. These dudes, Sakari, GMS, that all broke off from one West of the one West persuasion. Somebody remind me about that for one of the years. Somebody, two, three people send me clips about that and that. What's that other movie they keep sending me with the, I'll pull it up. Going over to page listen, Hebrew Israelism. Listen, listen good now. Listen good now. Does this make them false teachers and demonic this part right here? Or are you just beefing over the number like um like Pastor Harris said? Watch what it says. 
In other words, are, are you arguing against no black Jews, Hebrew Israelism? That's, I'm, I'm asking the same question another way. These fair haired Jews created. All right, you see that right here? You see, all right, I'm going to let it read. These fair haired Jews created a problem. You hear what he's saying? Let's listen slow. A problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo Germanic Jews. Indo Germanic Jews. About these converts, and Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race. Like the Jews. Hold on, I gotta wait. I gotta wait. Let me see, because I know y'all are kept a, let me see, y'all a couple of seconds behind me. I want to hear only, well, I can say only. I'm gonna read some other stuff. The Dunamis in here, I gotta read some other stuff, but I want to focus on Hebrew Israelism. He's reading the translation by, by, yeah, all right, all right, something's wrong with his translation. There are, all right, by Maurice, all right, let me see what else he say. Only, only Hebrew Israelism I want to see right now. I'm looking at other people's, I'm looking at other people's comment, but I want to see, um, there are black Jews, but not, okay, all right, so almost every, even Hebrew Israel, almost everybody in here, but if y'all agree with that, type of one. So everybody is saying that right here. I don't know what they're arguing because I'm getting a lot of emails. I'm getting stuff that people are arguing because they know that I used to be involved in certain stuff. I'm getting a lot of people that's arguing that like they're arguing that urban apologists. You even heard Vince Bantu the other day. He's top, top, top professor in that dealing with that on that seminary level teacher folk. You see him traveling with that light skinned lady that's teaching that that's teaching that dark skin history. Saying that this is something that, need, that has been neglected. There were black Jews. So he, even Hebrew Israelism is saying that. But not all Jews were black. All right. This is very important. Hebrew Israelism. Listen to what I'm going to ask you right now. When Elder, when Elder Pastor Green and others say were the original before the word jury was used, Jewish and all of that, were the Hebrews what you would call black in America? Because some people are arguing that. They don't care about different colors right now, but they were at one time. Hold on. I'm going to... um. Born Again, Rome, Sabrina, I sent you the movie trailer this morning. No, no, not with the African warrior women from Dahomey. I'm talking about the one with the three, with the black Jesus and the fish fry. I got about eight people. And I know, honestly, I think eight people done sent me on um, that right there. Hold on. I only, I want to just pull up Hebrew Israelism. All right. All right. Let me see what he say. You can't be scattered into all nations, but somehow stay the same. Okay. All right, so even Hebrew Israelism that a lot of y'all hate, that, that bang, even he's saying the same thing. Let me see. Now I'll read some other comments. I'm going to let the bishop play. All right, let me see. Let me see. All right, let me see. I'm trying to read some other stuff. All right. All right, let me see. Hold on, Dunamis. Let me see. Early beliefs is that he was an Israelite or convert. Later interpreted said he's a Gentile. Oh, okay. You're talking about Acts 8. You're talking about the Ethiopian. Okay. All right. All right. This is um this is what a Judah says, but the term Jew refers to religion too. So it doesn't mean that they are from the tribe of Judah. I agree with that. That's how I said that's like when I asked Hebrew Islam, I went back to before even the term Jew was used. Not even the nine tribe, none of that, all, all the way back to Hebrews, the original, all the way back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Jacob name being changed. That's what I wanted to say. But I, I, I was asking Hebrew Israelism before they were scattered, when Jacob wrestled, when Jacob became Israel, at that point right there, 75 people, Elder Harris, 75 people going into Egypt. That's what I'm talking about right there. Did they look like Dura Europa? Did they look like Berean, the 75 people before they was even a nation, that little clan that Joseph saved, that little clan that didn't have nothing. And they end up going and being in there and they were birthed as a nation in there. All right. Let me um, let me let finish. Let him finish. You know, the original Jews, the real Jews are a dark complexion race. Page 149. It is stated that the philosophers are not... That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. That statement right there. Let me see what he say. Israel started off 
in Western Asia, and they could not have been black Africans. All right, we got a park right there. Now we got a park right there. Let me put my Israelite hat on for a minute. Let me put my Israelite hat on for a minute. Um, that's, I think that's part of the confusion right there. When you say they could not, because, because the Israelites are arguing that the people that came, some Israelites are arguing that the people that came on the slave ship, it, it depends if you're dealing with Deuteronomy 28. And, and there are Israelites that say, I don't even have to use Deuteronomy 28. But a lot of them that are arguing for those curses that the people that came over here were not Africans. So that's where the beef come in with the statements that you're making. I claim to be an African. I came, my people descended, came over there from Africa, but they're arguing that everybody in Africa was not Africans and the people that were sold that made it to the bottom of the ships, they believe that the Africans sold them and that they were Israel, they were from the stock of Shem. So that's, so that's where, that's kind of where the beef or the confusion um, comes in. Let me see what he say. The Bible says they came from the other side, north of Euphrates. Yes, that's what the scriptures. Yeah, no, no, they might have got no beef for that. So what you were saying, they were closest to the Caucasus Mountains. So therefore, they looked more like the people in Dura Europa. That, that's more consistent with what they looked like. Type of one, if that, I want to slow this down. That type of one, if that's what they're, or that's what you're saying. Yes, the term Afro-Asiatic, even when you're dealing with those languages. Good to see you, um, Curtis Lee. Let me put that up there. Hold on, I got to slow down. Um, all right, look at, listen to this British Israelism. Listen to this. When y'all say black, are y'all calling Arab and Maret on the people from the Mediterranean color black, like the slaves in West and Central Africa? If yeah, if you're if you're going if you're going with that if you if you, I don't know if you're going with anything from the one drop rule that's part of the problem right there. Who is considered who is good? Yes, he's saying yes, like Dura Europa. All right, so you're feeling that. Let me ask you a question. Do you think this is the last question? Right? Do you think the people from Dura Europa that um like the Moses that Nathaniel depicted? Oh Father. It's not this dude. I thought I jumped on because I thought this dude was just on, 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 on Clubhouse. Now he on here. Hold on, Garfield. That's what you're saying. You're saying the people from Dura Europa that they look more on. Is that what type of one on Hebrew Israelism? If that's what you're saying, the people from Dura Europa looks more like the people that were on the ark. Type of one. Garfield, what's good with you? Hey, peace and love, Brother Bereen. I just got What's a text good? saying that Brother Bereen would like my um, my input on some stuff. Who just, tell me who just texted you and said that right now. Tell me who just said you. You got to play who they are. Let me go back and play some of this. Hold on. I'm going to go give me a drink. Hold on. I'm going to give me a Hold on. I'm going to slide no this problem, back a little no bit. No All right. Then I'm going to come back to Garfield. I'm going to come back and look at some of the comments, y'all. Y'all know Garfield come to hate, so y'all come on. Don't act crazy right now and say that he had him on here and we didn't have a chance. Y'all can come on and cut him up. Cut him up. Give him licks. See what Moses and Listen to this, Garfield. I'll mute myself. Let me see if I can get my coffee. Yo. The ancient Israelites look like. Bang. There's Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, it said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here, and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. The hand of God is black. That's Aaron. Is Menorah. Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses again. Moses with the staff held over his head and the Egyptians being drowned in the Red Sea. A study of race and environment by Maurice Fishberg. 
published in 1911. Going over to page 64. Watch what it says. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. How do you know the original Jews, the real Jews, are a dark complexion race? I'm on page 149. It is stated. No, I'm going to go off and hear all of this. It ain't but four minutes. I'm going to go off and hear all of this. But look at Joel speak. I thought Joel speak was Israel till the other day. Look at Joel speak. That's the synagogue of Dura Europa. The pics don't, don't, don't show the Jews or the Egyptians as black. Oh, that's a problem. Let me let it play. Let me let it play. Fair use. Let's go inside. Take a look. Unto thy seed. What do y'all see? You see black Jews, black Israelites working in ancient Egypt. Let's see what this is from. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechneb, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter one, verse 13 and 14. What color are these Israelites? What color are they? This is ancient artifacts, ancient black. They are painted as black in the tombs. All right, here's Harper's Bible Dictionary. This is page 331. Now he went from a black and white book and took us all to Dura Europa after this dictionary right here. In 701 BC, Assyrian king Sennacherib conquered most of Judah, including the fortress city of Lachish. The victory was recorded in remarkable detail on base reliefs at his Nineveh palace. This scene is poignant testimony to the plight of his victims, who were deported with only what they could carry on their backs. Let's take a look at Judah. Do y'all see this? This is the Snackham guard. Look at the people of Judah. Look at, look at their hair. Look at their hair. This is a stone relief. Look at the little boy. These are not Caucasians. These are not Edomites. These are black men with cornrows. Two A. I'm gonna look at page, picture one, picture two A and two B. Fresco paintings from the western wall of the third century AD synagogues at Dura Europus, a city on the Euphrates River in Syria. At the right, two B depicts Moses three times. From far right to left, Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Let's see what Moses and the ancient Israelites look like. There's Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, it said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here, and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. The hand of God is black. Dunamis, before Garfield, Dunamis, how, 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 how God and Moses look to you? God and Moses look like me? God and Moses look like you? They look kind of tan. They look olive. Come on. Come on, hold on. Somebody else said, all right, I don't understand. Hold on, let me go to somewhere else. Look at, look at the sword of Judah. Oh, sword of Judah, we're going to do that. I've got that lined up. Pull up Afro-Asiatic from the Encyclopedia Botanica. Let's read it together. Come on, glory. Yeah, we're going to do that. I want to do that right there. I want to do that right there. Matter of fact, let me stop and do that right now. Being that I got a reader on here, let me stop and do that right now. Somebody said Garfield. Garfield. Somebody said pull up them seven Alton. I don't say who said it. Um, Alton said, Alton, what Alton just said? Alton just said pull up them 700 slides right there. 
Deuteronomy, read some of this right here. What this talking about right here? So all the Judah, we gonna read this here. One thing I can say, church folk, them pastors, God fear anybody come up on here. We we ain't like them. Not over here. Afro-Asiatic languages, also called Afroasia languages, formerly Hemeto, Semeto, Semitic, Hemetic, or Eurasian languages, languages of the come on, read that right there, Dunamis. What did I say right there? Where he at? Where am I reading at? I'm muted here, don't hear me. Let me. Languages of the common origins found in the northern part of Africa. We know what I'll admit it. All right, good. Languages of the read that right here. Languages of common origin found in northern part of Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and some islands adjacent areas in Western Asia. About 250 Afro Asiatic languages are spoken today by a total of approximately 250 million people. Number of speakers per language range from about 150 million, as in the case of Arabic, to only a few hundred, as in the case of the, Kush the Kushitic and Chadic languages. The name Afroasiatic gained wide acceptance following the classification of African languages proposed in 1955 through 1963 by the American linguist Joseph H. Greenberg. Okay. Scholars are so former so yeah, I don't know, brother. We might be careful with this one. Scholars in the former Soviet Union prefer to call the languages Afrasian. The name Hameto Semitico or Semitico Hametic, although occasionally still used, is largely considered obsolete. Many scholars reject it because it is linguistically wrong. There is no linguistic entity Hametic to be contrasted as a whole. To be Semitic, other designations such as Eritrean. Eritrean and Lemistry have gained little acceptance. Um, Tiffany Haddish, that was Tiffany Haddish and um, Nipsey Hussle, that are they parents from. Come on, what else you want us to read, Swore to Judah? What else you want to read? But we, we, we ain't running from nothing here. We ain't looking for nothing but whole truth. Come on, Garfield. I'll mute myself. Where you at? He don't walk away now? Let me confirm, Alton. Let me pull up my 2,000 slides real quick. He's got 700 now. He's pulling up 2,000. We're going to put Garfield out here in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, take that off the screen real quick, um, son. Um, I was about to call it Marine Sonetta. No, no, no. I ain't got nothing on the screen yet. I see it. You, you, that ain't the one you want? Yeah, put it, put it on this, put this on the screen real quick. Let me just, let me just address this. I do have. A oh, screen. okay. All right. So we have the crossing of the Red Sea, the Dura Europa Synagogue, 24, 244 AD, swarthy Syrian Jews. And by the way, too, the Jews of this time, if you look at all the Dura Europas, they don't really have beards. These are Hellenistic converted Jews who are in the Dura Europas. I don't know if you want to use that as a source. And, and if you look at these women here. This one the panel gave us. This what the bishop gave us. Yep. This is another one. This is a panel of Europas depicting lighter skinned white Jews seen off Moses rescued from the river. This is the same Dura Europas. It's the same place. Same now, place. Hey, having, let me just say this. Having dark or black skin doesn't make you the ancestors of African Americans or the African diaspora. <sighs> if ancient Hebrews were in fact of people of color, it makes them more our ancestors than Javidians, Aboriginal Australians, Arabs, Roma people, Southeast Asians, Indigenous Americans, or Negritos. By tracing lineage through your fathers, the wide DNA of Hebrew, Sephardic Jews in particular, should be EM2 or E1, B1, E, the same as West, South, Central African tribes taken to America as slaves. If these Jews are dark, it doesn't automatically make them our people. Now, let me make a bigger point. Watch this. Um, in Hybrid Hate by, um, what's his name? Tudor Parfit. A part of their supposed different was the conviction that they were of a dark people, perhaps black, perhaps brown, and had Negro traits. These suspicions coexisted with diametrically opposed fears that the color and looks of Jews were indistinguishable from the color and look of Christians. Thus, the Fourth Lateran Council of 1215 complained that the Jews cannot be distinguished by any difference and call for some way of identifying them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what did they do for the Jews who they couldn't distinguish? What did they do? This is the image from the 16th century. The Jews, not the black guy that they're holding, 
the white people that's holding him are Jews because they had to wear the swastika. swastika. Come on, come they on, in the star. That's right. That, that was a sign. Come on. They had to wear yellow badges, but look at this picture. Oh, right black here. people, go back to that other picture. I don't had plenty of Israelites go back to that picture and say that the Jews was the dark one in the middle with the red. Nope, that's the, the one in the black with the hat on. They, the, I had, I come on, I could pull up. Uh, Y'all know I got, I got a hundred, I got hundred seventeen videos on, on, on private and all of that stuff. But they, they arguing that this is the Jew. Plenty of people arguing that this is the Jew. They mock Kevin G and 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 and, and what what my man named truck driver name is G Con for bringing that Avenue alone. That's a new day. Let's move on. Come on, they talking about Swarthy Pete right now. Swarthy Pete, that, 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 we got, we, no no, you keep going. Go to the next slide. Go ahead. Take a look at this. Attention should be drawn to Spinoza, that swarthy olive complexion Jew of penetrating eye and long hair. Let's take a look at him and his images when he was alive. This is Spinoza. Is he dark? Is he swarthy? This is swarthy. Take a look at swarthy. Look uh, at Gar swarthy. Garfield getting ready to get the Garfield. You gonna get yo? You getting out of here today? You ain't coming back today. This ain't swarthy. And this this is, ain't swarthy. And this is where is the Harris at? <laughs> this is swarthy slick. Hey yo, slick. Curtis Lee. Unlimited keys. Is this swarthy right here? Where ready at? Spookism. Swarthy Judah. Yeah. JT Mac. Is this swarthy? Garfield going to get his Garfield. I'm sick of you trying to hate on black folk. I'm yep. sick of you trying to stop the awakening. Is this swarthy? Yep. That's what we want to know right now. Just say, name the soul. Type of one if this is swarthy. Go back to another picture. Go back to another picture. Type of one if this is swarthy right here. I ain't playing with y'all. David ain't look like this. David ain't look like this. Solomon ain't look like this. Now, somebody can say, it's okay. We got light-skinned black folk. Let me see. All right, go ahead. Keep going, Garfield. I'll mute myself. All right. This is um Ruth. Um, what's her name again? Gwendol Gina, Gwendolyn Ruth Hicks. She's the one that they use a lot of her sources regarding the, the slaves in America, in um, New Orleans and so forth. But she was black Irish. Look at her. Look at her picture. She's considered black Irish, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because of the color of her hair color for here and her eyebrows so when we read these things you say oh there was black irish really which part of them were black this is an iberian jewish ancestor being regarded as dark skin this is maurice Berger. so ladies and gentlemen this is this is the point i'm trying to make to everybody man when they refer to you as dark and all that stuff what are they referring to now let's get to the one that i love the most al capone is called swarthy we know Al Capone. We grew up on uh, Al Capone, Brother Kareem. Hey, yo, this is not good. This is, swarthy. Not good. this is Al Capone. How is Al Capone swarthy? That ain't us. We're using all how people wrote about people and trying to attach it to us. Come no, on. Nameless Soul said no, that ain't swarthy. That ain't all swarthy. Right. But he was called swarthy, though. He's called swarthy. Look. And in movies as having a dark or swarthy complexion. It's in the newspaper, Chicago Daily, 1929. How is he dark and swarthy? This is Al Capone. Come on, family. We got to get beyond these, these picking no, up. No, 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 what you talking about? You must have just got here when I just played Bishop Nathaniel. I'm using Bishop Nathaniel's sources. Garfield just jumped on here. We talking. We were talking about Dura Europa. That Bishop Nathaniel, who's recognized in Israel, playing with you black folk. Bishop. Na oh, now y'all gonna tell me Bishop Nathaniel ain't recognized when he brought up Dura Europa. He got one of the long. He one of the most recognized bishops in America dealing with Israel. And I'm sorry, he's more popular than you, anonymous Hebrew. Bishop Nathaniel is more recognized than you when dealing with numbers. And he was on teaching. And he brought up Dura Europa. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What should we do? Listen to you and throw Nathaniel and all the IUIC out the window now because you don't like what you're hearing? Go ahead. Yeah. And, and the, tr the, truth of, the truth of the matter is, I say this though, Jews could be any color. But whenever you see swords, Jews say that Jews say that they could be any color. They yeah. say that only these black American Jews are saying something different. Some of them. Go ahead. I ain't broad brushing. Some of them, because a lot of them will come and say it ain't got nothing to do with color. That's how come you got some of these camp leaders that's light skin, looking, looking like, looking like, looking like them, looking like Al Capone. 
<laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. Let me see. No. You see Anonymous you Hebrew. Nobody is, is debunking anybody being black because Jews could be any color. The issue is, it's not about 1665. It's about a European sources because most of the sources they use is from the, 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 um, the Sephardic Jew period, the exilic period, when they're describing Jews. So that's why we use... And that's who Nathaniel was using. I said, Green, look at the names that he's using. Them was all light-skinned folk. Light-skinned sources. And the light-skinned folk bear witness to black Jews. Y'all got the problem, not them. Y'all exactly. got the problem. Exactly. You see, this is a problem. When, when you deal with race, right, it's a problem for anybody. Because even look at this guy right here. When, this is another book that they use. Better look at the Sephardic Jews from Spain with their dark Negro features, black hair and thick lips. The Jews, a study of race and environment by Maurice Fishburne. This is another book. That hey, yo, why are you here, Anonymous Hebrew? Why are you even here? Why are you even here? Why are you even here? Let me help you. Funny. Go ahead. They comes here. They can't help themselves. What you coming here for? Y'all like moths to a light. What you coming here for? I do what I want to do over here. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is a picture. This is somebody with Negroid features. This look like the, the Hasidic. Take Hebrew. your blind followers and go. Take your blind, dumb, deaf and go take them and go. I know a lot of y'all in Israel don't want the truth. Just like Christianity. Oh, I know they don't like the truth. They don't like it over here. Everybody get it over here. You Listen, go ahead, the dumb, deaf, and blind. Go follow your leaders. Go ahead and follow your leaders. The majority of y'all are sheeple. Y'all ain't thinking for yourselves. And nobody that's, nobody that's leading blind sheep don't want y'all to come here to where the light is. Then where are we going to come here? Any Israelite, any Christian say bring up any source, we bringing it all up, boy. I holler. I holler on the block. I could do that. That's what I do. And this same energy, I got it. Listen, I got it online, and I got it face to face. Funny, dude. Don't come back through, boy. Don't come back through. Period. That's all it is. That's all it is. Y'all looking for the homo channel. Go to that wig well. Go down there somewhere else, boy. This ain't what you looking for. This ain't what y'all looking for. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Let me give me give me some. Let me give me some coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, well, this was some early pieces of Jesus, but I, let me let me take this off the screen for a minute. And um, I don't know why anybody. You see, this is the thing. People want um, Jesus and everybody to be dark skinned black. And um, this is this is the problem. If we are, if we are, um, <laughs> shout out to Sister Mika in the building. What are you doing over here, my Berean, man? I ain't tell you I'm over here. What you doing over here? <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, listen. A Jew can be any color. I think the problem is we are trying to associate ourselves with a culture that really don't align with us. The closest we could ever be, and I'll say this again, is people who are converted. And it's not us. These people are running away. They run to the, and, 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 and you know what it is, um, Berean? The people who understand what the exiled Jews from, from Portugal or Spain are running to, they are running to not only for their freedom, but freedom to practice their religion. And yeah, people don't yeah. get that. So this is why they ran to Jamaica. This is why they went to Curacao. This is why they went to Venezuela, Argentina, Chile, Peru. This is why this is why they went to the Netherlands. This is why they went to all these countries because guess what? They were able to practice their form of Judaism. That's all it is. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? The 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 um the Jews in Peru or Ecuador, South America was converting Native Americans. This is why you're going to find Native American cultures, some of them, because the Jews were converting Native Americans too. So don't. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth, Garfield. You know why I don't like you? I'm going to tell you the truth. I got to tell the truth in the presence of everybody. Because you, 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 a lot of times you come on here, you make it sound like the light skinned Jews converted the blacks and not the other way around. I got to be honest. That's how you be making it sound like you'll be making it sound like the light skinned Jews had the doctrine first and black and the blacks that we may have found in West Africa or other places that they've accepted it. And they were the converts. 
And the baby daddies might have been the light skinned Jews that ran up in darker women. All right. No. Is that, is that straighten me out if that ain't what you're saying? Because I'm slow. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, you see, that's that's where we're running into a lot of problems. The problem is you can't find that. you cannot find a community of Jews that are dark skinned completely. You don't find that in history. There's no nowhere. Way. Nowhere. And listen, when, when Jonathan Shorch came on my show, he said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. we can't have that, y'all. We can't have that right there. We can't accept that. I got to put Garfield out. We can't accept that. Because if Israel don't come in here and challenge Garfield today on this, at least this one subject right here, if y'all do not come and challenge Garfield, at least on this one subject right here, I'm going to have beef in the name of black power. In the name of black power, if y'all do not come in here today, I don't care. Let me go. Let me go. I got, all right, J-Mac, I got to let y'all talk. I got to go to my unblock list. Let me go call back anonymous Hebrew. I got to unblock everybody right now. If all of Israel, if all of Israel don't come in here right now and give God feel that work, I don't know what to say. We got to have one all black week of somewhere. I'm going to bring him back on, but I ain't going to deal with him too long. In the name of black power, I can't. Cause I've been watching Garfield and Garfield doing a lot of he, let me let me be quiet and bring him back in. Let me text Dunamis and him on the side. Hey yo, Israel, I don't care if I everybody, anybody gotta come on right now. We cannot let Garfield do this. Not we cannot, not this. Now I'll go for some stuff, but he going too far right now. Come on, you a lover other. Matter of fact, he trying to take he trying to take Alton's hat. He trying to take Alton's place. Garfield, what you out? I see you blowing a Jabari. I see you. You, I think you love them other. And I know in Jamaica, I know because y'all like them light skinned folk, and it, and it's not racist. Color's not a big thing in Jamaica like it is over here. I'm wondering if you have some elements of race. I'm wondering if you love them light skinned folk. I think so. I call Jamaicans are the worst when it comes to bleaching skin. They are disgusting. Damn, damn it. Indians right behind them. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. Hey, share, my, share my screen real quickly, brother. Let me just kill this. It. it ain't up. It ain't up. Oh, it ain't up yet. Let's just let me just kill this whole argument and let's deal with deal, deal with what 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 their sources and what they use. They love to I agree with nameless soul. Nameless soul say not even in Africa, Garfield. Of That's what's right, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold I'm hold on leaving on this second. up here. I'm leaving that. That's a good one. I'm leaving that one up there. Put, put, put Edith Brood up here for a second. Let me just show something real quickly for the audience. All right, this is Edith Brood of the Black Jews of Africa. You notice it says the Black Jews of Africa, right? So y'all can't say Garfield is this hater. This is one of the best reads from 2008 that changed my whole mindset toward this Judaism and Black Jews and all this stuff. All right, watch this. On the Algerian-Morocco border, according to a local chronicle discovered at the beginning of the 20th century, French A.G.P. Martin, the very earliest Jewish inhabitants of Taut and Gurara settled in the first century A.D. Coming from where? Cyrenica. Cyrenica. And were followed by a second wave of settlers who arrived with Arab traders from Mosul. The making of Fagara in Taut, based on a model that previously existed in Mesopotamia, confirmed that this know-how seems to have originated from Persia and to date back to very ancient antiquity. They were mentioned as far back as the 5th century BC in Herodotus. Now look at this. Another tradition from the region of Togart in the northeast of Taut reveals that the Jewish population is so ancient that they are considered the earliest white inhabitants of the area. I didn't say it. Another tradition, let me repeat, let me rewind. Another tradition from the region of Togger in the northeast of Taut reveals that the Jewish population is so ancient that they are considered the earliest white inhabitants of the area. Now watch this now. Look how they differentiate white and black. Watch this. In the most ancient period, whose tradition was conserved by the memory, the country was inhabited by Jews who did what, Marine? Who employed Negro workers. So they're separating the people and showing their colors in Africa. So remember when my brother, who is the brother that I love, I love that come on um all the time. That that that's um what's his name? Um the plumber. When plumber came on Nothing and showed plumber. his source, 
he showed the Jews from this same era. You remember what they were called, Berene? They were called the Rothschilds of their time period. You show me a black Jewish culture in Africa who could be represented as the Rothschilds of their time, the banking families of their time. Show me those black people. You show me that, Berene. You could keep me off all day long. I'm bringing the truth. I'm not playing no more games with these liars. No more games. Because hey, yo, hold on. I got to put the link out there. Hold on. Hold on, Garfield. Hold on. I hope you got a minute. This is Joe Pastor Ryan. Don't come in here mocking us right now. We on Black Power. I'm on my Black Power. Garfield even hating on my Black Power. Hold on a minute right now. Hold on. Let me put this link out here right now. Somebody got to come on Joe Furman I ain't playing with Garfield. I laugh and joke and bring some folk on, but Israel, somebody got to jump on here. I don't care who it is. Somebody got to jump on here and straighten that out. I'm not getting past that we cannot find the all black Israelite community nowhere. I can't receive that. I can't receive that, y'all. And y'all know I blows in Israel. But I that, there's some there's a there's a line that I'm not gonna cross. And Garfield and crossed it. Van Harris, are you gonna go with that? Spookism, are you gonna go with that? Let me see if I got plumber number to my jack. Somebody got to listen. Somebody got to hit plumber. I don't know if what. No, he's not even. I can't even say. I got to be honest. I can't even say the plumber even really, 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 really pushing that thing. That's not him. I would say he's more Hebrew roots. Unlimited keys. Is there not one? Is there not one Israelite to straighten this nonsense out? Just on the one challenge that we can't find the all black Israelite community nowhere. Hold on, Garfield. Come on, JT Mac. Don't come on here mocking and get yourself blocked. Don't come on here mocking and get yourself blocked because he done, Garfield done took it too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Garfield, make sure, by the way, what's up, Garfield? Please, please, um, please. Make sure you explain yourself real good today. Uh, this is a good conversation. Uh, I don't get into these beats, but I am intrigued by them. I like to watch and listen and learn. Um, but I think one of my biggest concerns is is that I've always believed that um, there were people of color way from the beginning and that there are different ethnicities and shades of people because our creator creates a variety, just like the lilies of the fields and the valleys. When you look out in the, on the landscapes and you see all the different shades and colors, and I, I believe that uh, our creator did the same thing with human beings, you know, especially after the Tower of Babel. Um, so I've never thought that, you know, only one, there was only one, you know, type of people or one ethnicity or one colored of, of people. Uh, however, some folk believe that because of some of the ancient Israelites were dark or some of the ancient peoples were dark, that automatically makes them Negroes, specifically uh, the time, the kind that was stolen off the west coast of Africa, and I just don't see that connection. I, I don't, you know, I know we don't have um, Abraham or Jacob's DNA or anything like that, but but I, just I'm groups wondering. in the region. Not even if you didn't have the on his their DNA, just groups in that region. Torah, Torah groups too. He said, he said, Garfield, what reason why we can't trust online universities? Name this soul got him though. Now, don't worry, I knew somebody was going to step up. What's good fingers? Um, Nameless Soul got Garfield. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then I'm yeah. going to let Garfield get this work Nameless Soul got for him. Yeah. And then, too, you know, the Semitic, Semitic people, peoples around the world, um, that doesn't automatically make them descendants of Jacob either. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Abraham. Abraham other, had other sons. Uh, and, and, and so did Jacob too, you know. So I know the bloodline came through one of Jacob's sons, you know. Uh, so I, I just, but even today we have colored people all over the earth. You know, the the the, the Jews were scattered all over the place. Uh, some people. So you're, so you're another one. You're not getting on the good red letter. Like 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 honestly he said, don't hear what he's not saying. So you're not saying there are no black people that don't practice the religion of Moses and Jesus. No, I'm not saying that. There are Jews You're everywhere. Not saying that at all. So don't. But for the other people, I said, I, you know, I get mad and want to get to blocking folk. Don't act like folk in here lifting up a blue-eyed, blonde hair Aryan Jesus. No, 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 nobody doing that now. Nobody right. is doing that. Go ahead. Right, right. And I, uh, I was saying that um, uh, there, there are 
Jews and colored people. I mean, Jews that were scattered all over the place. Some folk believe that's even because scripture said they'd be scattered, but some people believe they've scattered everywhere but the land. They can be scattered everywhere, but they can't be scattered in the land. So and in the know. land too, and in the land. Yeah, I just find that a, 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 a illogical argument. You know, no offense to anybody, but that's just illogical. If they all over, part of the land is all over. Exactly. So, so these beefs about trying to make everybody, trying to make all the Jews. Real fervent charity at with that one. Real fervent charity at with that one. I'm glad he cutting here. He can't. He 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 he, he worried right now. Hold on a minute, Garfield. I know you're looking for sources. Israelites among the limba. They're all black. I can pull them up right now. Good point, nameless soul. Now he running the true prophet. Y'all who who a lot of people bear witness, even Israelites, who's the foremost scholar on the subject of them, of them, of, of them dark skin folk on that counting over there. So let's see where let's see where Garfield trying to go. But what nameless soul is saying is excellent. Let me pull up some limbo in case he trying to let me let me back up. I gotta be I gotta be Israel on here right now. Cause 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 y'all scared of Garfield. I gotta be Israel on here right now. Let me pull up them limbo in case Garfield trying to trying to act shaky. <laughs> yeah. I, I I land my play here on this one is is that I think that we should stop trying to make everything about color. God was has never been has never created the world to be black and white. He's never That's created Ryan the world. Just said that five minutes ago. Five, yeah, he's I never been saying that. He never created the world for everybody to think in terms of black and white. There's there's shades in between, all kind of shades, and and God is is it gave us all these different shades to enjoy and all these different ethnicities to enjoy. We don't have to make everybody Negro. That's that's insanity. You know, and your I, Alton, <laughs> and your Sword of Judah, we got to put lot, Black Lion Supreme out, got to go right now. I can tell from the comments who got to go. Israel ain't going for that. The Limba are even converts. Can nobody be original? Can nobody be original? Y'all got to take everything from us? So that means the religion of Moses is not a is, a, is not an African Alton because that's what they're trying to say. Maybe I'm hearing what they ain't trying to say. Let me let me wait. Let me wait. I could be looking at comments and jumping the gun. Let me let me deal with let me deal with the dilemma real quick. This is from um, the Black Jews in Africa and the Americas. Let's deal with it for a second. Hey this Garfield, and and the hatred for the and the hatred for the, the Ethiopians is mind boggling. Ethiopian Jews, that's mind boggling. Very mind boggling. But I'm going to get to that in a second. Let's deal with this a second. Um, Lemba informants now insist that they have the same blood as Jews. This fact confirmed for them what they had always said, that they were phenotypically different. This is what they're saying. They are phenotypically different from their non-Lemba neighbors. And if we look at them, they look like Berean and they look like Garfield. Well, and, they, and they don't even bear witness. They're the same as the other people. They're exactly. saying it. So those Lemba with whom I have discussed the results of the, the DNA results, by the way, often recall the fact that they habitually refer to themselves as the white men who came from Senya and that the DNA evidence proved that they were once white and that they are Jews. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, yo, I'm hey, yo, done. hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Hey yo, this is yo. Hold on a minute, cause yo, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I feel some type of way, Alton. I feel some type of way, Alton. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I can't. Hold on. Let me pull. Let me pull this up. What are you saying, nameless? Hold on. Let me see. Look at this, y'all. So these, what, what, what's, what's, what's going on right here? The, the, these brothers not original to the faith. <laughs> These brothers received this. They received this. Um, hey, I got a video, Marine, where they're admitting uh, that they learned about circumcision in 1913. 1913, the Lemba. I got a video I could play right now. Don't uh, play, Marine. Man. Don't let me pull the video. Yo. <laughs> they just not learned about circumcision. I'm laughing and he's laughing, and this is people safe. We this is serious business. 1913. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the truth of the matter is the Lemba is connected to the Levant region. 
Because if you really look into it, there was trade, Indian Ocean, the spice trade, all type of trade. So they are attached to the Arabian area where they were coming into Zimbabwe because, you know, these folks are always looking for areas to trade from. And they came to that region and they slept with African women. That's why some of them have E1, B1A and some of them have J. But why are they? He got cut off. Honestly, said I kept saying, unless somebody ringing his jack. Honestly, said I kept saying race is the finesse. Nah, uh, uh. Tell me, let him play the video. Uh, 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 uh. uh, uh. We got to figure out what's going on right here. We got to figure out what. But, but I'm not gonna lie. I, I can't even. That's where the beef come in. I can't even. I gotta. I gotta just gotta discuss that stuff Thursday night. That's where the beef is coming in when they start talking about when they start talking about who's who in the Bible and all of that other stuff and. Where they're not blacks that practice the religion and the belief and all of this stuff. I think people are definitely saying two different things. Far as Christianity and 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 what Dr. Bantu and them saying, who are the blacks and blacks in the Bible and them leading people and lodging them in the Bible. Um, technically speaking, maybe the prophets were, well, we know the prophets weren't Africans. The prophets of Israel that I follow were not Africans but maybe they all did not look like me. It seems like everywhere look. we go, like I said, it seems like everywhere we go, we see them light-skinned folk. Folk acting like light-skinned folk just got here. That's why I asked Jordan and everybody, when did the light-skinned folk come? Did they give y'all the Zohar? When did them light-skinned folk come and got the nerve to be running around here talking about um talking about that stuff that they were using in the King James Bible about Noah and Ham being dark and cursed and penises and big lips and things of that nature? When did those two people come to take over the priesthood, the Pharisees or whatever? When did they them people come? What did the people, what did the Essenes or whoever those people were like in the Dead Sea? What did they look like? What did Josephus look like? What did the Pharisees look like? Was Herod are the same as them. I don't know. Come on, dude. Mr. Garfield working on his microphone. Negroes done came in and got me mad now. Garfield done got me mad now. These Africans done got me mad now. Go ahead, man. Put it, put it up. Put it up on the screen. Put it up on the screen. Hey, by the way, that teacher you have on the right, Barry, is uh -huh. right, why are you teaching them about rabbinical Judaism? That teacher you have on the screen. Look at the picture. No, no, no. Let me tell hey, you. Yo, Garfield, shut, go, Garfield, shut up and go back to your slides. <laughs> Shut up, shut up and go get the Islam before I start using bad language up in here. Y'all know how raps with Israel. Y'all, you're going too far now. He's going too far. I'm sick of him. Hey, no, we're in real quick, book off the slide. That's the question we didn't ask him because the Kazarian, the Kazarian conversion, quote, is 8th century. So before that, 7th, 6th, 5th. Fourth, third, Why we got so much evidence of light skinned people 600 years prior to the, to the 13th tribe? The Khazar theory. Why we got so many light skinned Jews and in rulership? That's me. Did they have Talmud in Spain? Come on, man. What's Talmud hey, doing hey, the hey, before hey. the Inquisition? Hey, tell, tell your boy Anonymous Hebrew to tell Yara to jump on, man. Yara likes and to then sleep. And then, and then even when we start getting into the beef of Moses, man, a Kushat, ah, man, this, yo, this, 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 this complexion, ah, man, yo, Ready Brew, you might have to, he said, all right, Ready Brew challenging you. He said, what's the name of the source? He want the name of the source. At least one person. Outside of who? Outside of, um... Uh, unlimited. Let me see. No, 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 no. Who was that? Who was that? That was that was that I had up on the screen earlier. Hold on. I want to go back and look at some of these comments because I don't want to miss nothing right now. Yeah. And then the the, when, when Garfield jump on the Israelites talk that talk and send you emails, but they don't want to jump on anybody. Anybody. I don't care. I don't care what beef we have. One thing about me, I don't care if y'all cuss me out. I don't care if y'all don't cuss me out. Y'all can jump on to defend this truth. To defend this awakening, I don't care who you are, you could jump on right now. Camp or non-camp, don't come on talking about Garfield, don't believe the Bible, I don't know what true prophet believe. Stop the nonsense. We're dealing with the work and we're dealing with sources. Anybody can get on. Go ahead, um, Jay Mack. Yeah, I was going to say, is in, in two, um, I don't know what, what happened to Garfield, but he said, how come... Uh, some of the ancient Israelites couldn't look like Osama bin Laden. They they are they were they were they were Middle Easterners. 
I don't. They know. try to act like brown skinned people ain't come on till after Muhammad died in the seventh century. Like brown skinned people ain't come. Brown skinned people been on the planet. It's a very. I feel that. That's me personally. I feel Abraham falls on, under that line of brown skinned people. I don't think he was black like me. Yeah, and all of them so folks black like me. Light skinned folk was already on the scene. I got Israelites acting like Europeans were even on the planet when Abraham was on the planet. I don't believe none of that garbage. Not me. I don't believe none of that garbage. When the sister said in the Song of Solomon, now this is beef. When she said in the Song of Solomon, O oh daughters of Jerusalem, you are jealous of my this, you're jealous of my my beautiful dark skin. The sun has touched and kissed me. Now, why would they be jealous of her beautiful dark skin if they were dark like her? Acts Acts the thirteenth chapter. How um and they read it all into the text. And one was named Timion that was called Niger. Only one. Why would they call him the dark skinned one if all of them was the same complexion? It's a lot and of I'm not saying. And I'm, and I'm not saying they were they were Caucasian. I'm just saying nobody saying that. We just talk about complexions. That's all. Because black folk got all different complexions too. Uh, you, so let's just let's just understand everybody. Don't have to look the same. Uh, we don't all have the same complexion. People around the world, to, even today, there's different people in different cultures with different skin tones, and some of them are darker than us, and they are, they are not Negroes. I, I don't understand why we have to make everybody that's dark or, or with some color in their skin, they have to be Negroes. Somebody said different shades. Come on, Garfield. Somebody said, I agree with that, different shades. And one thing I can say, most Israelites bear witness with light-skinned folk and all of that other stuff. I just, I'm just worried about the obsession of trying to make them other folk, them other folks fake. Yeah, this is a, um, sorry about that. My internet is acting crazy. The most high don't want me to reveal anymore. Truth Somebody said Deacon was right. This ain't even entertaining anymore. Jump on here, fam. You coming on here light skin and you're a straight camper. Jump on with that work. <laughs> Jump on with the work. Work get weekend. Get your master. Come on here with that work. With there's some stuff that got it. It's just, I'm not even Israel and I'm defending y'all. That ain't my job. Christians hate me for defending y'all. I said Godfather to go too far. Come on here, y'all got some sources. And do me a favor, don't come on here, Rev Revelation 2 and 9, 3 and 9. We're trying to go deeper. We're trying to go deeper. So go this is um, so this is um, one of the scholars they like to use, Professor O. Alazi, the guy um, Yara like to use this guy. But this guy, look at what he has in his source right here. Look at look at this right here. This is the fake one that Hebrew Israelites photoshopped on the internet, where it says "find Hebrews." But this is the original from the Library of Congress to the right. So they fake this whole image, and this guy put it in his book. He's supposed to be a professor, some scholar in Africa that's saying the Igbos are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the proof of it. Find Igbos. Somebody took the time to Photoshop this, this original document and put Igbos on it just to make this guy, this guy using it, he didn't even fact check it, but this right here is a Photoshop that's been circulating for years in the Hebrew Israelite community. Fake. Everything about Was that it. Professor Gray that went to the original source and showed the same thing out? And was it this one or another one? We got a few people. You can say what you want. And, 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 and that ain't no disrespect. We've got a few people that we have caught in some lies trying to lie on memes, trying to lie on sources, using it out of context, adding certain words, putting stuff on Time Life magazine, putting stuff on the, the president of Egypt. And, and, and it's fake. And they still using it. So we've had people to make Israel black. We've caught a few people, not a whole bunch, but a few people have been caught in lies. That's all we're saying. We don't got to lie for God. It's truth don't need no lies, y'all. Not the truth. Thank you, Brother Curtis Lee. When people hear this, they don't want to put a dollar on the cash app. They don't want to give to. They don't want to give to the cause. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And he's Israel. Oh no! Stop bringing up Israel. You know we hate you for that, Garfield. I never even noticed it was in quote unquote. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. The <laughs> devil is in the see that the devil is in the details. Them folk don't want that. There's no proof. Look at this. But wait, listen. Hold on, y'all. This is Israel too. I like having just a first certain. That's what I'm saying. It's certain people in Israel. I cannot lie. Listen to what he's saying. And he Israel, y'all. He said there is proof that the white Jew has the same DNA as the black Jew. Listen to Sherry at. First ones came on here was them Genesis dude with some of that. 
Be like, yo, y'all, they came and contradicted 90% of Israel saying, be like, no, them light-skinned folk, no, wait a minute, DNA don't prove what y'all saying. Where them funny dudes at? And whole time they Gentiles. Whole time they white boys. Where them funny dudes at? Oh, y'all are experts in the thing. Let's see, let's see what this, let's just, let's just examine it. And then when people get hemmed up and question, Sister Lewis, oh, we no longer support, we no, no, y'all goofy. That's all it is. Y'all want to just say stuff and don't want to be challenged. Everybody in Christianity, every bishop, the Catholic church, every Israelite, every camp leader, everybody got to get this work. The works of darkness need to be exposed. How else can we find the truth? How else can we get to the truth? Lift up Nathaniel and tear down and tear down Professor Tudor Parfit. Everybody got to come to the table. Bart Ehrman and all, red, yellow, black, and white. Everybody got to come to the table because there's so many lies. We all got to examine it. Who in their right mind don't want the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And I'm saying this on black power. I'm saying this on my, I'm saying this on my black power stuff. But at the same time, we can't play games in the name of just wanting to be something, reading ourselves into the text. Y'all crazy? Y'all high? Oh my gosh, let me pull them up. Somebody been smoking and drinking. Go ahead, Garfield. Hey, for those who are very interested in really researching West Africa and the world of Jewry, um, and I said Jewry as in J-E-W-R-Y, what I'm saying to everybody is that this is a part of the what's called the Catalan Atlas, the Majorcan map. And what happened is, family, they would document wherever the Jews were as far as they were merchants in areas. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you see a camel and you see Mansa Musa with the gold. This is the picture right here. This is it. So this is the map telling you where the merchants and where the Jews were all over the world. What somebody like Jonathan Schorch is saying, show us this black community of Jews. Show us this community. That's an original community, not a converted community. Because remember, Jews could not come through the Saharan desert and trade because there was no trade road set up for them Jews to be at. And we have to remember that. So when they started trading now, they went from Babylon. Then they went to Morocco. This is why the book is called From Babylon to Timbuktu. Why didn't he say from Israel or Palestine to Timbuktu? Because Babylon was the oh, of man. the Jews after the second temple fell. So now you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, how did you get into Africa? How? You got into Africa. And I'm going to show y'all right now. I'm going to show y'all right now. I'm going to break it down to y'all. I don't mean to break anybody's feelings or hurt anybody and say, hey, Garfield, I know everything. No, it's not even about that. It's about getting the truth to the people and getting to them the right way. Shout out to Paul. Hold on. Hold on a minute before you go on. Hold on, Garfield. Listen to this. Dunamis. Listen to this. Um, um, I, I, I brought up a few, a few months back. Hold on. I, I brought up a few months back. I said the plumber. I said, well, something about converts. He said, he, and, and plumber made it sound like it wasn't no big thing. If blacks are converted from brown Middle Easterns, if African, if dark skinned people like me, red letter, thank you in the super chat. Listen to this. If dark skinned people like me, if dark skinned people like me are converted to the faith, is anything wrong with that? Is anything, that's a question I'm asking everybody out. And if you in here, you Israel and you black, is it anything wrong if brown skinned people, we're not talking about blonde here, people from Scandinavia claiming to be Israel. Dark skinned people, we're, 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 we're claiming dark people, black like me, and brown Middle Eastern people. If brown Middle Eastern people like like um Osama bin Laden um shared the religion and converted dark skinned people like me, is that the end of the world? I'm only talking to Israelites right now. Red letter. I remember Plum, I, I think Plum or other people said, yo, it doesn't make a difference. I want to read this. Thank you so much. I appreciate you in the super chat. There's a large segment of Israel that understands the color spectrum, seeing how we always mix with other nations and came out of a mixed multitude. Naturally, it would be various shades. And I have to agree with that. Most Israelites that do come to this channel, they do understand that. But when we say certain things like um, Pastor Green would say the earlier or the original Hebrews before the term Jew, before Israel was really jumping as a nation or when they left, it was a mixed multitude before that. Does it make a difference? There's only a few people 
That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow night when we start dealing with the apologetics and all of that stuff. It, 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 we can't be bunching everybody together saying everybody is pushing this because that's a smaller number of people is pushing it. Now, Dunamis, you know, we have had many groups and private talks where people say ultimately even so-called non-campers, a lot of that we got in this channel. Some people say, yo, no matter what, if you keep talking to them and you keep pressing them, they're going to bring blackness to the forefront. Good. You want to say something on that, Dunamis, before I yeah. um, I want to yeah, get off. I want to count these ones. Go ahead. Yeah, Garfield, quick question. During the time of Massa Musa, would it, the Yoruba people or some some this uh, ancestors of them and the evil people alive during that time? Or information in the land. Um, they, they, of course, there were Igbo people at the time. They were all. I mean, remember Igbo and Anam Yoruba are the same people, national nationality wise, but they're different cultures. Yeah. Culture within the Yoruba and the Igbo are different cultures. Okay. Now the reason I ask that because I've heard of, I've heard the claim that the the after Inquisition from Portugal they left and they went down into Nigeria and they then they they started off. The people is a mix in. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the things that, I, and it goes back to the original argument about what my brother Black Lion is saying. Shout out to Dagger Squad in the building is basically saying that the people before European contact or white folks contact, you don't find a, a prominent part in the Western Central Africa. You may find it in Zimbabwe, you may find it in Ethiopia, but you're not going to find it in Western Central Africa. Why this is important? Because remember, you have something called the Sahara Desert. Not anybody can pass through this desert. If me and you yeah. do the most like Berin go there today, we will die in five days. And the reason yep. why we would die is because of these reasons right here. The extreme heat, the scarcity of water, scarcity of food materials, um, sand winds and animals attacking us that live in there. And the water in the desert is also poisonous. So we wouldn't survive. So imagine it's 78. Too vast. It's too vast. It's too vast to cross like that in that direction. You know, yeah. you know, me off in 10 seconds. Watch, count it down now. 10, 9, 8. Now, when no, I already want to get you off because I'm looking at I'm looking at Black Lion Supreme. They're saying stuff. They saying disrespectful stuff. Daggers are saying disrespectful stuff right now. Yeah, Tell him they, right. what he said. Wait, well, hold on. He said they can't show they can't show one African practicing the Torah before European contact. I don't like none of this talk. <laughs> I don't like none of this talk. <laughs> off with their heads. Go ahead, Garfield. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, you remember 70 AD, right? They like to claim a million Jews ran into Africa. I want y'all to look at this, this article that came out a couple of days ago, right? As a matter of fact, 2014 to 2019, 30,000 people were missing, and they were either dead or missing. They were trying to travel through the Saharan desert. And look at this. Most of those who die are believed to have succumbed to what? Dehydration resulting from the scorching desert heat. Some bodies are never recovered, presumably buried by the powerful dust and sandstorms. So this is 2014 to 2019. You're talking three years, eight to three to eight years ago, family. So you picture this in the first century, you have a million set of Jews trying to travel through here. The first to really do a real expedition through the ground. I'm not talking to the waters because people used to travel through the waters and come to Western Central Africa. I'm talking to travel through there were the Romans. They on, land. The on land. And it took them months to travel through there. And they had an expedition with food and everything. And they couldn't do much after that because the camel was, um, what do you call it? The, the, was, um, they, they got the camels around 3 to the 4th century AD. And then when the Muslims came in, that's when the Jews started doing the caravan trade. The caravan trade included slaves, coming in one direction and, and gold coming in another direction and other stuff like salt and all that stuff that the West Africans use. But ladies and gentlemen, remember this. These Jews are only in Africa for one reason, for four reasons. One, they were merchants. Two, they were traders. Three, they would sleep with African women so that they could be in line to answer to Dunamis' question. They could be in line with the African chiefs so they could be have a direct connect to get slaves for the slave trade. So they would sleep with African women and create what's called a Luso African mulatto class, which was separate. The Africans used to keep them separate. If you mix, they had them sleeping somewhere else, separate from the regular Africans. So those Luso Africans now 
created a problem. So you have them merchants, traders, Luso African, sleeping with African women, and four, they helped to finance the slave trade. So those from, from, from Spain and Portugal who came into Africa to Nigeria, Igbo, wherever, they helped to finance the slave trade that brought you over here. So you can't claim them. That don't make no sense. No, you can't show me what was the black African Jew doing in Africa. He was a product of what? And he wasn't even recognized as a Jew, Berene. Because remember, they used to teach us by the mother. So when you sleep with an African woman, that child is not a Jew. Until they created laws to make them become Jewish. So anytime you're black, you are a convert based on a rule change in overall rabbinical Judaism. Because the woman was black and you wasn't considered a Jew. Why yes. are they having rules and laws in the 1400s saying that they the first black person to become a Jew? Why do they have that if blacks was Jews? Why? And it was a regular practice. I, I, yo, Garfield, hold on a minute. Um, Ray, Ray Mathias said he gave white people credit crossing the Sahara before black people. I believe type of one Ray Harris, if you mean the Sahara. He gave white people credit crossing it before black people. Curtis Lee, come to the microphone. Shalom, what's good with you, fam? How you doing? How you doing to the panel? So long, so long. Shalom, what's uh, good? Garfield, I got a question. Where do Negroes come from and who are we? Where do Negroes come from? Yes, and who so, are we? I ain't talking about African, all African people. I'm just talking about the Negro race. What is the mm. Negro? What do you call the Negro race? I'm asking you. You got all the questions. You got no, all no, the. I don't no, look. No, listen, listen, listen. Gar 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 you, do you have an attitude, bro? No, an sir, attitude? Of course no. he makes. Of course he got. Look how you talking. I got attitude. Listen, I got to treat you like a hostile no, witness. No, all right, I Gar treat you like a hostile witness. I'm not. I'm going to challenge you. I'm unlearned. I'm unlearned, Garfield. So you're basically asking. No, wait a minute. He said he's unlearned. He's just asking the question. Let me, Curtis Lee. Are you asking this based on Zondervan? Are you asking this based on Zondervan? Are you asking this based on Zondervan? Are you asking this based on Are you asking this based on Zondervan? 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 Are you asking this Garfield, you way smarter than me, so I'm not going to never challenge you just yet. I'm still learning. But I wanted just a serious question. Just a serious question. Since everybody got all the answers, where do the Negro race come from? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, if you mean the Negro race as in far as black people in general, if that's what you're meaning. Of course. No, I'm not talking about black people. I'm talking about the Negro race. So everybody love black all the same. Uh, you, you know, say so most of the time. The people, uh, so that's, that's why Berene asks you if you're if you're using the Zondervan definition, which is based on the Hamedic hypothesis. So, are you saying Negroes are different than Black people? So now you come in with that yes. tribal. No, 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 I'm not. Because Negro means Black. No. What do you mean when you say Negro? Then with the yeah, maybe because this seemed a little bit loaded, Curtis. Maybe you got. Maybe you got to break it down a little bit to everybody what you're trying to present to him first before you okay. let him talk. Break it down what you what you mean so we can all because you're like a two out of twenty like a bunch of people in it just to make just to make sure we all clear. Okay, so what what I'm asking is every time this conversation come up, right? Uh -huh. It seems like other dark skin race of people can be Israelites or Jews. This is not American Negroes or or, or the Negroes that have been scattered to all these different places, right? Um, if, if, if you say um, um, a dark skinned Indian can be Jews, okay, fine, that's cool. If you say some of the Ethiopian um, tribes over there can be Jews, that's cool. But when you start talking about West, the people that come from West Africa, right? And I don't listen, I love my people in West Africa, I love my people in Africa. I, I'm not beef with none of that. And as far as um, light skinned people and all that stuff, I'm not beef with none of that. I'm not saying only black people are Jews. All I'm saying is, Garfield saying basically no Negroes that's over here in America can be um, Jews. So my next question, reason why I'm asking this because as soon as you answer this, I'm going I'm going to ask him to look up my haplo marker and tell my origin of my people. I put I put it in the chat. He can look it up. Put yours, put your happen, Michael. Put it in there right now, cause that'll be good for this next one. Cause you see, I ain't even take this other one off the screen yet. Are Jews and Israelites the same people? 
Hey, can I respond? Let me respond. Not religious. No, yeah, I'm gonna let you go, golf. And not religion. I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have described themselves as Jews when we start dealing with the subject of DNA. And y'all in here, that's Israel. Y'all tell me who y'all think that y'all ever heard that's Israel that that deals with that DNA that y'all be, believe the best to speak on that subject right there. DNA marker and do Jews have some same similarities with dark skinned people that's been on this channel that's claiming Israel? Go ahead. Where are Blue at? Let me, right. we, we, gotta, we, gotta be, we gotta be careful, by the way, when we use the word Negro. But I, I will say this to the, to the gentleman. You see, the issue is they want to separate black people from Negroes. There is no test that anyone, a higher up be praised who's been running from me for 10 years, don't want to have a discussion. Here is very jump on right now because you always have all this talk in the chat but don't want to confront garfield i don't know why i'm not a scary guy the issue here ladies and gentlemen is that black people come out of africa that's where the oldest bones is caught from a scientific perspective so we all come from africa per se he now wants to separate negroes from africans because he wants to say when they got off the boats they were negroes and they were africans he wants to separate them so these Europeans, what they do is they 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 want to push the hermetic hypothesis so badly, they'll define blacks and Negroes and separate us in any way like you're special. Ethiopians, you're this. You're um, Zimbabweans, you're this. But these people over here, they're black and so forth. This goes back to when we were we were treated as being a part of ham and, and slavery and why we've been mistreated by the Arabs and Europeans as far as the slave trade of the trans-Saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade. Over 40 million Africans were mistreated or killed or kidnapped. Now watch this now. The point is, there's no test. If me and Berene came off the boat, right, off the slave ship, how do you differentiate from a Negro, from a black person or an African? You can't. This is why the doctrine is so silly. We're all Africans who come from either the Igbo. There's 40 different tribes, ethnic groups that we come from if, you, if, if you're here in the, in the United States of America. So what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we're saying that you're chosen based on what happened with Deuteronomy 28, 68 and this transatlantic slave trade. But you can't differentiate anybody on the slave ship. It is garbage. So what we do is we are grasping on the Bible because, again, I, I had this conversation months ago with, with, with Vereen and his channel. The, the Bible, when it talks about four corners of the earth, the Sumerians in the 2200 used to call it, they used to be the king of the four corners of the earth. It's something that's used, a terminology that's used, that's now in the Bible. The four corners of the earth or the entire earth is just the ancient Near East. America is not involved. West Africa is not involved. Central Africa, South Africa, not involved. New Zealand, Australia is not a part of the biblical tradition. So whenever you're trying to say it has to do with America, you are making it up. It has The Bible has nothing to do with America unless you're holding on to like the Christian thought that said everybody can be saved. I could see that because technically, I remember asking um, Brother Damon Richardson this, are you ethnic, ethnic, ethnically connected or genetically connected to the biblical text? He said, no, but by faith he is. Because we as African-Americans or Afro-Caribbeans are not connected to the people who originally wrote the Bible, whether they were dark or whatever, because the people, original people who wrote the Bible were people of color. So now when the brother said, I don't think anybody that came over in, on America were Jews, that's a lie. Because if you saw my channel, um, 20 for 20, you see the guy who lives in Israel today who was born in the Americas. He's the son of Sephardic Jews, but he wasn't a slave. His people helped with the slave trade. So, of course, Jews can be black. Of course. We can prove that all day long. But the ones who are claiming that they descend um, genetically back all the way 2,700 years, they're going to have to prove that to me. And I'm not going by word of mouth no more. You got to prove it through archaeology, anthropology, history, genetics, and um, other other ways that science um, um, brings brings to us. So I, All right, I, come I, on, come on, Curtis Lee, come to the microphone. I see you put your E one, your um, your marker up there. Go yeah. ahead, back with your Negro, the Negro on uh, um, the first part of your question. So Garfield, I don't, I don't claim none of that. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of things people uh, claim is garbage. And when I say Negro, I'm not trying to separate from my brothers that in the struggle with us. I'm not doing that, right? I, me personally, all of us was, went through the same struggle. Whether we differ or not, they still my brothers and sisters. So I'm not on that. Okay. Right? 
Okay, my bad for Mr. Uh, well, no, no, I, I, I accept your apology. I'm just I, listen. I'm not on that Kemp doctrine, none of that stuff. I'm not no, on that. I'm just trying to learn the truth where our origins come from, who I am. That's it, right? As far as I go, I'm a Christian trying to learn the truth. Amen. You know, okay. now. I'm back up but what do you say about what he just said with Richardson? Because most most of us be like, yo, ethnically, we're not connected to, by blood, I'm not connected to Jesus. I'm not connected to Elijah. I'm not connected by blood, but by faith, by that message, I'm connected. With, if, they, if, they, if you wasn't connected by blood to the prophets that wrote the scriptures, would that offend you? In any way, would that lessen your faith in I, any I way? Mean, rather, rather, my ancestors. I, or do it make you feel extra special if you no. are connected by blood? If, if 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 my ancestor was a converse or proselyte, it don't matter to me. Okay, you see that? That's another one, y'all. A lot of people over here could say that. I got to give it to a few people over here have said that. If he, if y'all agree with what Curtis Lee said, if it doesn't make you no difference, type a one. Timothy Isaac, I know this conversation ain't going to go good with you. You know I like you, brother. Not you, Curtis. I see my man in the background. Jordan, I know you don't care. Who else is Israel? Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Higgins, I'm worried. If you if you wasn't bloodline connected to the prophets and David and Samuel and Isaiah and Obadiah by blood, would you still love him? Sister Higgins, just specifically for you, because I know you go hard for the bloodline. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead, um, Isaac. Oh, so I'm sorry. Um, no, go ahead. You, you, you got it. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, why, why, why is asking is when when you look up when you look up my DNA on the um the the SMP tracker, right? The the mutation of my ancestors came out around the area of Saudi Arabia, right? Around the brown the Bronze Age, right? So I put that in the chat a long time ago, um, um, brother Baran. Put it in there again. I'll put it up. I won't put it up on the screen so everybody can see it. If you don't, I, well, I know you type, you can't type in and talking, but yeah, let, I'll see if I might be so far back because there's so many comments. Right. So the brother said, you know, saying 4,100 years ago that's in Nigeria. Yeah, that's 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 one part, right? But that don't show the migration because it don't show when I when I looked that up, is that my haplogroup group is very young in um in um in Nigeria. So he, he can say that if you want to, but if you look my DNA up on the SMP tracker, it will come up where the origin come from. <clears throat> okay. Well, All right. Come on. Do me a favor. Hold on. Come on, Timothy Isaac. Timothy Isaac, you, I know you can't stay long because you don't know how to, you, you can't really govern yourself like, like what we need right now. This is real serious business with Garfield. This real serious business. Reading scripture is one thing, but how that scripture is being used. So we don't need a whole bunch of scripture reading. We need to. We need some. We need to get down to what's going on and, 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 and these maps and all of this stuff and the spreading of this thing. Okay, I hear you, bro, Brian, and, and, and peace and blessing, peace and blessing to everybody. Hey, only thing I had to say, and I'm I'm on my hot ball. Only thing that I had to say, because I'm not a scholar, but with with. Brother Garfield, a uh, problem is is uh -huh. that he has to show, he has to show, other than his scholarship, he has to show those European jewelry being scattered into all nations. And I'm talking about uh, Saudi Arabia. I'm talking about uh, Iran. I'm talking about Iraq. I'm talking about these nations, the Philippines, where we are scattered in all nations. Moses prophesied about this. And our Lord and Savior prophesied about this. That's the problem with Garfield is having right now. He okay. has to show. Okay, hold on. So, Roger, so, Roger, I want to make sure that I'm correct. I want to slow down. I want to make sure. So, Roger, he's saying, I think, Timothy, tell me if I'm correct. Timothy is saying we have to look who's more scattered, dark-skinned people like myself, more scattered. I don't even know how you could do that because all dark-skinned people ain't Israel. All dark-skinned. Well, who's more scattered, us or people that we can trace through synagogues and, and you know, the light-skinned people that we can trace. Who's more scattered that we can find in more countries on the earth? Is that basically what you're saying? And that can kind of show who's fulfilling prophecy more or darker people being Israel as proof or light-skinned people? Is that correct, Timothy? That's correct, brother? 
Yeah, Biz, know that you weren't talking about scripture. And I understand that, you know. No, you no, but you me. connected it with scripture in a good way. Yeah. Keep going. You, yeah, you connected that, that, that's, with scripture in a good I'm way. I can't lie. I'm feeling good right now. Anybody got to go straight back to this pagan. Garfield, pagan. Garfield, yeah. pagan. Yeah, I don't have hmm. a problem with Garfield. I just, I'm, I do. Is, he has to, he has to, he has to, just like he uh, uh, trying to deny uh, African Americans and, and, and other ethnicity that that we're not israel he has to show those people being scattered in those countries saudi arabia iran iraq uh, the philippines uh other nations that they not even gonna go china japan all all people are in these nations so that's all that's right. your problem uh right. okay, I don't, I don't, I, you know I no hold up hold up hold up put that on the screen for me put that on the screen please all right, let me let me hold on. No, Timothy, hold on, hold on, hold on, Timothy. You land, you land your plane. You was done. I want you to make sure yeah, you get yeah, the whole. If he, can, if, he can, if he can show that, then he has a case. He has a case. Okay. okay, all right. That's the first part. Now let's see if he got. He said if you can show that, you got a case. Okay. What did you go up here in the Bible for? Hold on a second. Hold on a second, family. Look at this right here, right? And it shall come to pass in that day. What day is that? That the Lord shall set His hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from where? Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. If you notice something, family, this is the Northern Kingdom, right? If you notice America, New Zealand, none of these places, all of these places you find in the biblical text and is within the realm of the ancient Near East. Those lands that they knew. Now, watch this now. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You see, what happened is when you read the four, I'm dealing with theology now. When you deal with the four corners of the earth, in Sumer, they used to call their king used to be the king of all lands or king of the four corners of the earth. At that particular time, what would be considered when the writer was writing the four corners of the earth? It doesn't mean Philippines, bro. And there's Jews in Philippines today. There's Jews in Saudi Arabia. Come on, come on, come on. Hold oh, on. Oh, 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 he didn't say nothing when you was talking, brother. That's how I said. See, that's another thing. So, uh, they never have discipline. These Hebrews never have discipline in that dialogue. Never. They always want to interrupt. Now watch this. The four corners of the earth, what you need to do is go home Read your Bible and study the context of your biblical text. Because I have said this on, on, on Berean a hundred million times. America does not exist in the biblical text. New Zealand doesn't. West and Central Africa doesn't. None of these places. The Philippines. He didn't say, now, he's not saying God didn't know about it. He's saying the writers of the Bible, the Paul, writers, didn't know there was America. Exactly. Timothy, Ezekiel didn't know that there was America. Those prophets, if they prophesied by God, that don't mean that they knew that there was a land. Exactly. That's all they said. Not that God didn't know it. They didn't know it. So when they spoke, did they speak at the time from what they knew? That's what he's trying to say, Timothy. Now, you can believe if they, if Paul spoke, he spoke by the inspiration of God, and he knew there was a Puerto Rico. Well, he didn't know it in his mind, but God by the Spirit knew it, and you view it differently because you believe in a full inspiration of the text differently. You can argue that, Timothy, but I don't want to go to the theology. I want to go back to the spreading and the history of where the people are. No, because I want Tim to get the answer. I want Tim to have his chance to share, because at least they would be one, at least he step up. Yeah, as far as history, though, let's go to history now. If you go to Sentinel Island, there are several places in the world that nobody with their religion has even go, gone there. Black, white, red, or yellow. And I want to emphasize something. I am not saying that the Jews originally were white. I just want to make that clear. Nobody I, on the channel saying that. Nobody. I, I am saying that they were people of color originally. But these black Jews that would people want to run around and say they are all black is just totally craziness. Yeah, and, and by the way, he, yes, Hebrewism. I don't want to deal with the theology, but I brought that out in the debate. But I'll tell the brother that that's your belief that all these people must go into these lands. I don't hold to that. I'm dealing with the history and the archaeology. I'm telling you that the Jews, based off of the, the, um, the Catalan Atlas, we know where they were, at what time period, 
and I have no records of black Jews, a group of black Jews stationed anywhere in Africa saying, hey, we are Jewish or we follow the Torah. Or anything. So the I only think, thing, the hold only up, thing. Hold up, right. hold up, hold up, one second. Let me say this carefully too. And, and when we find anyone that claims to follow the Israelite religion or Jewish religion or Judaism, a form of it, they don't believe in the New Testament. That's a huge point. They don't, they don't, they don't know nothing about Jesus. They don't care about Jesus. So now if if you're a Hebrew Israelite claimant and you believe in the New Testament, that's not a tradition that we find in history, period. I could say that with my with my eyes closed. It with could the, be a new, it could be a new revelation with the Americans wake and the awakening and then the new awakening. It, it could up. be a new it revelation. It made it up. All right, listen to this now, y'all. So nobody is arguing there aren't no black Jews. What's being argued is all black Jewish communities, I believe. I believe, so Timothy, you, you, you that's the understanding you got? Say, say that again, brother. There's no black Jews nowhere. Large black, all black Jewish communities. And Garfield is trying to argue his position is if you do find them, that they were converted from light skinned Jews. That's a serious charge. And that's yeah, the part I, I believe so. I yeah. understand that. I want to make sure, Timothy, you, Israel, you on here, you understand that. Nobody had arguing bl bl blonde here, blue eyed folk. Because right. people. And, and, and the majority of people in here do believe that Jews are spread all over and have different colors. Everybody shouldn't be on the bandwagon fighting what's being said. Okay, can I say something? Attack against all Israel. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I don't disagree with a lot of stuff Garfield say. I don't, I don't beef with Garfield, but he can't prove a lot of that stuff he's saying about he know for a fact, right? Can't nobody say nothing for a fact, right? And then number two of ours, we that going with straight with Torah, we just learning some of these things about our history. You know, we don't know what we're doing in Africa, right? We don't really don't know what exact tribe we come from from Africa self so, recent times. So we are new at this and we are learning about our history. So for him say, well, you can't be a true Jew if you are uh, going by um uh, the New Testament. No, that that don't mean that. Our whole our ancestors been doing this. The New Testament, right? So I, I just, I just, I totally disagree with that. I understand that he well studied, but hey, listen, I, I, I disagree. He got to prove that. Yeah, um, that's yeah, yeah, ain't nothing wrong. With, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's fair, right there. I don't think it's the type of one. I, 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 I ain't not, I don't think it's no beef for that, right there. He said we all learn it. That's how my say it's good to come in and talk. Go ahead, bro. Okay, yeah, just like me, just me, like me, I was saying, um, on, one, yeah, second, yeah, one, one second, one second, then, then I'm gonna hop off. Let me respond to the brother. First. One second, bro. Um, God, oh, I don't, I don't have a problem, problem with your scholarship, brother. What, what I'm saying is, when it comes to that book, there's something different. Now, you know, you might be okay with the scholarship, but when it's when it comes to that book and that scripture that you read, that's a, a future prophecy, uh, brother Garfield. If you must know. Um, the, the the problem that I have is that when it says the four corners of the earth, we can look and see that the uh, uh, Negro is scattered in all nations, just like the scripture said, just like Moses uh, prophesied it, our Lord and Savior prophesied the same thing. So you can talk about they don't believe in Jesus. Would they believe in Moses? Because Moses said the same thing. That's your problem, Garfield. That's you're your problem. Theology, you're talking theology. I'm not talking theology. Say that again. Oh no, yeah, you talking, but let him go ahead and talk it. Go ahead. You're, you're, you're arguing. Timothy's saying if Moses prophesied a dispersion, and then Luke and later on Luke 21, Jesus prophesied a dispersion too. It's 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 doubly attested to in the scripture. That's what you're trying to bring up the theological point that Israel is going to be scattered all over the place, and and that's and that's what Garfield's problem is that he don't he he's not understanding it clearly, like how you just related, correct him? Yeah, 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 bro, Brand. And like I said, you know, I don't have nothing against Brother Garfield. You know, in fact, you know what I'm saying? I like him, but, you know, it, it just we just differ in opinions and differ in, in, in um, beliefs. So, you know, I don't hold no grudge against Garfield. He keep me sharp. He that's really good, did. All right, J-Mac, anybody else? Um, anybody else on this right here? And and somebody whoever was the other person that was talking about Nathaniel and what Bishop Nathaniel was using, I'm gonna play because I know more people have came in here since then. And what Bishop Nathaniel was using, he was using Jewish sources. He's using Jewish sources, and and this is Bishop Nathaniel, y'all. Let's 
Let, let, let me let that play one more time. This is Bishop Nathaniel right here. Fair use. Israel. Let's go inside. Take a look. Unto thy seed. What do y'all see? You see black Jews, black Israelites working in ancient Egypt. Let's see what this is from. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechia, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. What color are these Israelites? What color are they? This is ancient artifacts, ancient black. They are painted as black in the tombs. All right, here's Harper's Bible Dictionary. This is page 331. In 701 BC, Assyrian king Sennacherib conquered most of Judah, including the fortress city of Lachish. The victory was recorded in remarkable detail on base reliefs at his Nineveh palace. This scene is poignant testimony to the plight of his victims, who were deported with only what they could carry on their backs. Let's take a look at Judah. Do y'all see this? This is the Snackham guard. Look at the people of Judah. Look at, look at their hair. Look at their hair. This is a stone relief. Look at the little boy. These are not Caucasians. These are not Edomites. These are black men with cornrows. Two A. I'm gonna look at page, picture one, picture two A and two B. Fresco paintings from the Western Wall of the third century AD synagogues at Dura Europus, a city on the Euphrates River in Syria. At the right, 2B depicts Moses three times. From far right to left, Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Let's see what Moses and the ancient Israelites look like. Bang! There's Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here, and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. The hand of God is black. That's Aaron. Is Menorah. Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses again. Moses with the staff held over his head and the Egyptians being drowned in the Red Sea. A Study of Race and Environment by Maurice Fishberg. Published in 19, 1911. Going over to page 64. Watch what it says. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. And you know the original Jews, the real Jews, are a dark complexion race. I'm on page 149. It is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. Bastion speaks of Negro Jews living on the Luango coast in Western Africa. They are called there Mavambu or Judeos. And these are Bantu. Okay, there's a lot more. Those of us that came to America. So I'm showing you that the real Jews are black. All right, y'all heard it right there. Let me um, let me stop. What, what, what this dude is at? Hold on a minute. Let me pull this up right here. This is the right video, Alton. This the this the this the right one. Hopefully, I got this on the right one. 
I asked you about the DNA, and I just looked in the back. I looked in the um our other group and saw this. Hey, you. This means that some of those who are currently a part of that tribe had to have been a convert at some point, and if. Alton's gonna be public enemy number one now, huh? Right behind Garfield. Barry, let me make two quick points. And um just for just for those who are interested, um, this is from a Wikipedia article called King's Well um it's called the Acadian Royal Tutel Tutelary. All right, and I want people to look at this carefully. Look at what the people are called in their time period. Dominance over Mesopotamia, right? You see the glorious lands. This is the title. Glorious king of the lands. Kings of kings. King of Sumer and Akkad. King of the lands. King of all peoples. Look at this. King of all four corners of the earth. King of the four corners of the world. Alternatively translated as king of the four quarters of the world. So when you said the four corners of the world are the whole entire world, the four corners of the world, what does it mean during that time period? And this is Middle Assyrian. This is like 1600 to 1100 BC. So the person who is in charge from the middle, um, Tiglas Palacio I, is called king of all the four corners of the world. Was he literally the king of all four corners of the world? Now look at this now. King of the four corners of the world. Naram Singh use it during the Assyrian, I mean, the Akkadian um, Empire. Does that mean, look at this, alternatively, king of the four corners of the universe, usually shortened to the king of the four corners. So this is terminology that's used. Even Cyrus was called king of the four corners of the world. So you don't think that the Israelites who were under these people would use some of the writings or use this type of interpretation that these people that they were under use? Come on, we got to use common sense. So when we say king of the four corners of the world, it doesn't mean literally kings of the four corners of the world because we know there wasn't. Let me um stop sharing this. And I want to share something about this Nubian pictures, by the way, that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Let me show these um, Nubian images for, for, the, for the, um, the people right here. Um, Brother Bereen, if you can bring it up on the screen real quick, please. I want to talk about that that picture. This is an image of the Assyrians decapitating the armed um, the Nubians. If you notice, some Nubians have beards, some don't have beards. A lot of people like to claim that the people in these images are Israelites. Let me tell you something. There's an argument in academia that says they're not because remember, Hezekiah was paying money to the Nubians for protection. People don't realize that. That's why you have the Hezekiah seal has the, the, um, the Egyptian onk on it because he was paying homage to the Egyptians. That's who was protecting them. This is why when they found a lot of skulls in that region, they find pre-dynastic skulls because it's the Nubian skulls that they find at these areas. So whenever you see the, um, the people being taken and you see them with beards and all that stuff, it's not necessarily they are Israelites per se. These were, some of them were Nubian soldiers who were fighting. You have to look at where it was. So when the brother says, um, what do you call it? This is, um, hold on, let me see if you can see this. The Assyrian soldiers holding decapitated heads of Nubian soldiers. Yeah, I'm not making it up. You got to study the history. And it's on the panel at the British Museum, the same one that you see people like the brother from, um, from IUIC showing. It's a lot of Nubians who are fighting. So when you look at the um, Sinatrib thing, is the Nubians were the ones that were protecting the Israelites. This is why you have Taharka coming to save them. Shabitko and Shabaka were trying to protect the Israelites because they were under the Egyptians at the time. All right? Just for those who don't know. All right. Hold on a minute. Um, Subscribe to Israel, brother. Come on. Um, I, I, just, I just hope you know how to govern yourself, brother. You know, I don't, tell, tell, I don't know. Go ahead and tell Golfy. Go ahead and talk your talk. I'm yeah, how, you, how, how you doing today, you brother? Doing Marin? Good, good. good. Let's go with you. Good, man. Good, man. Peace to the panel. Um, I just wanted to address something because Garfield loves to go past, blow past the stop signs a lot of times. So, Garfield, is it, your, is it your position that there's no uh, evidence or no one wrote anything in history or recorded history about anyone 
uh, being or Jew, uh, 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 Jewish culture from West Africa, uh, slaves being brought to the Americas. Is that your position? Say, say that again. Say, say that again, because that's a you, say, you know said a whole a loaded state. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything loaded. I said, is it your position? that there's no evidence or any historian making a record of Jewish of, of, of West African slaves with a Jew, a Jewish culture being brought to the Americas. Is that your position? A West African slave with a Jewish... No, all you got to do, bro, is show somebody that came off the slave ship who was practicing the culture. Show evidence of that. That's all that's you have not what, That's not what I asked you, Garfield. Anybody can write anything, brother. Provide brother evidence. Garfield. That's I, not what I, I asked I, you. I'm answering. Hold on, Garfield. Ask him in another way. Because it sounds like something that he dealt with before that he didn't believe. Say it in another way. Okay. Garfield, is there any evidence of any historian whose who's, who's work has not been debunked, right? Who has said and has shown that West African slaves bought to the Americas had a Jewish culture. No, that's what you're saying is, uh, can I respond without you interrupting? First of all, can I respond? As long as you answer my question. Okay, all right. Now, you can have a historian say anything. The issue that I've had for the last eight to 10 years is someone showing evidence of these people coming off the slave ship with it. Because I do have writings where people said, yeah, they, 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 they may have... And use all these assumptions. I saw um brother um what's his name? Um the guy that has a channel that don't like me. What's his name? Um that rock with sister Ian that. Um forgot what's his name. Real? Oh, that's all of them. That don't like you. That's um what's his name? That don't like me. That me and him had the big brouhaha. He's from out of Las Vegas. Anyway, that brother brought a source that says that the people performed a culture. This is a historian writing. But there's no evidence of this. This is his assumption. So That's you, not so, evidence. So you the just evidence missed. is you showing, hold on, you showing someone who is recording history with the tradition. Because remember, I've seen it all, bro. I want the evidence. So if you have the evidence, present it. Dante. Okay, so right? let's Dante, so let's Dante. have let's have a let's have an honest conversation real quick. Just give me a few of, of just a few seconds, brother Berean. I appreciate it. So let's have an honest All right, now, now, Garfield, you you question him back and forth or you want him to be quiet and you got the flow for another five minutes? How you want to do this? Subscribe. How you want to do this? He can take 20 minutes if I just get to No, I'm talking about you. No, Garfield, quiet right now. I'm talking about you. How do you want to? Because well, I, I, I just, I just, yeah, I just want to I just want to have a, a, a dialogue based on what he's saying, because what he's asking for is evidence of Jewish material culture bought to the Americas by West African slaves, them getting off the sh off the slave ships, them getting off the slave ships, and then uh, 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 practicing Shabbat, right? That's what he's asking, right? All right, Judgment Day, I see you in the back. I, I don't want, because there won't be no big howling back and forth. I think this isn't too important. Just hold on. I see you. I'm going to bring you to the, I'm going to bring you in. I just want, so go ahead, Garfield, don't say nothing. Or if, or if you, if he questioned you outside of that, don't interrupt him. I want to hear this. Go ahead. Yeah. So if, 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 if you're asking, if you're asking for uh, evidence of Jewish material culture from West African slaves getting off the slave ships, who were clearly in bondage, clearly uh, not allowed to practice their said religions. We know this for a fact. Uh, there's no argument against that. If you're looking for them, if you're looking for something to keep something like the Shabbat, right? We know that as African slaves, we work seven days a week, seven days a week, forcibly. There would be no material evidence of culture of a Shabbat. That does not mean that they were not Jewish or that they not had or they didn't have. Uh, 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 Hebraic descent or or or, or Israelite descent. All and right, hold on, Pyro. So you're saying if they were if, if if slaves, we was forced to work on the Sabbath. If we was forced to eat pork, you couldn't tell right. from an outward appearance. Okay, you go. Couldn't you, tell, go. Man, you couldn't tell. Exactly you're right. Going, and, going, so, right. and so when someone's asking the question that Brother Garfield is asking, show this to me. During that particular time, it's almost it. real to none. It's impossible to do it. The Very only true. way that we could survive is if we ate what the slave master gave us, which was what? The pork. They Look, wasn't yeah. giving us chicken to eat. Yes. And letting you keep feast days and, 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 and not work on the Shabbat and all of that. 
Absolutely, Brother Berean. This very is my good. position where Garfield's uh, uh, follow-up question is very fallacious. Now, I just want to show one source, and then I'll, I'll yield the floor. I just want to okay. show one source, and I'll yield the floor. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. No problem. I don't see... Are you pulling up a screen, or are you getting ready to read some? Because I don't see nothing. I'm getting, ready to, I'm getting ready to pull up the screen. Okay. Because I want I want everybody to... Um, to, to follow along with me. Right? MD, why is that a stupid question? Why is that stupid? Oh, oh, maybe that's a side conversation. My, my bad. Maybe that's a side conversation. It might be a side conversation. I think, no, I, yeah, it might be. Because I think that was, I think that was fair. That was fair. Yeah. Now, this is a, this is from Cambridge University. I right. Uh -huh. Right. So anybody have any problem with any information that Cambridge University puts out? Right. Um, we could talk about that later. But this is what they're doing. This is a part of their study. Judaism was the traditional religion of black slaves, right? Uh -oh, Let's talk wait a minute. Let's talk about it, right? So here's the source. Here's the source. Black Jews, the religious challenge of politics versus religion. Cambridge University, 1997, page 235 to 236. Now, let me just read it. And it's, it doesn't take long. It doesn't no, take, take long. the time. Stretch it out. Take it out. This might be good right here. We might okay. need this. I appreciate it. It says the study of customs and rights. This is what Garfield is asking, right? This is his question. Yes, sir. Where, yes. where, where's the material culture? Where's the customs and these rights of black slaves practicing Judaism in the Americas? It says, and the analysis of the semantics of these African tribes have led many of their observers to propose some hypothesis and even to draw some conclusions. Dr. Alan H. Gabi reached the following conclusion. Now, mind you, Alan H. Gabi, no one has debunked his work to this very day. No one. Right. Watch what he says. These factors have a very specific significance. If we consider the president's presence of Judaism among the American Negroes, hundreds of thousands of slaves were transported to America from West Africa during the trade, which started some 400 years ago. What traces of Judaism still remained among the Negroes of West Africa at the period? This is his question. To the extent that they were persecuted, they were more likely than other Negroes to be seized during wars and sold as slaves. It is virtually certain that many part Jewish Negroes were among those sent as slaves to America. How many of them would have been able to conserve some Jewish customs is another question. Same question Garfield just posed to us. He's going oh, wait, to I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me cut you off for a second. Um, yes, chosen one chosen one to kill that don't it doesn't i don't care if what he's reading if they're just old testament only and they don't believe in jesus if they're Negroes, i do believe in jesus right. i do believe not, in jesus not you i'm talking about your source i think i think chosen one might be talking about the source that you're reading because they don't believe it. that has nothing to do with nothing this source good right here i don't care if the early negroes were just practicing the religion of Mo they were just old testament only if they were israelites that's good enough for me Type of one if y'all agree with that, or do they have to be also believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Plenty of original Israelites on the planet don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. Keep going. I think it's a good sauce right here. Go I ahead. You. Um, it is, he says, it is virtually certain that many part Jewish Negroes were among those sent as slaves to America. How many of them would have been able to conserve Jewish customs is another question. This conclusion put forward by Gabi, which argues for the existence of a more or less recurrent Judaism in West Africa, in the same places as those from which the Negroes were taken is shared by others, such as Maurice Delafuse. But most significantly, it has been adopted by a class of educated Black Americans as a key argument to demonstrate that the Jewish religion is the traditional religion of Africans bought in slavery to the American continent. I didn't make this up. This is what he says. Now, let me give you one more source. I, I, I don't have to pull it up, but I can if you will, if you allow me. No, to please, me. please, brother. It's too important. Come on, man. Don't All play right, no let games. Me you up, come let, me, up. Let, me, let me pull up one more source. Let me pull up one more source. I have to go into my... Um, I have to go into my... Uh, go ahead. I got the screen off. Tell me when go. you're good to click it back. Okay, good I got to go into my library real quick. All right. Let do y'all have any questions? Um, Do y'all got any questions so far? With what y'all hearing? Um, so yeah, looks, ready. looks pretty good. Um, uh, interesting. Um, now that that professor's not saying that every Negro on the ship was Jewish. Absolutely. You, you would, okay. I agree with that. I, and, 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 and you're not trying to make that point. You're just trying to prove that some, even if it's a hundred, two hundred. You're just trying to prove that some. 
That's right. right. Because, we, because we Dolph is the that he don't believe that there's none. He didn't see any yet. Exactly. Right? exactly. Okay. Let's exactly. just get a few. If we get a few over here, we can argue all the other stuff later on. Let's just make sure we got a few one, in America. One, one last question. Yes, sir. And, and you can maybe you can speak on this. Would would they would if they are Jewish and I'm not saying they're not, mm -hmm. would they not teach their offspring Judaism? Absolutely not. And here's the issue, because what happens is and we know this, if anybody watch Roots, right, they separated the children from the parents most of the times. So it's, it was very difficult to keep that continuum. Right. You had so a you're saying they could have come over here and lost it within the generations. Absolutely. And it only it, listen, it only takes a generation. It only takes 10 years. Right. Somebody you know, said, is, are y'all talking to him? Are y'all talking to this brother right here? Somebody said, put that. Oh, you talking about my link. My link is linked at the top if you want to jump on. Somebody said the link, the sauce that you just used, the Cambridge sauce. Uh huh. They said, can you put it in the can you put it in the comments? Say after you finish talking. While yes, I, I will, I will, I will absolutely, right. absolutely right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, that that was a, that was a, you might have to put in the back point. check here and then I can put it in the in the chat. I don't think you okay, I'll go do that. Um, that, that, that last point you made, brother, uh, sir, that was a that was a fair point. I'll I'll, I'll land my plane. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm ready to share my screen, and it's going to be- It's already up, but it's already up. All right, so this is from a presentation, a teaching that uh, we do in the Yahweh War Machine, we, and we do, and we teach this, talks okay. about reclaiming Africa, the African origins of the Afro-Judeo-Messianic movement, right? And okay. this is what I said, the Judeo-Messianic movement, right? So uh, I'm going to go to this slide here, and this is a brother here, right? Uh, his name is Ishmael Diade Hadara, right? He's a historian from Timbuktu. They have found all Hebrew texts from the city's historical records, right? Mm -hmm. He has also researched his own past and discovered that he is descended from the Moroccan Jewish traders of the Abana family. As he interviewed elders in the village of his relatives, he has discovered that knowledge of his family Jewish identity has been preserved, what? In secret, out of fear of persecution. This is why we don't necessarily see people claiming to be Israelites, because we also know in 1492, which is a very big year, yes, right, yes, for the yes. African slave trade, that in 1492, Askia Muhammad, right, was the ruler in these lands in Timbuktu, in, 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 in Mali. That we have Askia Muhammad is being recorded saying specifically this. If we find, and I'm paraphrasing, if we find anyone practicing their Jewish faith, they are to be prosecuted. They are not to be fed. If we catch you doing business with these Jews, we will kill you. We will we will maim you. We will take your land. And My throat is death. Come on, come on. And, and this is also what, and this is, and this, here it is right here. And here's the source. If anybody wants to see, let me move that. It's in the Britannica.com bi uh, biography, Muhammad Ayaskia, right? <laughs> and listen to what he says, right? Um, although a faithful believer, Muhammad was not very well informed in matters of religious orthodoxy and therefore took as an advisor the Moroccan reformer Al Magilia, a prosecutor or persecutor, I'm sorry, Shalaki, persecutor of the Jews mm -hmm. of Tuat to help him put his realm in order, in particular to recover the possessions belonging to the descendants of the, of, uh, the defeated Sunnis and the subservient groups not converted to Islam. There were some Africans in the in 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 Timbuktu in Mali who refused to convert to Islam. Mm. What would they where were they converting from? Their Jewish Judaic ancestry. Now here's the thing: people often say, and I heard Garfield mention this, they didn't have any knowledge, they didn't have any knowledge of a Torah, or they didn't have any knowledge of of the gospels. Well, let's look at that, right? Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Uh, let me find it here. If not, I'll just give you guys the source. I'll give you guys the source because what has happened is, um, ah, here it is right here. Reclaiming Africa. Uh, the gentleman I just showed you, this is one of the books from their library. Right? Hold on a minute. What, uh, what, 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 light warrior, what's the problem? Once again, history, not theology. We don't want theology right now. We want history, right? Just what we want. Oh, that's a side conversation. Go ahead, brother. Agree. Now, here's the source down at the bottom of the screen, and you guys can see it. I'm, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger, so people can actually um, people can actually see it better. Hold on, Alan. I see you in the back. Right. 
So reclaiming Africa, Ishmael the Adadi Hadera. Look him up, people. This is this is historical fact. This is nothing no Israelite made up, right? It says okay. so. This is what happened. It says a copy of the Quran from the 12th century, right? This is the young brother I showed you guys earlier from Timbuktu. His family uh, was was the custodians of the library of Timbuktu. It was passed down to him in that generation. It's still in that family today, right? A copy of the Quran from the 12th century. According to notes in the text, it was bought for a Moroccan king for a sum of gold. In chapter 3, verse 3, in this Quran right here, God says in the Quran, it is he, God, who has sent down the book, the Quran, to you, Prophet Muhammad, with truth, confirming, confirming what came before it. And he sent down the Torah which is the Torah and the Injil, which is what? The gospel. What is the gospel? The gospels of Jesus Christ. This is what the Torah, this is what the Quran says. Go and read it for yourselves, people. So if you're telling me that these people had no understanding in the 12th century AD of the gospels of the Torah and the gospels, you're incorrect. They clearly had a knowledge of it. It's in the Quran. All right, that was a little bit of theology that came in there, but don't worry. Come on, Garfield. Uh, uh, all right, thank you. All right, hold on. Come on, come on, um, come on, Garfield. If not judgment day, then I got you I got Jude in the back. What are you laughing? You, oh my uh, because this guy is and don't interrupt me one time. Not one time. Please Nobody please don't. Please All right. Please 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 and Garfield was quiet. He let you ride. So please go please ahead. Please Everybody please quiet. Please the whole time of that garbage. And I'm going to show people how researchers research. If you notice what how he messed up, the gentleman that he read, I debunked it with Dante till Dante said, no, we're not going to use this source no more. Listen, this is what happened. He read a hypothesis, right? You want this screen up? The screen you got in the back, you want this up or that's from before? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Hold on, don't, don't put it up here. I'm going to put it up right. Put it up right. You can put it up right now. Put it up right now. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Carefully, right? Yara does not know history. He's trying to put theology and mix it with history. If you read the article that he read, remember, he just said, ladies and gentlemen, the guy's using roots. How are you using a hypothetical theory based off a movie named Roots, which was fake, to draw a conclusion that these people were Jews coming off ships? It's a hypothesis. There is no primary source, no primary evidence, nothing, nothing at all. What he said with that article, and that's what I said to the brother, um, um, Dante, when he did it. And he had to make a whole new video. You have no primary source. All you're doing is reading. Learn how to research, brother. It's a hypothesis. Oh, and, and God be backs up this guy, and this guy backs up this guy. Where is the evidence? Oh, well, they're supposed to be Jews because Jews are, ladies and gentlemen, look look at this. Let me just show this, this source real quickly here. The Portuguese archives confirmed the importance of ivory expert at this time in Senegambia. The Jewish merchants obtained their ivory both from Africans and from new Christian Lancados. The Lancados had established contact with the Dutch Jews. So anyway, the non-African, the non-Christian Africans and from white men who are Christian Novas, and they deliver the good. This is a primary source that, that the guy Peter Mark is using to talk about the Jews in Africa. Now, this is how you research. This is what the Africans drew of these, these um, Jews in Africa. I want you to look at this right here. These are the gentlemen, these are Africans who are drawing these ivory things of, of what the Jews look like, not Garfield. This is a primary source. This is not us. Look at these guys looking like Sumerians. Look at these guys, um, Berene. This is nuts. You want me to claim that these people are us and they came on slave ships? These people helped to finance the slave trade. They used to hitchhack rides. Come on, bro. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is just one part of Africa, Senegambia, which the people from Iberia, Spain, and Portugal came over. And they developed an industry. 
Now watch this now. Let me go down to um let me show. I don't need and by the way to ladies and gentlemen, I don't really need to address the um the Timbuktu, the Timbuktu stuff. Hold on, family. But I want to address this real carefully. If you look up the Wikipedia article, the Jews of Bilal, um, can you share that for me, um, Brother Bereen? Nobody doubts that the people in Timbuktu they were uh -huh. Bambara Jews, and I could show the primaries for that. But nobody's disputing that. But these, this is the last rabbi. This don't look like us. Uh, just... That don't look like us, Brother Bereen. Why is this guy being dishonest by leaving this out? This rabbi is the last rabbi of Timbuktu. So there was Jews there. They traded. It's a part of the Trans-Saharan trade route. So they came from Mor Babylon to Morocco. They came on the caravan trade for two, three months. Then they went to Niger. Then they went to um to the top of the top of Nigeria. And then they went to, to Mali, the Timbuktu. So you showing something in the 12th century saying that in the Quran, it said that they could do that. What I got to do with people coming off the train, the, um, the slave trade? But watch this. The guy that he showed in Timbuktu, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, did any of his people come over on slave ships? I thought we were trying to prove that slaves came off the slave ships. So you're showing that there was Jews in, in Mali. Of course we know that because we have this rabbi right here who's the last rabbi. So what are you trying to prove, brother? You see, these guys don't know how to research. You need to come to Garfield, the Dagger Squad, and learn. What you're doing is being dishonest and disingenuous to try to prove Garfield wrong. Okay. All you need is hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let the guard. I never interrupted one time. Look at him. Oh, and they can't listen to Garfield. It's too much heat. Let me get my eight minutes too. That's all I want. Now, Mordecai Abisura with his brother, came from Morocco in 1859 to be a trader in Timbuktu. What did I say to Brother Barit earlier? They are only merchants, traders, they sleep with African women, or they are helping to finance the slave trade. So now, <clears throat> I never said all the original Jews. I said they were people of color, my brother. That's for if anybody listen to me carefully. Now, I'm saying that these Jews in Africa that came in from Europe and all that stuff, they didn't look like me and you. But what I'm trying to prove to you guys is he's trying to prove that Africans that came over on the slave trade, how is it? And I'm going to show this one slide and then I'm done. How is it Africans, right, that came over here? Let me share my screen, um, um, Barry. Let me share this one more thing and then I get three more minutes and I'm done. How is it that Africans, right, that came over, hold on. Went too far, went too far. I want to show y'all something real carefully here. And this is how this is how you dismantle all of this foolishness. You see, the Africans that came over here followed their tradition. Remember that. Remember they were maroon communities. So these saying that they couldn't work on the Sabbath, right? In seven days. What about the elephantine Jews? They're they're working on the Sabbath. They work on the Sabbath and they were Jews. That didn't stop them from showing showing traditions at that time in Elephantine back in the 5th century BC. But you going, that's what I'm saying, you going all the way back to five for the 600 hold BC. On, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Berine. Don't help him. Don't help him, Berine. Don't help him. Hold on, Berine. Don't help him. Please, my brother. Your show, I'm being respectful. Don't help him. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to end this conversation because this guy is a lazy researcher. He's too lazy to come at Garfield. And that's the problem. Let me just show one more slide and I'm done. One more slide. Uh, where is this slide at? Is it right here? I got to find this slide because this is very important. Ah, here we go. Now, look at this, family. This is where the, the people came from off the slave ship, right? Where the areas they come from, the main areas, the top 10 tribes, right? This is when they, the African ethnicity is prominent in North America. They tell you in North America where you come from, which tribe, and everything. We know who we are. These are the ethnicities that came to North America, right? Now, remember he said that the Jews, when they came over to America, right, they weren't able to do what? They weren't able to do their Jewish stuff, right? Now, look at Brazil. Brazil has over 5,000 maroon communities. When they stopped being, when they ran away, right, did they follow Torah laws? No, they were following Santa, they were following Orishas. 
They were following their culture from back home. They weren't following any form of Judaism. So if they were scared to, why didn't the Jamaican Maroons become Jews at that time? They the ones that invented jerk pork. Why didn't they invent jerk chicken if there was kosher? They invented jerk pork. But if you look at this number, freeze the screen and screenshot this. This is from the book. This is from this book, the Yoruba Diaspora in the Atlantic World. And I want y'all to look at the screen. If you see where the people are coming from, the Bite of Benin, the Bite of Biafra, Western Central African, right? You see how many people came. You could trace your ethnicities and what you used to practice based off of this information. Don't listen to these guys. These people are not claiming when they're free and they run away. They don't practice Judaism. They practice African culture. They practice in the Akan, the Igbo. They practice in stuff from Angola. They don't practice in all of that. They had the ability to do anything. Now, one more thing. Let me just say that. If it's, if it, where is the evidence, the primary evidence or primary source? It's an hypothesis. It's based on roots. You should just throw that source out. But, well, well, Cambridge, this is from Cambridge. Any source that Yara brings, always go and read it yourself. Because this guy has, has a history of reading stuff that's not even in the source. All right? But the Maroon communities, again, is proof that if the Jews were over here, they had the ability to do whatever they want. We know where our people from. This is why in this book, you see Yorubaisms in African-American speech patterns. Certain words that you use in the Yoruba is matched with the Gullah. Mm. This is why Yoruba in America, them can't cook. In Jamaica, we say they can't, they, they, in English, you say they can't cook. We yeah. say them can't cook. That's what we say in a Jamaican in the Gullah. So you see the Yoruba words in the African-American community. Don't play with Garfi when it comes to this stuff. I know who we are. Most African-Americans come from Senegambia or Angola and Congo. That's why I show them white Jews from Senegambia. Because if they were to come over as Jews, like the guy that came on my channel, and he's blacker than Berean and me. I remember. I remember. Because his Sephardic parents... Con they converted and they had children and he they never came over as slaves. They came over to come over here and worship in an area where they could practice their religion. Freely. These, you can't show no proof, bro. No proof. Look at where the most African Americans come from. Senegambia and Angola and then, they, then some of them come from Ghana, Cameroon and Nigeria. We know where the people come from. It's documented. So you can't play that game over here, my brother. And everybody who's watching, screenshot this so you know where you're from and what and we could track you to what neighborhood. Because look at this. This shows exactly in the neighborhood where they went, how many Igbos went. So if you're from Baltimore, you more than likely come from Upper Guinea or whatever. We know this information. Stop listening to these guys about Jews. You don't want to be African. You want to be some goat herder from 2,700 years ago. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Oh, all right, I'm going to fix him right now. Hey, yo, come on, Judgment Day. Come to the microphone. Hey, Brian, can I say something right quick? Who that? This Curtis. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Judgment Day, you up next. If not, I'm gonna give it to Oh, uh, Judah or I'm gonna give it to Allen. Yeah, Brian, he never did. He never did put that link in the back chat. Um, uh, no, that was subscribed to Israel. That was the other brother. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, Curtis I want, Lee. Curtis Lee, I want Israel to get. I want Israel to give God for the work. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Curtis Lee. Hold on, Judgment Day. Let Curtis Lee go. I don't know if he got to go. I don't know if he yeah, got to go, but let him go. Okay. Let him, you want to make a statement, then Judgment Day, then you got the floor. Go ahead. Okay, I want to ask uh, um, Garfield some questions, but I, I know I got, so, if he's saying that, okay, I don't, he said a whole lot, but if, if he's saying African people was not in your, um in Spain and Portugal before they went into the slaves trade, I, I got sources that showed that E1B1A was in Spain and Portugal around about the 7 11, 7 25. All right, do me a favor. Pull if you can. If you don't got to go nowhere, pull them sources up. We go off. You're going to get I, this I'll send, it to, I, I'll send it to All right, you. if you put and then I put it up. All right, good. All right, yeah. no problem. Yeah, Thank you, man. I'm not working slides yet, but I did put some in your um, Facebook Messenger. Thank you. Oh, messenger. All right, I'll check it out. Thank you for the support, too, bro. I appreciate yeah. you. I show I send some more stuff to you. I don't know. I put up some slides yet. I'll pull I, it up. Don't worry. You send me. I'm gonna pull it up. Goffy gonna get this work today. Come on, judgment, judgment day. Come up to the microphone, bro. You got it, Goffy. He can hear you. Hello, brother. I'm you know, I'm you know, Muslim. Yeah. You Muslim? Muslim guy, yeah. yeah, Muslim. Yeah. 
Okay, well, um, I don't know how this got to do with Israel, but what you got something you want to share on this? I'm a little confused. My argument is, yeah, why, why are you not talking about history for? Why are you not talking about history for? Why ain't talking about the scriptures from Isaiah 42? Stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Isaiah 42, Isaiah 60. Why talking not about, talk about scripture? Talking about the coming of Prophet Muhammad in Isaiah 42. Oh, no, brother. No, 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 no. We ain't dealing with no, no. We ain't dealing with no Muhammad. No, I'm sorry. I had you even waiting on here. No, this is Israel. We lifting up, we lifting up Israel and God is right now. We don't want Muhammad. We don't want Muhammad. I, I serve the, listen, I'm serving in, I'm going to serve the God of Israel and, we, and we're looking at the prophets of Israel. All of the prophets that we follow come from Israel. Muhammad has no light for us. Not over here now. If y'all got, if he got a channel, y'all want to go over there. There's no light from Muhammad. The light comes from Israel, and that's who we serve. The God of Israel. Y'all can't squeeze Muhammad. He can't civilize the original man. Y'all can't squeeze Muhammad in this thing. Now what I'm dealing with. Y'all deal with what? If y'all got something y'all dealing with, we don't deal with Muhammad over here. We we get get Muhammad, get Muhammad, and get that hadith to stop disrespecting black folk. That's what we're calling us racist head. But um, um, I will block and all of them. Listen, y'all, tell the real history of where y'all got some of that from, some of that stuff from. The Africans, I ain't thinking about Muhammad. I ain't thinking about Muhammad right now. Not me. I'm ignorant. I'm ignorant. Dutch channel here. We are past Muhammad. We ain't even stopping. Come on, Israel. Come back. Oh no, Ralph. Come on, um, Alan. Come on, Alan. Come to the microphone. He back there talking crazy. He back there talking crazy. Uh-uh, he ain't even, that ain't even original. Muhammad can't give us nothing. There's nothing in the Quran for us. Come on and talk. Y'all started the slave trade. Yeah, we already know y'all ain't got no respect for us. We see how y'all treating these Instagram models in Dubai. Go ahead. We good right here. Come on, Alan. I'm muting myself. Yeah, Garfield, you see him? Oh, no, Garfield can hear you. Garfield, oh, he want to work. I'm here, oh, beloved. I'm, I'm here, my beloved brother. Don't let God, don't let him call y'all beloved. Don't let him get y'all with that. Don't let him get y'all with that. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, um, I disagree with you a hundred percent. Um, there's plenty of sources. If you go to the wild and wonderful narrative from Illuminio Castellinus, Castellano, he actually worked on the ships. He stated his culture circumcised he he had to actually stay in another uh, another little house with his mom when she was in her period because he touched her once he got to the um the coast where the slave ships was these people did not keep the same custom as him they defiled their body with jewelry what's his, he name? Said. what's his name my brother i'm sorry what's his name the wild and one it's the wild and wonderful narrative of alumino castellinus Oh, Garfield looking at that right. He's looking for that right now. Yeah, it's no, on no, the first chapter. The I just wanted to hear the name, but I do need to see a source, though. Yeah, that's the source. He actually wrote an autobiography. You're not familiar with that book? What do you say the name of the book is? The Wild and Interesting Narrative of Illuminio Castellanus. Let me get the spelling of his name. Hold on. And then I'm gonna pull up that DNA Alton did that Alton said I thought I was playing the video. Brother Ren, can I respond two seconds when I get a chance to, to Brother Garfield? Of course, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me know when I can go. I appreciate it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna spell his name for you. O L A U D A H. Last name Q. I mean E Q U. Oliana, Ekiana, I got you, I got you, brother, Ekiana. Okay, I got oh, you. I thought he was talking about the way he pronounced. I thought he from what he was saying when he was on the. Oh yeah, oh boy, okay. Oh boy. Uh, hey, yo, Garfield, I told you this your last day. I got a good feeling in my spirit. This your last day on this show. <laughs> yeah, now this this brother in this picture is jet black, right? And what picture? Wait a, a minute. What picture? Wait a minute. Oh, he's talking about, oh, yeah, okay, he's talking about the book on the cover. Go ahead, go ahead, okay. Correct. This brother is jet black. He's stating that um, about they were circumcised. His people um, kept the traditions, kept the Sabbath. He would, when he touched his mom when her cycle was on, he had to stay in a separate outhouse with his mom for, I think, I think 10 to 7 days, 7 to 10 days, something like that. Just like the Torah say. Correct. So... He said it's not until he got into England he seen some white-skinned people 
that was keeping the same customs. But when he was also on the ship, because he actually had a job on the ship, he met a lot of people from that that from his um community that kept the same custom as well. You 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 and just give a golf here. I hate y'all. I hate the spot right here. He just said job, didn't he? Hey, no, nothing no, else to do, man. We might as well just go ahead and let it go. Keep going, Alan. Not, not, even fast, dug it. not so fast, but Ren. Garfield think he's going to skate on this Equiano deal. Okay, all right, good, good. I'm glad you're here. All right, good, good, good. And I have one more after that. I got, I got a few, but we're going to do it one more after that. No, no, no. Hold on with that one right there. Before God, no, I want, I want, subscribe to Israel. I want you to go before Garfield go, because once he get to running with that Equiano and stuff, he ain't going to, he ain't going to get a microphone back. So I want you to start off with your reply. Then you can lead into that. Then we give it back to Garfield. Go back into, from what he first was saying, from the Cambridge, from the source, and from what he said about you, pick it up from right there. Come on, nobody say nothing. You got the floor. You're muted. You know you're muted, right? You trying to bring me back on? No, no, no. It's because we crap to Israel. Now the cat got his tongue. Now I might as well give it back to Golfy. You don't know how to unmute yourself? Hold on. Wait, no, I can't unmute you. Oh, he might have walked. I'm free, I'm free, brother Barry. Oh, man. Hold on. Give him a subscribe to Israel. Where you at, bro? Yeah, he may have stepped away for a second. Yeah. Oh no, Dad, hold on. You unmuted, but we still can't hear you. We see you just unmute yourself. All right, Garfield already pulling his screens up. I might as well go ahead and start cleaning my chicken. Get this air fryer ready because this is getting ready to be this is getting ready to be some beef right here. Yo, you yeah, might have to go out and you might have to go out and come back in. Like we can't hear you. That's what I was about to say. But you're unmuted and we still can't hear you. All right. Oh, I'll come back in. On this Equiano deal. Huh? Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I can't hear you. I said, I'll take Garfield on this Equiano. No, we're waiting for you. Go ahead. No, and the first part. We want you to go first. We want you to go first. I'm going to take the screen back down. Oh, that's this is. Tell me, type one if y'all hear anybody. Type one if y'all hear anybody. I don't, I don't hear him. Um, Brother Yara, you yes. got to go out and come back in or something, bro. Okay, go ahead, bro. We could hear you. You don't hear me? Now we, yes, now we do. Now we do. Okay. All right. First of all, I just want to address a few things that you were saying with your last conversation, right, to follow up. You showed us the Moroccan rabbi from 1850, almost 400 years after the source that I bought out in 1492 dealing with Askia Muhammad. Come on, Garfield, you can't use that source. You can't show us a, a, a Moroccan rabbi, a Sephardic Jew, 400 years later down the road, almost at the end of the of, of the transatlantic slave trade, and say, oh, look, look, look at this. This is what a Moroccan Jew, this is what a, a rabbi or a, a Moroccan Jew really looks like in Timbuktu. Man, light skin. Come on. The slaves Come on. are already gone. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you kidding me? And then you go into well, let's show how come the Maroons or the Jews that were or the or, or, the, or the Africans that were taking or the Africans that were taking from the west coast of the rice coast of Africa over into Jamaica, where you're from, Garfield. What you're doing is disingenuous because you're not telling the people what you're showing them is what you consider from your background being quote unquote the fake Jamaican that you are. You were talking about those people, those Maroons. Maroons were people who were taken over to the Caribbeans and ran up and hid in those hills and those mountains. Those who the Maroons were. So those are the people that were taken. So now you're showing their existence. We said from the very beginning, God be always addressed that the every uh, person that were taken from the West Coast of Africa wasn't uh, didn't have a Jewish background. You're only sure talking about the people who didn't have the Jewish background. So your whole argument is fallacious, Garfield. This is why you guys have to watch the snake oil salesman when they're presenting this information. It's three card Monty. Uh oh. You understand what I'm saying? So he this is what he's doing. So he showed you guys, he showed you guys uh evidence and traces of African tribes, the Yoruba specifically, right? The Yoruba specifically, who no one even says is Jewish. 
or had a, a history of practicing Judaism on the west coast of Africa. So he shows you that and say, see, as if those were all the uh, African slaves. Come on, he should have showed a number. Come on, come on, come on, hey, come on, Goffin. Come on, somebody got to give Goffin that work. We're talking about the slaves that were not a part of these people. You can't dismiss the limba. You can't dismiss the oral traditions of these people. And this is why I talk about you have to listen to these guys when they when they do sleight of hand. They're grifters with the information. And what they do is they simply say, look, here's, here's African slaves. But look, these are no, we know these people who are telling you we're not African. We're not traditionally African. They're telling you who they are. But it's mighty funny that we have folks like Garfield who love to dismiss the oral tradition of Africans. Y'all love to dismiss their oral traditions. These people are telling you by oral tradition that they come from Israelites. But simply because you disagree with their narrative, you say no. Then you ask for a source. We show you a source. You say, oh, no, that can't be. God be never says he, he extracted his information from Roots. The movie Roots was not even out. The book was not even written at the time. So what are you talking about? You That's a lie. So when he's showing you and telling you there's no way you can follow the traditional, the material culture of Judaism in the Americas when slaves, when they wouldn't allow you to eat, when all they did was allow you to eat pork, all they did was allow you to uh, uh, work seven days a week, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't show the Sabbath. It's the reason why they separated the tribes. We know this. So they couldn't even communicate. So they couldn't keep their customs. So they wouldn't rise up against the slave master. That's not anything we have to make up. That's a fact of history. Now let's go into this whole Equiano thing if we must. And no, 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 no. Wait till, wait to see what he say. Wait to see what Garfield say before you blow with Equiano. Absolutely. Come on, Garfield. Absolutely. Come on, Garfield. Hold on, give me. You want to miss anybody else before Garfield touches J Mac? You want to do them? As you want, you want, you want to say something before he? Why he talking trash, Roger? Go, um, Dunamis, you want to? He might have walked away. Alan, you want to say something before no, Garfield? No, no. All right, all right, all right. Come on. I'll wait till they get done. Okay. I got one more. All right. Okay. All right. Um, that's not your screen. That's my screen. What's good, Plumber Sloan? Um, Garfield, you trying to pull a screen up? You can hear me, right? I hope I ain't put them out yet. I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm just trying. I'm here laughing, but I, let me just find this screen. <laughs> Yo, this is funny, man. This is just so funny. Now, if you look at the first thing that I asked for, right? I asked him, notice he ain't talking about that first Cambridge article no more. <laughs> he told that. You skipped that part? <laughs> yeah, he ain't saying nothing about that. <laughs> he skipped all the way to Timbuktu. <laughs> That's where I started. I'm telling you Why are you interrupting, bro? You see, he ain't got no. Yo. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Let him be a yeah, yeah. Don't say nothing. If you notice, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just chilling. But let me let me do this for the, for the family anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Let me do this for the family real quick. This is this is just too easy, man. You got to get somebody who studied. They're not. That's the problem. I have been diagnosed as the Hebrew killer for a reason. For a reason. Now, I want... Alpha, he got a disease. He said he'd been diagnosed with it. And yo, I hate these people on here. <laughs> Go ahead, and go ahead, man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen. I want I want to say this to everybody, right? If you notice something about the, the the um the Yoruba, right? You talk about the oral traditions, right? Let me kill one real quickly, and then I'm gonna come right back to to this um we call it. Let's get to the oral tradition because they like to talk about oral traditions, right? Um, let me do this. This is what I was trying to get together so that we wouldn't have to be going back and forth. Um, hold on one second, um, my brother. Okay, I want I want to say this first of all. If you look at the Ashanti oral tradition, it's from this book. Tudor Parfit, he documents it. The Ashanti, right, which is said they're Jews. This guy by the name of Ose Agiman Prempe, he changed the oral tradition of the Ashanti people, ladies and gentlemen. This is not even a joke. He used the book Hebrews in West Africa. He added a chapter of the oral tradition to add that they were from Israel and from Egypt. Before this time, the Asante wasn't claiming this. So when they come with the oral tradition, I, I got the remedy for these guys. I got the remedy. So again, 
This is about the chapter from this book, Tudor Parfit. He documents the Ashanti oral tradition. Prempi was the guy that added the Egypt and the Israel part to the Ashanti. All right? Um, let me get one more with the wider. No, I don't want to do wider. Let me do... Um, let me do... Hold on one second, family. I am so sorry I don't have this all together. It's here. But I want to get the um the oral traditions of African. You see, the Yoruba is very... The Yoruba claims they are Israel today. But what did they claim before that? And this is key. They claim they come from Mecca. They claim that they come from Medina. They claim they come from the tribe of Nimrod. Has anyone ever claimed that they come from the tribe of Nimrod? No, but the Yoruba has. They claim a lot of things. But what we what we need to understand is why are these oral traditions all over the place? They're all over the place for a reason. All right, hold on one second. Yeah, I got it. Here we go. Oral and and Garfield, with that, can you also, with Yoruba, can you also touch on Odudua? What are your views with that? Because my understanding is that they should have I don't have any views on that. Okay. I think that's a part of the oral tradition. That's a part of the indigenous people. And I and I want to respect them for that and say, hey, you know what? Maybe you're right. Well, right. no. When I, when I ask it in terms of syncretism, because my understanding is oh, do us a progenitor. And how does that go with the, these claims that they come from somewhere else? That's what I was asking, but yeah. Okay. Um yeah. yeah. Let me um let me find this. Give me a second. Um um all right, all right. All right, whilst you're doing that, you need a second, second, because I'll play this that, that couple of minutes that Alton was talking about on this other video whilst you look setting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. First is that not all of the Limba people share the same hopper group. This means that some of those who are currently a part of that tribe had to have been a convert at some point. And if that's the case, it means that being an Israelite has nothing at all to do with your blood type. Let's hear what a geneticist who actually studied the Limba tribe has to say. Good day, Doctor. How are you? Very well, thank you, and welcome. So, Doctor, please tell us about yourself and the work that you do. I'm a human geneticist, and I've been working here at the National Health Laboratory Service for the past 29 years. And my research has focused on using genetic methods to try to understand the history of the peoples of Africa. So when and how did you hear about the Lemba people? Well, it was around the middle of the 1980s when my um, head of department, Professor Trevor Jenkins, was invited by the Lemba Cultural Association to come and do genetic research on the Lemba to kind of investigate their own oral history about their linkages to Jewish people. Please tell us about the Y chromosome study and how it came about and the people that were involved in it. When I did mitochondrial studies, we found no linkages with people from outside of Africa. In fact, you couldn't tell the difference between a Lemba or a vendor among whom they lived and other people in the Southern African region. However, when my colleague Mandy Spurdle did Y chromosome studies, this is the Y chromosome that boys get from their dad, a very interesting pattern was obtained. About half the number of males that we tested had Y chromosomes that didn't fit the patterns that were usually found in Africa. In one particular group or clan within the Lemba, the Buba, one Y chromosome pattern was very similar to what was seen among Jewish priests or the Kohanim. Mm. And so this brought a closer linkage with their oral history and suggestions of maybe Jewish origins. So most recently, I've now taken the studies even further, used the more recent genetic markers that now define the Cohen pattern and re-looked at our Lemba samples, not only the South African samples, but also the ones we collected from Zimbabwe, because Lemba people also live there. And when we now use this new set of markers, 
the patterns we observed at lower levels of resolution are no longer found. So the Cohen pattern that is now described in the literature is not found in the Lemba. So doctor, in conclusion, what do these results tell us about the Lemba people and their Jewish ancestry claims? So while we can say or conclude from our genetics that the pattern is not the same, with respect to claim of identity by culture, no genetic test can tell you that. So the most powerful message I want to get out of this is that genetic ancestry does not equal your identity. Mm -hmm. Cultural identity, individual identity is constructed using many, many, many factors. Thank you very much, Doctor, for giving us such an insightful overview on the origins of the Lambo people. For those, Alton, Alton, Alton. Alton, Alton, Alton. Don't you, don't you, don't, don't you, don't you feel that? Matter of fact, y'all are two, y'all are two in the same. Go ahead, Garfield. Is this the screen you want? Or you're not ready yet? Yes, sir. I, I just want to address the oral tradition stuff that he said. And this is from David M. Goldenberg. Um, he's one of the best linguists out there. He's a very, very good um, research on the curse of ham and all that stuff. All right. So this is the book, Black and Slave, David M. Goldenberg. And we, we there's a part in the book talk about West African sources. Now, several West African traditions indicate a genealogical connection between Black Africans and the ancient Canaanites. Scholar Mohammed Bello and Sultan of um, Hausland wrote a history of the Yoruba in 1812. He included this account of Yoruba origins. The peoples of the land of Yoruba are from the remnants of the people of the Banu Kanan, who were the tribe of Nimrod. The reason for their dwelling in the West, based upon what has been narrated, is that Yorab ibn Katan drove them out from Iraq towards the West. They then journeyed between the lands of Egypt and Abyssinia, until they reached the lands presently known as Yoruba. In every land which they passed, they left behind a group of their people in that land. It is said that the indigenous blacks who reside in the mountains of Nuba in this region is from them. Likewise, all the people of Yaru from them. The explorer Hugh Clapperton visited Bello and Sokoto and copied large parts of Bello's work, which he later published. The story of Yoruba origins corresponds to what Bello wrote, except that Clapperton has the Canaanites originating not from Iraq, but from Arabia. Another traditional history has the Yoruba coming from Medina. Still others put their origin in Mecca. Another West African source, the Kano Chronicle, details the history of the Hausa people of northern Nigeria, whose origin they claimed line two migrations, one from Baghdad and one from Canaan. Older scholarship accepted the historicity of these migration stories. The consensus of scholarship today, however, does not. Robin Law and others have concluded that the Yoruba stories are legendary. The more general view nowadays, at least among academic historians, which Garfield is not, you know, but this is what the academic historians are saying, is that these traditions of migration from the Middle East are to be explained by the expansion of the influence of Islam in sub-Saharan Africa in relatively recent times. The concern of African peoples to claim origins from the Islamic world reflects no more than a desire to relate themselves to what was seen as prestigious world civilization. Um, similarly, um, uh, Maury Last wrote of the Hausa accounts in the Connor Chronicle are almost wholly legendary, reflecting 16th or 17th century anachronisms and indication of the Islamic influence is the adoption of various Muslim traditions and personalities in these stories of origins, as law has shown. Now, I saw my brother put up something about the Mali. All right. Now, if you study the Dogon and all those traditions that come from that region, I could actually, if I had time, I have it on my computer, I could show the Islamic influence. You see, what happened is people forget that the Islam people are also doing the same thing that Hebrews do. You know, it's just like with with um with Ghana, the claim of origin in the East goes beyond your Roman house. Law mentions the kings of Ghana who claim descent from the Caliph Ali, the son-in-law and fourth successor of Muhammad, the founder of the. You know what I'm saying? They're claiming this stuff to come from come from where? We're coming from first. They want to come from Arabia and Mecca because that's who colonized them. Then later on, they try to say that they come from Canaan because remember the Muslims used to teach that. Guess what? Cush is Canaan's son, which is not biblical. 
So when they were using the curse of Ham to enslave us, they call us Kushites. So when you read the Muslim sources, they're going to call us Kushites, not because we're from Kush, but because we are dark skinned. So when you're reading all these Muslim sources, some of these guys don't know what, they, what they're reading. So this is where they trace their heroes. Why would, why would Ghana people trace their to roots to Mecca or to Muslim stuff, then to Canaan? Because it has Islamic influence. They're not from Hebrews. They're not from Israelites. This is a recent thing that they've done and added into their culture. All right. As far as Mali, I will go there too. I will go there too. This is recent. And if bring your sources. If you disagree with me, this bring your sources. It tells you. This is what the expert. I'm not an expert. I'm not an anthropologist. Robin Law is the one that goes in the culture. So you laughing and said, what? And I have this sword because you want to claim something that you're not. You're an identity thief. You want to be Israel. You want to be chosen. And that's your problem. You don't want to deal with the facts on the ground. The facts, the facts on the ground, the ground they, they, this is what it is. All right. You want to deal with Equiano or you want him to get the floor well, next? Let me, let, me, let me deal with Equiano real quickly. The issue with Equiano that the brother just said. And he no, let's go take your time because he's going to break it down good. Don't cut him off when he gets to cutting you. Cut, no, um, no, go no, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm walking away. I you. Oh, I don't need no, oh, a lot of time for Equiano. The issue with Equiano is nobody knows 100% where Equiano comes from. In one instance, he's saying one thing. And in another instance in the book, he's saying another thing. But I must say that there are certain things in his writings that aligns with history exactly with the dates. Like when he's on ships and all that stuff. So it aligns up with it 100%. So I will say this. I will say Equiano is an African-American just to be on the safe side. But I don't know if he actually was on a slave ship and came over and all those stories because he made some changes with his tradition. So I'll go by what he says, but then you're going to have to weed it out and say, is this true or not, based on what the historical record says and what he actually says in his book. So whenever he's ready, he could come on or whoever else. All right, he muted. I mute my mic. I'm here. All right, go ahead. I don't even know. I, Abe, I, Abe, we're trying to go somewhere. I hope you ain't here to bring on no confusion. I hey, see I, you in the I've back. No, no, you, bro. I'm, I, I'm talking about somebody in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, you have to fall myself. I, I, I've never seen anybody on a panel put their Nike running track shoes on backwards and run like Garfield just did from this Equiano discussion. That he's been claiming for the last five years or so that Equiano was lying about his Hebrew origin. Now he's saying it's inconclusive. Now he's saying, I don't really know. This is the problem I have with you, Garfield. You speak. Hold on, I'm sorry. Before I got to walk away, you got a screen you want to pull up? Absolutely. All right, I want to pull it up before I walk away so so I could, so y'all could, um, so you could do your thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Go, don't go nowhere, Garfield. Don't go nowhere. And I'm going to give it to him because Garfield, you know, he, he, he thought I ran from him in the debate from this, but Garfield wasn't ready then, and he's not ready now. But I deal with him with his only source that he, he only deals with when it comes to really. All right, I'm walking away. All right, go ahead. You got the screen. I'm walking away. All right. So y'all see, family, this is Reclaiming Africa, right? And, 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 uh, the, the validity of uh, Oladawu Equiano answering the critics. This includes you, Garfield, right? So we see all these various different writings uh, that uh, Equiano himself uh, 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 was written and has been published, right? So if anybody wants to really get a read on what Equiano was actually saying himself, these are some of the books and sources you can actually go to and read. You'll see what it says, Oladawu Equiano or Gustavus Vassa. That's because his slave master gave him a different name and named him after him. That does not in any way certain uh, take away from what he actually wrote, right? Now, let's deal with these sources, right? Uh, Sylvester A. Johnson, Colonialism, Biblical World Making and Temporalities uh, in Oladawu Equiano's Interesting Narrative, Church History. Let's, let's read some of this, right? Just let's read some of this, right? Uh, I'll just start here. Equiano's narrative of Jewish origins. Equiano's autobiography rendered before his readers an intriguing story of descent into slavery and accent through maritime adventure to eventual freedom. Equiano claimed as his place of birth, the region of the Igbo nation in what is now Nigeria, 
Um, and when you listen to Equiano's breakdown of 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 customs and things that he remembered from this time, uh, haven't even uh, haven't even been taken since the time of slavery back to the land. He clearly, clearly had uh, uh, direct connections to these different people, as the brother was bringing out before, to these Igbos and their customs, their Jewish customs. Where would he get that from? Where would he get it from? And I'll show you there's no possible way he can get it from unless he got it directly from memory being there, right? And this is another Cambridge source, right? Um, Equiano claimed that his place of birth was the region of Igbo nations. He told of being kidnapped and forced into slavery, eventually being sold to slaveholders in the Americas. His purchase by a British naval commander would take him to a number of Atlantic destinations that would afford him an exceptional experience of slavery marked by the mitigated role of racial antipathy among naval crews on the open seas. During this time, Equiano would be renamed Gustavo Vassa. Uh, Equiano was subsequently sold in 1762 to a slaveholder in the British West Indies where he witnessed the most genocidal uh, uh, dimensions of black Atlantic slavery on the region's sugar plantations. In 1766, Equiano purchased his freedom after barely avoiding the loss of his life due to the precarious status of freed Africans and slaveholder in Americas. He made his home in England. Right. So here's one of the biggest questions. If Equiano is claiming to be from this tribe of Igbos in Nigeria, then gives us a complete record, right? Best of his recognition of knowledge of his Jewish origins and the various customs that they were keeping. Where did he get that from? He didn't get it from any one of his slaveholders because none of them were Jewish. So who was teaching him this Jewish narrative? Who was teaching him these Jewish customs? These people that he was acquainted, these slave masters that he was acquainting himself with were Christians. And I can prove it. They wouldn't have even been teaching him any type of Jewish custom or history. They were Christians. They were not Jews. So where did he get this understanding of Jewish custom and narratives from? He just pulled it out of the sky? Absolutely not. These are things that were committed to him from memory. From memory. Let's go a little bit further. Right? Now, here's the biggest uh, 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 contractor of information of Equiano. And this is where Garfield gets the crux of his argument against Equiano comes from this guy, Coretta, right? We're still at Cambridge University source. Y'all write it down and take it and read it for yourselves, right? Vincent Coretta, he's the one where Garfield gets this argument from, people. And I'm going to show you how Vincent Coretta has been debunked. Vincent Coretta has recently challenged the veracity of Equiano's claim to Igbo origin. See his Equiano the African, right? Coretta argues compellingly, though not conclusively, that Equiano's assertion of Igbo, uh, Igbo birth is a thoughtful uh, um, is a thoughtful ruse to enrich the potency of his damning criticism of the transatlantic slave trade. So basically, he says Equiano made all of this up in order to condemn the transatlantic slave trade and the atrocities that he witnessed as being a, a seafarer which is completely stupid, right? Because he still never gives us the source where Equiano can get any information about the Jewish customs he writes about. He's not being sold to any type of Jewish traders or slavers. Watch this. For instance, Equiano's discussion on West Africa, as remembered from his childhood, seems mechanically dependent upon European travel narratives. Really? such as that by Anthony ben, uh, Benazet. More directly, Equiano's baptismal record indicates, watch this, and this is where this guy Coretta hangs his hat on to try to debunk anything Equiano has to say. Equiano's baptismal record indicates North American, the Carolinas, as his place of birth. So if his birth certificate says he was born in the Americas in North Carolina, then how is Equiano saying he was born in Nigeria or, in, or, or among the Igbos? That's the crust of Coretta's argument here, family. Anything you can read that goes against what Equiano has ever said comes from this guy's narrative based on the fact that he's saying he has a birth certificate that he was born in North Carolina versus him saying that he was born in, uh, uh, Equiano saying he was born in, uh, in Nigeria. 
Now watch this. I'm going to skip down through this for the sake of time to show y'all where this has been debunked. Where it makes absolutely no sense. Now Garfield's familiar with this guy when it comes to Equiano's research, but he never brings it out. Paul Love joined the Department of History. He's not a white guy. He looks white, but he's African. He's African-American. Professor, uh, uh, he's Canadian-American, I should say. Uh, I'm sorry, Canadian. Uh, African-Canadian, Afro-Canadian. Professor Canadian, uh, uh, Canada Research Chair in African Diaspora History. Distinguished Research Professor of the World Society of Canada. Right? Y'all go look him up. And he gives you a breakdown on Equiana's true history. And he goes into Coretta's research and debunks it. And the, the same information where um, Garfield bases his whole argument against Equiano on is based on Vincent Coretta. Paul Lovejoy destroys it. Let me show you, right? This is Paul Lovejoy, right? You want to say we don't research? We don't know how to research? We got you, fam. The issues of motivation. That's the Equiano and Coretta's critique of, of the evidence. Not some fly-by-night uh, uh, made-up story or any window or hypothesis. We're destroying Coretta's cr critique of the evidence that Equiano presented. Now watch this. It's Issues of Motivation, right, by Paul E. Lovejoy. Watch this. In his assessment, Vincent Coretta, which is where Garfield gets all his arguments from against uh, Equiano, almost states that Vassa was born in South Carolina. Almost, because once again, he does not actually say it. In my opinion, Vassa's claim to an African birth should be accepted. But Coretta argues that the evidence does not lead to that conclusion. Does that mean Coretta believes he was born in South Carolina? Apparently not, for he still considers the evidence for and against his assertion of an African birth is ultimately inconclusive. In other words, Coretta can't prove it or disprove it. And this is where Garfield gets his information from when it comes to Equiano family. And this is all to my Israelite brothers that's out here. Anytime somebody brings up their Equiano argument to try to get y'all off of it, say it's debunked, it's a lie. Nothing's been debunked about Equiano. Not a single shred of evidence. Watch this. The evidence is more conclusive for this historian than for Coretta. And as a literary critic, this scholar has gone a lot further than Coretta, seems to think in assessing the text and the context. Although Coretta rejects the idea that Vassa might have been born in Africa, he refuses to be pinned down on a Carolina birth. Is there another alternative? Coretta's interpretation is not historical reconstruction, but a nod towards it doesn't matter. That's his whole argument. It don't matter where he was born at. So he going to, again, this is Garfield loving to take the narratives of people when they give their origin, their, their oral traditions, and say, all oh, your oral traditions doesn't matter. Really? Really? Garfield never brings any evidence, people. Everything Garfield presents on any topic is inconclusive. Inconclusive. He always said there's a consensus of scholars. There's no such thing he can show you on a consensus of scholars when it comes to this information. In order to have a consensus of scholars, there needs to be a, 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 a convening group of people across interdisciplinary studies, not just uh, anthropology, not just DNA, but across all aspects of, of fields of study that come together with the meeting of the minds and then agree on one conclusion. That's how you get a consensus of scholars. The consensus of scholarship is not based on a majority vote. All right, I'm sorry. I, I, had, to, I had to walk away for a minute. But what you tell me what, I, I know I missed a good bit. It, 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 sound, it sound like it sound like we got something going on here right now. Right. All right. Um. No. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead and yeah, um. Yeah. Wrap your part up, and yeah, then I'm going to see. Right now, right now. Yeah. Then I'm gonna see what if if Alan wanted to add something to that to that right. Equiano, and right, then right. and then see if Alan if, if if Abe could stomp on Garfield a little bit. I see no, Abe no, just no, jump no, back no, on. No, no. I don't know. Yeah, you want to respond to him, but wait a minute. It's okay. You can be on the road for a minute. It's okay. You hey, hey, used to run a muck on Trinetta. We want to run a muck on Trinetta, Sylvia. That's what's going on here. All right. All right. Let me get yeah. the Let me get the You're going to get a 
body let today. Me finish I'm broken for coffee. I'm gonna put God finish. under the back. Man, he want man, he want murder on my channel. He he don't don't listen, listen, listen. Listen. Man, he want bodies on my channel. Go ahead, bro. Finish. He trying to that's that Jamaican shuffle he trying to do. Go ahead and finish up. So watch this. Coretta's interpretation is not historical reconstruction, but it nod towards it doesn't matter when it does matter. Vassa was born somewhere and the historian has to make an assessment while some literary critics may not think this is essential. Coretta argues that Equiano indisputably suppressed the records of a South Carolina origin when he decided to publish the reconstruction of his life. In this interesting narrative, Vassa did not mention his baptismal record which he may or may not have known about, nor did he explain why he enlisted on the Arctic expedition in 1773 with a declared Carolina birth. Although he does provide considerable detail about both his baptism and the Arctic, the claim to a South Carolina birth apparently served a purpose at one time in his life, but was in fact not correct and therefore not worth mentioning in his autobiography. There is no proof that Vassa or Oladawu Equiano tried to hide these documents, let alone suppress them, other than Coretta's imagination. Coretta explains the motive for Vassa's alleged fabrication of evidence as an, abolish, as an abolitionist plot. According to Coretta, the abolitionist movement required precisely the kind of account of Africa and the middle passage that Vassa supplied. For this reason, Coretta asks if Equiano suppressed accurate records of a South Carolina birth and invented an African birth because of obvious uh, abolitionist and financial records. Now watch this. Whether the author of the interest in of, of, of Equiano should be referred to as Equiano, it means nothing. He was born and how he was related to a place of birth. The choice of names also relates to how scholars want to perceive of the author. On the one hand, and now the man himself presented himself at the time on the other. It is argued here that the author of the interesting narrative used in his birth name, Oladawo Equiano, as proof of his Af African background, not as a name by which he wanted to be known. Gustavo Vassa, hence the dilemma, is why scholars refer to him by his African name when he, choose not to, when he chose not to do so. It is suggested that the use of the birth name has more so to do with politics of representation and political correctness. So this had nothing to do with Equiano or Gustavo Vassa. And if you really read on Gustavo Vassa, he did a lot of important work in the abolitionist movement to free black slaves. He did a lot of important work, a lot of important work. He wasn't just somebody who was just out here writing on any type of thing to try to prove a point to make something up because it was too easy for them to go back and trace uh, where he came from. And I'm going to tell you this, this. When he goes back and he's left with two sisters, right? I'm going to see what he's found here. He's left with two sisters because I got a lot of information here that Garfield really don't want his work on. Oh, wait, hold on. No, no, no. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I, I, I already pulled the screen down. Hold on one second. I see it look like you're changing the screen in there. Hold yeah. on. Hold on one second. Alan, you good. He, he, you don't even need to help in none of this, right, Alan? Alan can, uh, Alan can, the brother, Alan can come on and interject if he like to. No, no, no. The brother is correct. This, the... All right, now, Alan, you know you got, to, you got to get you some. Uh -uh, them headphones is acting up. This is, and this is the last part I want to get to right here because this destroys anything he's talking about, right? And any anybody that wants to say, oh, he learned Jewish customs from somebody else or he heard it from somebody else, watch this. Equiano spent the next years being a servant to Pascal's cousins. That was his last, um, in 1763, that was his last um, uh, slave master, right? He spent years being educated he spent years being educated uh, uh, by uh, 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 Pascal's cousins, the Gawarian sisters, G-U-E-R-I-N, right? These were devout Christians. They were devout Christians. These were not Jewish people. They were devout Christians. They were not teaching him uh, Judaism. So where did he get it from? from memory, from his life as a child. There's no evidence nobody set him down and taught him any type of Jewish religion or taught him from a Torah. 
1763, at the end of the war, Pasco had promised to free him. He broke this promise and sold him to the captain of a slave ship. He was sent back to the West Indies and sold to a man named Robert King who took him to Georgia. They took him to Georgia. He dreamed of his freedom. Robert let him work to be free. And in 1766, he had saved enough money to buy the papers needed to make him free. And then he went back to England. All right. Hold on a minute. All right. Hold on. A minute. I'm going to close the screen up right here. Hey, do you want to touch on that? Do you want to touch on that? Because Garfield ready to go. Abe, you there? I have a question before Garfield starts going. Go ahead, Abe. I don't know where he at. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. So, so earlier it was touched on that. Um, Come on, Israel. I'm putting the link out there. Garfield up against Rose right now. This your shine. This your time right now. This your time right now. Go ahead. Go ahead, um, J Mac. Earlier, earlier was pointed out that um, um, yeah, he meant he 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 definitely mentioned the uh, um, Kota Kente, um. And Muslim I didn't get to ask because I yeah and I and I and I, Garfield said something about Kota Kente. I don't know if he meant the the whole story of Kota Kente being fake, or if he meant something else. But I was going to ask: Did not Kota Kente pass down his traditions that he learned from his father to his daughter, and they passed it down? That's how Alex Haley was able to learn about his his uh, uh ultra in the movie Roots from his, from his yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, his uh, yeah, his uh, lineage. You want me to respond to that, beloved? No, not yet. Your Garfield, wait a minute. I hate when people get a new Glock. They just ready. They just looking for their own. Calm down. Calm down. I don't interrupt people. I'm the number one interrupter. I don't do that. But I'm gonna tell y'all this right now. He took 27 minutes a while ago. I done vacuum. I done vacuum the whole. I done did a whole bunch. I don't know why are you busy clocking. Oh man. Hey yo, I see, I see. We got a hater, Garfield. You, you do it. Don't worry. If your 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 fifteen minutes is gonna equate to his whole twenty seven, don't worry. Hold on, Jay Mac, gun land your plane. Cause Garfield ready. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the question I had for Garfield and the other uh, uh, gentleman can answer uh, because if I guess I'm contending that if uh, uh, Kunta Kente was able to pass down his traditions, I don't. Understand? I know. I, know, I understand about you know uh, slaves being beaten and being you know forced to accept certain ideology. I get that. I totally get that. But they still. You don't remember down. seeing no. You don't rem remember seeing no Judaism in the movie Roots. That's what you said. That's one of the kind no, of. No, no, I'm not even, and I'm not even basing it on Roots. I'm just saying were were they not able? How come they weren't able to pass down some of their traditions? You know, to somebody. The oral. Yeah, because Kutu Kente passed down some traditions. And that's yes, how yes. Alex Haiti was able to trace his roots. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Um, all right. All right, Garfield. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You don't want to question nobody, right? I'm going to pull your screen up. Everybody could just, just to prevent any anybody from any button in, we're going we to put them all, Israel, all in the back. Go ahead. You got the flow. All right. First, first and foremost, you just got set up, bro. You just got set up and you fell for it. <laughs> you know I don't believe Equiano is born in America, born in um, Africa, man. You know I don't believe that. But I did say I, I was being deceptive a while ago with my response because I wanted to hear what you were going to come with. And, I, and I'm glad I did that. <laughs> hey, ladies, <laughs> this is so funny, man. This is why Garfield is the most dangerous man. You must have never saw my response to these two guys. All right. Now you're gonna question him. You want him to? You want me to bring him? You gonna? Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Get rid of him. No, no. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. Educated on this issue. All right. And by the way, Alex Haley um settled a lawsuit with that. We're not sure where he got the story from because he stole somebody's story so with the plagiarism. Yeah, like right. the yeah, yeah. So that's for the brother who had asked a very important question, saying if that guy remembered his tradition, why wouldn't the Jews or Israelites remember? Because they weren't Israelites. They were Muslims and they were some of them were converted on the ships to be Christians and so forth. All right. So let's so he said the records is funny with Equiano, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the primary from the church. Guess whose name is on there? Gustavo Vasa, number right here, above eleven. You see Elizabeth or whatever, husbands or whatever. You see Gustavo Vasa, black born in Carolina, 12 years old. Who did they get that information from? 
And remember, Gustavo Vasa said he was 12, but he was born 1745. So he was literally 14 years old at the time. He lied about his age. This is what people don't realize. This guy's been lying from he was a baby. From a baby. But let's look at it some more now. Gustavo Vasa, 12 years old. All right. Let's look at the muster roll now. Because remember, in his book, he told us he was on a ship. He said he was on a ship with his friends. And the date matches up with the actual ship. This ship right here. In 1773, in his book, he wrote the same exact date, 1773. And guess what? Who was on the racehorse? You can't see clearly, but the third line, South Carolina, he's 28 years old. His name is Gustavo Weston. That's how he signed his name. How do we know this is Gustavo Vasa? Because there were only three Africans on the ship, or three black people. The three black people, and this is from his book, by the way. He talks about um, going on the race horse. So we know this records is true, right? So we know it's Gustavo Vasa because two of the guys there said they were from Africa. So he didn't have any fear of being an African because guess what? He declared on the ship he wasn't from South Carolina. Now, ladies and gentlemen, watch this now. Remember this. When he's on this ship saying he's from South Carolina and he's 28 years old, remember, He's free at the time. He's not a slave. So he could say, I'm Oliada Equiada at the time. But he never chose to do it because he made the whole thing up later on. We're going to get to that in a minute. All right? Now watch this, family. He asked a simple question. He said, Garfield, why would he lie to say he's a... Um, and by the way, this is his, um, his, um, his will in 1797. Why didn't he, and this was after he declared he was Equiano, why didn't he change his will to Oliada Equiano? Why didn't he write his will in that name? You see, this is, this is, this is the problem. This is the problem. My brother, you want to believe that Equiano is a Jew to try to strengthen your argument. You and the whole Yahweh war machine are a bunch of jokes. This is why I debate you anywhere, anytime. You just got set up, bro. I just proved to the world that he said he was from South Carolina. So who do we believe? Do we believe the story or do we believe what he wrote? Watch this now, family. Watch this. This is why Garfield is the best at what I do. This is his marriage certificate, 1792. After he claimed he was um, Equiano again, he's marrying this white woman. He forgot to tell y'all he, he was a white lover. He wanted to be white. Did y'all know that Equiano wanted to be white? Before, before my brother kicked me off the show for proving this point that he wanted to be white, I'm going to show y'all something carefully from Equiano. Equiano, when he became 28 years old and he was on the ship, did you know that he helped his doctor friend to go and buy slaves when he was free? Did y'all know that? This is y'all Israelite guy, right? Did y'all know that? Uh-oh, it's in his book. Chapter 11, he tells you. He said one of the things he regrets is being a slave master, helping his guy get slaves from Jamaica. And he said he got his fellow men from Igbo land. But this is why. I, I hate Alton. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, why was Equiana so smart? This is a map of everywhere he's ever traveled on a ship. This is why they said all these books were on ships that he read. But I'm going to get to what he said earlier, um, Mosquito Island and all that stuff, all right? Now, ladies and gentlemen. Equiano had a white wife. No, no, no. This is this is, this is a question. Equiano had a white wife. Shut the oh, no. Don't kick me off, bro. Please don't kick me off because I'm going to teach this, this crazy guy today. Don't debate Garfield ever. Watch this, family. He says, look at his comment. What does it have to do with him being from Nigeria? Now, watch this, family. Why did he remove that he was an Igbo from his book? <laughs> Watch this. Watch Garfield. This is why, let me tell you, leave Garfield alone. This is Equiano. His first edition of his book, he wrote that, yes, I'm an Igbo. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how could my brother, how could my brother, my big brother, who I love so much, Brother Barry, and nobody don't love Barry more than me. I love <laughs> Brother Barry. 
All right? Because Berene taught me a lot about masonry and all the connection. He taught me a lot. Now, watch this now. My big brother, Berene. If Berene writes his life story and Berene says, I am from Queens, New York. And he writes nine editions of the same book. Now, you have to be honest with yourself, believer. Why would Berean say in the second to the ninth edition, why would he remove Queens that he don't come from Queens no more? Why would All of a sudden. That? All of a sudden. Why would you do that? He removed Igbo because he was not an Igbo and he lied. So he had to change it because the Igbo community in, Af in, in England, and if you ever debate me live, bro, I'm going to bring out the information show that Igbo was beaten upon him. How, how are you going to put out that to you from Igbo? Why he put it out? Because he was selling information to the people. He was the first. Bro, I went to England last year. I got the pictures of his publishing house. He's the first black man ever to publish his own book. He funded all of this. He made millions off of this book. Now, watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, Bereen. He removed Igbo from his book. Why? Let's take a look. See? He says he's from Fruitvale. It's named Isaka. Where is Igbo at? He removed it. Here's another edition from his lifetime. The second edition. Look right here. See? Fruitvale, in a charm Fruitvale named Isaka. Where is Igbo? He moved it. I was born in the year 1745. Situated in a charming Fruitvale named Isaka. He removed Igbo. Here's another one written by himself. Where is Igbo? Gone. I put seven editions here. None of them have Igbo. He's from Igbo anymore. Not one of them. So you want to claim he's Nigerian. Why is it that he don't he took it out of his book? You can't deny the facts. Go to go to Hattie Trust right now and you could download all the editions of his book from, from second to ninth edition. You can't do that because even if you want to say he's from Nigeria, why are you hiding? Why are you taking that out of your book, bro? That's the book you wrote. I'm from, I'm from such and such in the year 1745 from Isaka. By the way, nobody has been able to find Isaka. Nobody. I watch this family. And, and this, is, this is very important to everybody who wants to know what's going on here. Let's go to slide number 24. Now, he said, how, how long Garfield be on? I got to put my timer on because I want them to. I want Israel to come on here. I'm on Israel's side. Y'all already know that right now. I gotta see that response to this right here. I got, I got three of them. I got three brothers in the back right now. Go ahead, Garfield. You talk your talk. I'm getting hate mail messing around with Garfield. Why did he change he was Jewish? Okay, it's been about five minutes. Uh, five minutes, I believe. That's all. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because the daggers coming so hard, they want. Oh my God, they want to take me out. Time, time. <laughs> now he said. He said to y'all, "How could he know he's Jewish? How could this guy know he's Jewish? Did you know that he teaches that the Jews were white? Did y'all know Equiana taught that the Jews was white? Did y'all know he painted his face white and went to court to?" Hey yo, hey yo, Garfield, hey yo, Garfield. I'm, I was just joking before. You can't come back on here. You can't come back on here talking this craziness. But I'm gonna show the primary. It's in his book. If you read his book, you would have seen this. They don't read his book. Oh, but watch this. Watch this. Watch this, brother, because I'm going to show the primaries. Watch this. He's saying, the manners and customs of my countrymen and those of the Jews before they reach the land of promise and particularly the patriarchs. Right? This is from his book. At this point, Equiano weaves into his discussion the biblical commentaries. He said, how he know about Jews? Why is he reading John Gill's commentaries and John Brown and Arthur Bedford? This is how he knows about religion. He cites these writers in order to present as their confirmation of his casual impression what is actually a well-scripted, thoughtfully orchestrated argument designed to persuade the reader that the Igbo are derived from biblical, specifically Jewish ancestors. In his autobiography, in other words, these commentators seem to confirm what has long struck him as more than coincidental similarities between the Igbo and the Jews. Equiana gestures toward Dr. Gill's commentary on Genesis to note how Gill 
Ablin deduces the pedigree of the Africans from the descendants of Abraham. John Clark and Arthur Bedford's scripture chronology. He informs the readers both corroborate Gill's findings. Now watch this. A careful study of Equiana sources, however, reveals that none of these commentators actually claim that Africans are descendants of ancient Jews. He made that up. And then he used the sources to say that they claim that the Africans come from Jews when it was all him. Because he wants to assign himself to be a Jew for a purpose. So he had to lie. You ain't going to Equiana like me, bro. Watch this. The claim is Equiana's exclusively. But because Equiana anticipates that his readers will likely reject any interpretive creative creativity on his part, he attributes the biblical commentators who are familiar to his English readers to claim that the Igbo nation is of Jewish origin. So he's trying to say that these authors said that, but they never did. It is true that English biblical commentary commonly identified Africans as descendants of biblical characters, but not the ones whom Equiana suggests. Equiano claimed that descendants of the biblical Hebrew patriots eventually made their way to West Africa, producing the Igbo nation, a people whose religion bore in his estimation clear evidence of Jewish origins. Watch this. Equiano anticipates, hold on it, employs, da 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 da. All right, now watch this now. Remember I said that he said that the, the Jews were white originally? He employs subtle ironic maneuvers to explain this enigma, enigma of white-skinned ancestors producing dark-skinned peoples in Africa. Why would he want to explain why white-skinned people now are dark-skinned? He's trying to imply that the dark-skinned people in Africa come from white people. Watch this. He announces that this difference of color between the Iboan Africans and the modern Jews is a problem beyond his abilities to explain and for which he fiends not to bear a solution for his readers. Despite this self-abnegating posture, however, explain if he does, Equiano cites two instances of Europeans, Spanish and Portuguese, settling in torrid equatorial lands and over a few generations becoming as dark-skinned as the peoples indigenous to those regions, the latter producing perfect Negroes, as he says. It is clear from the context of his discussion of the Portuguese However, that these perfect Negroes resulted from intermarriage between white settlers, white settlers and Native Americans. Not me, my brother, Yara. White hey, yo, hey, yo, uh, right hold, on. hold on, my brother. What did Equiana sources actually claim about African origins and how did Equiana incorporate them into his argument? I'm not going to go too deep into this. Y'all got to watch my channel for that part. But I do want to go to my next slide, which is 2446. 2446. In his same book, Equiano's Life Story, and I'm going to prove to y'all that he wanted to be white. I whited my face that they might not know me. Race and identity in Oleada's Equiano Slave. How many of y'all knew that he went to court and dressed up as a white man? How many of y'all knew that? How many of y'all know that? The powerful underline is striving not only to be perceived as a rational, capable, and intelligent black man, but also as a human being of moral virtue and standing on, eth on equal ethical terms with Europeans. When he arrives in England in 1767 as a free man, his desire for self-confirmation is translated into a deep-seated determination not only to imitate his former white masters, but even resemble them in any way. Now watch this and read with me now. Screenshot this. I now not only felt myself quite easy with these new countrymen, but relished their society and manners. I no longer looked upon them as spirits. He's talking about white men, but as men superior to us. He's saying white people are superior to us. And therefore I had the stronger desire to what? Resemble them. To imbib their spirit and imitate their manners. I therefore emb embrace every occasion of improvement and every new thing that I observed, I treasured up in memory. He wanted to be white so bad. Is this why he went to Jamaica and got slaves? For his... Uh-uh. Garfield love them people. Garfield doing too much right now. Somebody said Uncle Ruckus Doctrine. Garfield doing too much right now. Garfield doing too much right now. All right, um... Alan, Abe, who want to come on here first? Garfield doing it. Yo, Garfield. Yeah. Hold on one second. Please give me. Uh, 
Hello? No, no, hold on. Go ahead. What, Goff? What? 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 Let me finish, please. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Please. You've been riding for about an hour, man. No. I know, no. My man timing it. Don't worry. Y'all better go. You don't worry. When you get up here, when you Israelites get up here, y'all better talk that talk. All right. Now, now, now. The type of one if y'all think Garfield giving him that work. I'm talking about from what y'all see on screen. I'm hearing the stuff about Equia. I can't lie. I didn't know. Now, watch this. He look, look at this white girl now. This is page 49 in his book from the 1789 edition. This mate had a little girl about five or six with whom I used to be much delighted. I often observed that when her mother washed her face, it looked very rosy. But when she washed mine, it did not look so. I therefore tried oftentimes myself if I could not by washing make my face of the same color as my little playmate Mary. But it was all in vain, and I now began to be mortified at the difference in our complexions. This woman behaved to me with great kindness and attention and taught me everything in the same manner as she did her own child, and indeed in every respect treated me as much. All right? Um, hold on one second. I got three more. My sister said me. this is nothing but white supremacy. Ah, she said you push it white supremacy because, because, oh, man, yo, I, I can't, I can't call it white supremacy. Because because he's sharing this right here, I can't call it white supremacy. Because one thing is being overturned or to debunk don't mean automatically it's lifting up the blonde hair Aryans. Don't think that for one second. Okay, now why? Did God, feel enough, brother, enough. Why did Equiano make up? This, this dude is hard headed. This hold dude on, is hard headed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why did Equiano make this up? A lot of people don't know that Thomas Clarkson. And this other guy had a bet that he would could produce some guy that was a slave that could write about what actually happened on the slave trade. Did y'all know that? These two white men had a bet. They made Equiano. Thomas Clarkson made him. He found one black guy before who wrote a narrative, but the narrative didn't have somebody who was actually on the slave ships. So there goes Equiano. Watch this. Why might Equiano have created an African nativity and disguised an American birth? Before 1789, the abundant evidence and many arguments against the transatlantic slave trade came from white voices alone. Both opponents and defenders of the, of the, of the trade recognized the rhetorical power an authentic African voice could wield in the struggle. In an essay on the slavery and commerce of the human species, Equiano's future subscriber. All right, good. They call it golf. Let me finish this point. Let me finish this point. And then you're getting out, bro. You got to go. Yeah, I know. The future subscriber, Thomas Clarkson, acknowledged the desirability of hearing the victim's point of view. Clarkson dramatized the transatlantic slave trade by placing such and such and such. But anyway, let me move to the next the next one. Um, Gilbert Franklin, an apologist later, responded to Clarkson in an answer to Reverend Clarkson's essay. He said, horrid picture of West Indian tyranny and brutality, and this is drawn upon the authority of people whose names Mr. Clarkson ventures not to produce. He says, I challenge Mr. Clarkson to produce a single man of decent character who ever gave him such an account. I do not mean a gentleman. I do not mean even a white man. I defy him to produce a Negro of character who would not turn pale in fabricating such assertion. I call upon Mr. Clarkson to produce any book he perused in which he found such stories. And that's when Equiano came into play and they put the story together. But I want to make one last point. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I'm done with you, Garfield. I'm not showing no more sources. I'm not showing no more sources. What I'm going to say to everybody is this. I showed Equiano saying he's from here twice. He's he went. This is why he changed his mind. And this is for Yara, for your knowledge, bro. When he became free and he was working on the ship at 28 years old, saying he's, he's from South Carolina, he helped his doctor friend to, to get slaves to start a plantation in Mosquito Shore near in Nicaragua. He went to Jamaica and got slaves, right? When he got the slaves and helped the guy, he was trying to come back to England, but the guy's ship he went on pinned him up and hung him up and almost killed him. When he almost killed him, he begged for his life. When he begged for his life, he said, send me back to England. That's when he became this great abolitionist and say he's anti-slavery because he thought he was white, Marine. He thought he was a white man all this time because he was free. So he did the things that white people did. He wanted white woman. He wanted a white girl. He made his face white. 
He wanted to be imbibed the spirit of the white man. He wanted to be white. Hey, so yo, Garfield, I hate you. I'm Garfield, I hate you, bro. I hate then, you, bro. Then he wanted to be a slave master. So he helped his friend to start a slave master. If he was such a big time Israelite and cared about black people, why start a slave plantation with your white friend? But when he got hung, that's when he come back to England. And that's when he started doing all this stuff about back to Africa and help with the abolition of slavery. Let's not play games right now. And then he changed his name. He never used that name, um, Oliada Equiano. No time in history he used that name before the year of the book. I'm done. I don't even need to be on the show no more. I'm done. Now he leave him. Now he leave him before I can put him out. He know I like putting people out. Now you want to go. You hold on right now. Oh, slick Jamaican. Hold on, Alan. I want you to go first because you brought up. You brought up Equiano. I knew once you, I, I didn't know what name you were trying to say, but I once I said, oh, hell, we in trouble now. Alan, I want you to go first. Well, well, first, I'd like to commend the brother that was, um, that went against him. He destroyed him beautifully. You feel me? Now, let yeah. me show you where the problem is in Garfield. He, he'll go to um, certain sources as lies. Number one, if Equiano was free, we know Americans was not free at that time. England set up a system where the slaves could buy their freedom after a certain amount of years of slavery, right? So he got holes all through his, how can Equiano be from America when they were still selling slaves in America? That makes absolutely no sense. He's full of, he's full of, so, No, me. say that one more time. What you said, say that, say that again. What you just said? Okay. During, when, during that time when Equiano bought his freedom, that system was only available in Europe, in, I mean, in England. America did not have that system yet that you could buy your own freedom. What year was this? This was in the, the late 17, early 18s. Um, sorry, 17. I got, I got to look at the date in the book. But they were still selling slaves in America. You understand? So, so, yeah, so the point is, go ahead, go ahead. I just want, also, I want you to keep talking. Hold on, hurry in, hurry in. Hold on one push. second, brother. Hurry in, hurry in. This is Garfield. One second. Equiano says in his book he was made free. You're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. Stop interrupting, bro. No, no, if he was made free, hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. Let, let, Alan, you brought it up. Go ahead, Alan. He bought it. He said, all right, all right, all right. Keep going, Alan. Let me he keep going. He's been, he been saving money trying to buy his freedom through the whole book. So, well, Garfield is full of crap, and Garfield knows that. And um, the other thing, where was the book published? Why was it published in England? Why wasn't it published in America? How did he go to college at, during them times? Black people wasn't going to college. He went to college in England. So w by Garfield, he's reading sources of people that start to see that people are waking up and say, let's change this real quick. That's why Equiano changed certain things because he because he knew he couldn't get away. I, I, you got me a little no, lost. No, I can't lie. no, no, no. I, I ain't say that's why Equiano changed it. I say that's why some some Caucasians put out certain narratives and made um commentary about it. But it's impossible for him to be born in America if he was able to buy his freedom. Oh, at that time, the system was only England, and why did he publish the book in England? So how are you gonna say he lived in America? That's retarded. All right, Abe, you wanna you wanna touch this right here, or you gonna hold off on it? Yeah, yeah. So, so when it comes to the Equiano, uh, I don't know all of everything. All right, so you might have to just hold off on this. Ain't no sense of coming yeah. up here, Barry. Ain't no sense of yeah. You go hold off. All right, um, all right. Subscribe to Israel. Come on, bro. It's on you. You got you. You got the time. I gotta walk away, J Mac. You got him. Just give him some good time to respond. Yeah, go this, ahead. Go ahead. Nobody. Garfield ain't cutting you off. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm quiet. Everybody so, quiet. I can hear you. So be quick because Garfield thinks that he's the only one that studied Equiano. And I'm going to show y'all why Garfield can't be trusted. It's three cards. You want to pull up a screen before I walk away? Or yeah, you yeah. I'm going to show Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now. I want to show y'all something, right? You see my screen? It's up there. Right? So when he says he married a white woman, this is where Garfield is disingenuous. His wife was an Irish woman. She was a slave herself. 
People don't know that before the 1600s, before the transatlantic slave trade had occurred, and up until the time, almost up until the 1700s, the Irish, the Irish were also slaves, even in the Americas. So this woman, especially even in England, this woman that he married, she was a slave. She was a maid. Look at this right here, family. When the Irish weren't white. So at that particular, let's put it in a period of context. At the time, Equiano married this woman. She was not considered a white woman. That didn't happen until the Catholic Church in the United States said, hey, look, we got some folks here from the Catholic Church say, look, we got some folks over here. They ain't necessarily black African. We need to make a distinction. And through political gains, they became white. This is what the whole story about the gangs of New York is about. If y'all want a historical reference, it's about the Irish coming from one class to a new class in the Americas. But before then, they came over on the same slave ships as some of the African slaves. So his wife at the time in the period context wasn't a white woman, Garfield. That's another strike. You're a liar, right? Number two, let's deal with again with Equiano, right? Let me go to this source I got here, right? Let me see if I can... Um, let me see if I can uh, blow this up real quick so I can get to this link. And also, that was one of the reasons he wanted to paint his face white or have a lighter complexion like we see a lot of our people do today, right? And we see a lot of Africans doing today. They wanted to uh, 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 align themselves to not to go against the narrative of being slave or a lowly person, right? So watch this. This is Eric Michael Washington. He's an associate professor of history at Calvin College, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Let me see if I can get this link real quick, right? Now listen to what he says. Let me hide this. Listen to what he says. Oladaro Equiano's argument against slavery was his life experience. Watch this. The Ibu writer wrote honestly about the brutality of his experience and of the Christian faith that sustained him. Watch this. This is Eric Washington, right? Professor, I just showed you professor uh, at Calvin College. He says, and first of all, let me address another thing that Garfield erroneously said. He said he, he, he uh, 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 Equiano was reading the Bible. That You're not going to find the Jewish customs that Equiano remembers directly in the hebrew bible to that degree you would he would have to be influenced by some type of judaic culture or hebraic culture not the christians not the christian writers you were referring to just now watch this he says the word of god was sweet to my taste yet sweeter than honey in the honeycomb christ was revealed to my soul as the chiefest among ten thousands wrote an 18th century British seaman in 1789 as he reflected on his conversion to Christianity. Garfield, not Judaism. He had way since been talking about uh, uh, his, uh, uh, his, his, his origin was of Judea, uh, was, was similar to, to those uh, uh, in the Jewish diaspora. Conversion that occurred five years previously. This Christian was a previous enslaved man known as Gustavus Vassa, who through writings, writing his own life story became the founder of a literary movement known as Slave Narratives. His work was published under his birth name, The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Oludawo Equiano. So you're talking about why he didn't pu keep publishing and publishing and publishing and publishing and publishing years later. But we know his original work was published under his birth name, Oladawu Equiano. Come on, Garfield, stop with the three-card money. A resident of London during the 1780s, Equiano became involved in British abolitionism and was a vocal opponent of the slave trade and in slavery until his death in 1797. His interest in narrative served as the foremost abolitionist writing of the day because he was an African voice that described the violence and degradation of the slave trade and of slavery itself. 
Equiano's narrative spurred nine English editions through 1794 and was published in Dutch, French, and Russian. And if you remember my slide when I showed y'all the various publications of his work, all of them on the preface of the page gives his birth name, Oladawo Equiano, also known as Gustavo Vasa. He never detracted from his name. You're a liar, Garfield. Look at it. Find it. I dare anyone, including Garfield, to show me a publication of those various editions of Oliaco Equidano's story that doesn't show his name on the preface, on the page, as soon as you crack the book. It says Oladawo Equiano, also known as Gustavo Vasa, in every edition. So how is it that he's writing this, but it takes it out of the narrative of the story in the book, but he forgets, he forgets to erase it from the preface of the pages, Garfield? You're erroneous with this information. Let's continue. Equiano's narrative spurred nine English editions through 1794 and was published in Dutch, French, and Russian. Watch this. Distinguishing himself from the arguments, watch this. Now, remember, he just said that Thomas Clarkston made a bet with another white guy to produce this fake uh, 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 Nigerian-born African slave to present him as the epitome of, 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 of trying to identify as white, right? He said Clarkston made this, they made him up. They created this narrative for him. Watch what Equiano says, what we know historians say, real historians. He says, distinguishing himself from the arguments of abolitionists, Thomas Clarkson and John Newton, distinguishing himself, Garfield, from the arguments of abolitionists, Thomas Clarkson and John Newton, Equiano's Christian argument against the slave trade and slavery proved historically unique because he wrote about the horror of slavery having experienced it firsthand. In his memoir, he drew connections between his traumatic life experience and meeting God. Watch what he says. Now, every leading provincial circumstance that happened to me from the day I was taken from my parents to that hour was then, in my view, as if it had been just then occurred. I was sensible of the invisible hand of God which guided and protected me when in truth I knew it not. Still the Lord pursued me he never left away from the old uh, from the uh his tradition and his claim of being taken from his parents in nigeria that's false and this is in every addition to the very last one in 1794 this is it is an excerpt in every edition of the book garfield showed us slides from his own book with no sources, where he changed the narrative and conveniently left this out. Garfield, you a poor researcher. And not even that, you're disingenuous. Life in Igbo land. Much of what we know today about Equiano comes through his own words. According to his interesting narrative, the author was born in what is now eastern Nigeria in Igbo land in 1745. Note. While historians have questioned his account after Thank reading you, the arguments and doing my own assessment of the documents, I am inclined to trust the veracity of Equiano's story. Unlike accounts of enslaved people that began in the Western Hemisphere, Equiano introduces his readers to his homeland and people and focuses on the types of government established in his Igbo village, as well as his communities, marriage, customs, arts, and agriculture. According to Equiano, one of the Igbo Igbo community's chief beliefs was in the creator of all things, hallelujah, who governs events, especially our deaths in captivity. It was this Igbo uh, pedest, uh, pedest, uh, predestinarian conviction among Igbos that likely made it easier for Equiano to accept the Christian doctrine, not a Jewish one. He wasn't converted to Judaism. He had no, Judaism, no Ju uh, Jewish influence in the Americas or in England. Garfield. So where did he get that from? His homeland, his memories, his life experiences, as he said, the Christian doctrine of providence of God and is a major theme of the work. 
This is in every edition of every book that Garfield talks about. He never, he never put down his origin in his place of birth. You are lie, Garfield. He never moved away from it. His writings also compare Igbo and ancient Israelite practices. Nothing Igbo, uh, noting Igbo circumcision and suggests that Igbo and Jewish naming practices are similar because the two cultures named their children in the light of an important event or notable circumstances surrounding one's birth. In fact, the text goes so far as to argue that Igbos, all Africans, in fact, originated from the Jews. Now, all right, I'm sorry. Hold on for a second, brother. Do me a favor, y'all. I want you to put at Garfield or put Garfield or subscribe to Brother Israel right here. I want to take a series of questions from what y'all heard, yeah, and I'm gonna put them up on the screen. But just let me know if it's directed to God. Who is the directed to? That's all. Go ahead. Right. Thank you, um, um, Red Letter. I appreciate you, fam. Right. I appreciate you also, brother Moran, for this time. Also, he says, as for one of only a handful of 18th century Afro-British writers. Equiano makes the counterculture argument that Igbos and Africans are equal image bearers to Europeans. That's why he was painting his face white to make a political statement, not that he wanted to be a white man. Uh oh. This is in his book, Garfield. And they live in functioning societies complete with the sexual division of labor, a robust system of injustice, a complex religious system. Equiano's descriptions of his people contains none of the stereotypes that Europeans employ to paint Africans as savages. Further, he refutes the idea that darker skin denoted inferiority, instead drawing upon European writings that argue that climate produced dark skin. He also turns to the scripture, to the Bible here, Garfield, which you don't read. And you don't believe in citing Acts 17 26, brother Maria. God, who has made one of blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. Uh oh, that's scripture. That's give Bible. me one, God. Give me one, Maria. Give that's me one. Bible. That's Bible. I can't lie. That's Bible right there. That's in the Bible. Book, that's Bible. The end of innocence. Equiano was 11 years old when Igbo speaking slave captured stole him and his sister away from their home. But he wasn't immediately shipped off to the British colonies. Instead, he worked as a slave in numerous households in what is now Nigeria. So he even spent more time after he was taken from his homeland and taken from his mother, not from his homeland, but taken from his community, taken from his mother. He still didn't leave for the Americas right away or the British Isles right away. He still worked as a slave in Nigeria. So he wasn't that far removed from the customs of his people. At age 11, I remember things when I was two years old. While enslaved in his homeland, kidnappers kept Equiano separated from his sister. In his memoir, he writes that he grew to the point where he yearned for death. While he did not record any harsh thoughts he had about his African masters and mistress. So what he's saying is, Slave captors took him from his homeland, took him from took him from his community. These slave captors were African slave captors. These were African slave captors, not whites that came and got him from his village first. These were African slave captors that had him working in various homes and places in Nigeria. You a poor researcher, Garfield. Your three card money uh, pseudo intellectualism is dead, brother. In this memoir, he writes that he grew to the point where he yearned for death, while he did not record any harsh thoughts he had about his African masters and mistresses. Equiano had choice words for African slave catchers and called them what? Uncircumcised. You uncircumcised Philistine, Garfield. This is what Equiano is dealing with. After about half a year, Equiano arrived on the west coast of Africa, so he really didn't leave Africa until he was about 13 years old. Garfield, you mean to tell me the man don't remember where he came from at 13? Where he was sold one more to European slave traders then boarded a slave ship bound for the Caribbean. They didn't even bring him to the Americas. Equiano refers to his treatment by European slave traders in the Middle Passage as a new refinement in cruelty. 
and paints a picture of the errant journey on a on, on, on board a slave trip. No other slave narrative offers an account of the ship ride as lengthy or descriptive as Equiano's. He describes the filthy living conditions he and fellow Africans endured, the suicide of a couple of captains, and other types of cruelty hurled at him and his shipmates. At the end of his account of the Middle Passage, which is in his book in every edition, Garfield, Equiano pauses his narrative and addresses the reader. Might not an African ask you, learn you this from your God? Who says unto you, do unto all men as you would not or should do unto you? That's more scripture. The slave vessel carried Equiano to Barbados, the easternmost Caribbean island and an inglorious part of entry of thousands of captives. Equiano remained in Barbados for only two weeks before embarking on another slave voyage to Virginia. He remained there briefly before he was purchased by Michael Henry Pascal, a lieutenant in the British Royal Navy. Under the ownership of Pascal, Equiano traveled to England, was baptized into the Church of England in 1759, and learned that his and learned his baptized state afforded him his freedom. This is why you see the discrepancies on his birth certificates and in his baptism and his age. Because he was trying to make his way closer to freedom, Garfield. This is why you see that. It's not hard for us to figure out for those who read with sincerity and honesty and don't have an agenda. But this legality did little for Equiano. You see that? He was trying to manipulate the system to get closer to freedom. It says, but this legality did nothing for Equiano. After serving his master for a number of years, even serving in the seven-year war, French and Indian War, Pasco decided to sell with Equiano. Upon loaning this, Equiano protested, arguing that Pascal had no right to sell him because he had been baptized. By the laws of the land, no man has a right to sell me. Unfortunately for Equiano, there was no law. He once more had to swallow the bitter pill of slavery in the Atlantic world. About a century before, British colonies had ruled that baptism had no bearing on the status of an enslaved African. That's what the whole issue of his birth certificate and baptism was about, Garfield. You watching that? You watching your thing, J Mac? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's got he's got two minutes left. Right. So um, let me go down here to the end of this. <coughs> let me go down here to the end of this because this is a long article, and I'm gonna put this in the chat for anybody who wants to read it. I don't see no questions. I'm just putting up comments. Y'all don't got no questions. I'm putting up comments. Y'all can say what y'all want. Find another channel putting up all these comments. Super right. chat or not. Up on this screen right here. Y'all can say what y'all want. We Pentecostals over here, but we fair. Yep, we the people. We the people. Uh, uh, Elder Mike, get ready to get blocked. This is the first time I blocked the Elder in the Lord. Let's, let's, let's deal with this right here. Right? In 1773, Equiato returned to London after a harrowing voyage during which he almost died. This is where where Garfield was talking about him being hanged and why he went back and did this and did that. Whatever. Let's talk about what he says in his book, not what Garfield made up in his own book with uh -oh. no forces. He near, his near-death drowning experience had turned his mind to his eternal destiny, and he later wrote that the voyage had caused me to reflect deeply on my eternal state. Not that he wanted to be a white person, and to seek the Lord with full purpose of heart, ere it was too late. He also explained that he was determined to work out his own soul salvation, and so doing to procure a title to heaven. Equiano began attending Anglican churches and Quaker meetings. He studied Roman Catholic teachers, and he even considered Judaism. Watch this. He then consented to just read the four Gospels. And whatever sect of party I found adhering there to such, we would gain. The following year, Equiano attempted to help a formerly enslaved person win back his freedom after the man's former master illegally re-enslaved him. You can't dismiss his work he did as an abolitionist. Talking about he 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 helped some white man uh, uh, by force as a slave, garner to try to get uh, 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 other white uh, other uh, Africans into slavery. Despite his efforts and those of the other abolitionists, the man was taken back to the West Indies where he died. 
Equiano was miserable after this news. He wrote, suffering much by villains in the late cause and being much concerned about the state of my soul. These things brought me very low so that I became a burden to myself and viewed all things around me as emptiness and vanity, which could give no satisfaction to a troubled conscience. In the midst of his depression, Equiano returned to the sea, traveling back to England. During the voyage, he became introspective again, considering the ways in which God had predestined every good and bad step of his life. I was from early years a, a predestinarian. I thought whatever fate had determined must ever come to pass. Through the cultural worldwide view, he learned as a child, Equiano found God at work in his life when he had been enslaved and when he had been rescued from near-death experience. He had survived these things to be able to finally receive the grace offered to him by Christ. Though Equiano desired to return to Africa, he never did. Whether the love of one's country be real or imaginary or lesson or reason or an instinct of nature, I still look back with pleasure on the first scenes of my life, though the pleasure has been for the most part mingled with sorrow, he wrote. Though he admired England and his people and was a committed Christian, he was still an Igbo whom, whom God had chosen. Equiano lent his voice and his pen to the cause of suppressing Britain's role in the transition. All right, brother. In 1776, Harold Michael, Michael Washington, Washington, Calvin College, Grand Rapids, Michigan, on the work of Equiano. Go look it up for yourself. I dropped the link in the chat. All right, um, Abe, come on. It don't have to be on Equiano. You want to share anything? Concerning what you heard before we get out of here, Abe, or you walked away again? No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. All right, good. Yeah, so uh, uh, well, I was listening to the Equi the Equiano uh, conversation, and um, it was just some questions I had because it was sound like um, it was sound like he was saying um, uh, basically once I guess 70 A.D. when the Israelites had left um. Uh, uh, Jerusalem, or right, what he said basically, Israelite culture is null and void, like it, it stopped there. Because I also heard him say something about that Equiano wasn't learning or he didn't keep his culture. And I'm just like, we all know that everybody haven't been able to successfully keep their culture, but some and most have still been trying to. That's why a lot of times they were being scrutinized or being killed because they were trying to do it, but the one specific uh, one specific uh, account is when the Haitian, the Haitian revolt. So we know for a fact that everybody ain't been able to, lack of better words, decolonize. But the, the point is, it's been uh, a need or for the peoples to even being colonized to still want to keep their nationality, heritage, culture, however you want to put it out there. Uh, so it's just, I'm, I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to put too much, but I, I, at least that, that you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah, I do. All right. Um, J-Mac, you want to say something before I give to Garfield? No, no, no. That was all right. And then there's a couple of people, uh, Shari and uh, honestly, one got questions. So I don't know if they want to come up and ask or if they want Yeah, let me put the link in there if y'all want to jump on. Jump on now if y'all want to jump on. I'm going to step away for a minute because I know. Let me see. Um. So, or, or is it? Let me see. I click it or repost it. I put it on the screen. I see. Honestly, she's talking to Roger. That's a side conversation. You talking about this right here, J Mac? Yeah. All right. And where's Shari? Um. Where her comment? No, that's to spookism. That's honestly. That's fine. I'll respond to that. J Mac. All right. You can see. All right. Just all right. I moved this on because it's big on the screen. All right. No, no, no. Here she is. Right here. Matter of fact, I don't know how you want to do it. Um, Sherry, you coming on too? All right, I'm doing myself. Go ahead, J Mac. I, I don't know how in what order. I don't know if you want to, if you honestly want to ask Garfield before he even get in with the Equiano, but I'm gonna just leave Equiano on the screen. The chat's had enough of that Equiano, but um, go ahead, honestly. I'm mute myself. I'm stepping away for a minute. Grace and peace, everybody. Um, I just the question was for the Israelite brother, and I we were kind of uh confused at um some of the points that you were trying to make but before i get to that i just want to say to everybody in the chat please don't get lost in the emotionalism of either side i think that that's one of the things that black folks are often getting confused i mean accused of getting caught up in emotionalism and be being led astray by the persuasiveness of certain arguments please listen to the soundness of it and I know, you know, everybody has their particular side. And some of us are actually, <laughs> like myself, just watching to see how slick the arguments are because we don't necessarily have a dog in this race either way. But um, 
my question to the Israelite brother, um, what I had posted in the chat was, I and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like your argument against what Garfield was just saying is that you do you do believe and are asserting that Equiano is in fact a true Nigerian, that he married a, a white slave woman, although yeah, a European slave. I ain't say white. A European slave owner, and that he was um, a self-hating black man until he became a Christian and then studied other, um, and then became an abolitionist. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what I got from what it is you were saying, and I could be yeah, wrong. Are you with the questions after I go? Yeah, ab ab absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. Uh, oh, the man. article, the article, what I read from, <clears throat> from. Um, the article that I read from the professor, and let me give you his name again, because I just only posted the link in the back chat. Um, let me see if I can get it for you again. And if you can keep your question, your answer short, so we don't want to belabor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why don't we yeah, do the yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So again, just directly to your question, um, uh, I want to give you that young lady's name. I want to give you the brother's name. It's called... Uh, I'll put it in the back chat so maybe they can post it in the link for you so you can read the article. But um, absolutely not. I'm not agreeing at all with that. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying was he clearly uh, is a Nigerian-born Igbo. He clearly states that. He stated all throughout all of his works. He never moved away from that. Garfield was erroneous on that. At the time, in the con contextual time and when all of this occurring, he married an Irish slave woman. She's amazed she wasn't a slave master. She wasn't the slave master's daughter. That's false, right? Garfield tried to assert that. That never is the case. Her name is Susan. Actually, her name is Susan Cullen, right? So what, what you see is, is that she's a mulatto. She's really Irish, but she's wow. mixed, right? And the reason why you can call her a mulatto, because at the time she was considered a mulatto, if you study the history, because she was Irish, she was Irish. Irish weren't considered to be white people, right? Irish was also a part of the of the uh, of, of the slave trade, especially off the Barbary Coast during the same time. You see, you also actually, if you go into the history of King James, he talks about having Irish and African slaves, right? Slavery was a business, right? It was a business. It had nothing to do uh, to them uh, with a. Uh, 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 with the religion. It was just a business, right? And so the Irish were also slaves. So she was a slave. She was, she was, she was a, 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 a um, what you call it, not in the same class as you would consider a white person to be at that particular time, right? And so when you, so when you talk about that, and even that he married her, that's the only reason why, and let me make this big point. That's the only reason why he was even able to marry her legally, legally because she wasn't considered white. In the Americas and in England during that time, in anywhere you see in England or American province, it was illegal for a black person, an African person to marry a white person. And the only reason why they have a legal marriage certificate is because she wasn't considered a white woman at the time. Today, we consider Irish white. Today we do, but at the time they weren't considered white. Okay, does that answer your question, honestly? No, it doesn't. So I, it's, I got. I, I, let, let, can I, can I just this? I promise you this. this. Can I? Can I finish? Can I finish my question? Because my, I just said that you were saying that you believe this to the Israelite brother that you believe that this this guy was in fact from Nigeria and that he married a European slave. And you yes. said, that's not what I was saying. Right, because you, you just added said something that, at the end. You added something on at the end. Okay, okay, so th that you, you disagreed with the fact that he was a self-hating black man until yes. he became a Christian. Yes, yes I disagree Oh, okay, so the first yes. part was correct. The last part was wrong. Yes. Got it. Correct. All right, that correct. answers my question. Correct. That's it. That's it. And I, I don't have any questions for you, Garfield. I was just trying to gain clarity on exactly what I thought he was saying. Right. Got Thank it. You, okay. Sister. Thank you. All right. Can I can I go now, please? <clears throat> yes, yes. You can go ahead and rock out, Garfield. Yeah, you're okay. You got 15 minutes, brother. Don't interrupt me. 
I, I'm just going to say this. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. That woman was a white woman, and I'm going to prove it with, with Equiano's words. I'm going to prove it because he had a problem with a, with a guy marrying a black woman in the Caribbean and how they had to hide. So when he was, he was married, he's like, yo, I got to go marry a white woman. He married a white woman. I have it right here. I wish to be acknowledged, not, hold on, let me, let me, just, let me just start this off properly. Let me, let me get to this right. All right? Let me answer the first thing I'm going to answer. Let's deal with the, the questions one by one. The brother brought up that in the 1960s or the 1760s that no person in South Carolina could, um, could um, what do you call it, be bought free or be free. All right? Now, I'm going to tell the brother, if you want to get that information, don't take my word for it because I'm the non-believer and the liar. So let's deal with it. This extra taken from chapter 7 of the interesting narrative contains Equiana's account of his own manumission in 1766. Equiana's owner, the Philadelphia Quaker Robert King, had in 1765 promised Equiano that he could buy back his freedom. Okay? So, bro, this guy used to take him to the Caribbean to the Leeward Islands and all those places. He was traveling all over. This is how he bought himself out of slavery. All right? Don't take my word for it. Take Equiano's word. All right. I dealt with that part. Now, let's deal with another thing that he said now. He said, Equiano, the baptismal record is what we go by. Yes, we go by that he was 12 at the time. Because he said he was 12 on the record. He told them he was 12. So why shouldn't we accept Gustavo Vasa saying, I was born in Carolina? He could have said, I was born in Africa right here. This is the problem. Now watch this now. And no record says that she was Irish, by the way, the wife. All right? Because that's a, that's a problem. He made that up. So and where the average come from? Oh, go, no, go, no, mind. go ahead. Let me shut up. I'm listening. She's from, She's from England, it. but she has a Scottish background. Irish is totally different than Scottish. Totally different. She's an English. She's English of moderate means. She never grew up in slavery. None of that. It's a lie. She's a white woman. That's what he wanted. He loved white people. He met her on the book tour. That's how he met his wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, I tell you. The muster roll. Let's go back to the muster roll again. He wrote in his book, this is a clip from his book. He talked about being on the racehorse. My master being anxious for the reputation of the adventure. We therefore prepared everything for our voyage and attended him on the board the racehorse. 21st day, da 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 and all this good stuff. Anyway, 1773, this is him writing where he's from. He says he is from South Carolina. Nobody is forcing him. All right? He gains his freedom. Let's come down a little bit down. Let's deal with the name on the, um, I think he misunderstood what I said. On the marriage certificate, and this is 1792, ladies and gentlemen, right here. 1792, it says Gustavus Vasa. He doesn't use the name Equiano. This is his will. He uses, his will is 1797. His marriage is 1792. So I'm going to say to the brother, am I lying? Is this a fake? Is, is this a fake primary? Because this is actually a primary account of his, of his wedding. Solham Community History Museum. This is a primary 1792. I don't have to shout and get all wild. Public Record Office of London, right here. 1797, Gustavus Vasa. He's not using Equiano from 1789. He continues to use Gustavus Vasa. That is the point that I'm bringing up. The issue now with um, the... the, 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 the um, He's saying the story of Ebo. He removes the part. If you look at this, let, let's, let's, let's be reasonable now. You don't agree with Garfield, right? Look at what he writes here. You see, when he says this right here, let me make this a little bigger for those who are at home on their phones, okay? When he says, I was born in the year 1745, he normally puts, I was born in Igbo. He removed that because he's his own publisher. Bro, I never said he removed the slave story. I said he removed that he was an Igbo. Listen, and that's another thing with Hebrew Israelite claimants. They don't listen. I never said that. And when he comes back, 
Do y'all notice something about Equiano's life story? What is his mother's name? What is his father's name? I'm going to show y'all this guy didn't even read his book. What is his mother's name, his father's name, or his sister's name? If Yara knows that, I'm going to be like, you know what? Yara, you are a beast. Because you have to read the book to know what those people's names are. Well, wait a minute. Give him a chance. You know that you're, you're familiar with the names, brother? Where's he at? I ain't put him in the back, did I? Where he at? You yell and put him out? No, he right there. Oh, okay. God, you familiar with the names, brother? He just asking, Garfield asking you a question. He might have walked away. All right, I'm going to mute myself. Keep going. Of course he's going to run. He don't know that because he ain't read the book. He fronting. That's the point I'm trying to make. He is fronting. Tell me, and that's for anybody in the audience, tell me his mother's name, his father's name, his sister's name, it's since y'all read the book, because y'all just doing using YouTube. This is why I got to be 100% honest with whatever I deliver, because I know people don't have the ability to study on their own. They don't have the ability, so they depend on people like Garfield. I don't have to believe in the Bible 100% to be, to be truthful. I'm telling you what it is. So this is why I put three different editions on here to show that he took out the word Igbo. He said, I'm from Igbo. He took it out. See, I was born Igbo in the year 1745. Where's Igbo? It's removed. Let's go to another edition. I was born Igbo. See, I was born in the year 1745. He put Igbo. He always put Igbo in the first edition. See, here's another one. I was born Igbo in the year 1745. There's no Igbo there. Let me show another edition. I was born Igbo. It's not there. Four different editions that I posted. I could post from the second edition to the ninth edition. He took it out because of the controversy. He was never an Igbo. He was not an Igbo. Period. It's said in the story. He said, take his word for it. Okay, let's take his word for it. Are the Jews originally white? Because that's what's in the book. If you want to go by what the book says. Remember, if we're going by what the book says, you're going to have to prove to me that he said that. Now, let's look at let's look at this slide right here real quickly. Here. This slide talks about him helping. It. This is chapter 11 in the book. Remember the debate I had with Reggie and saw Neda said at the end, Goffey, you got to show where he was a slave master. You were working. Yes, this is chapter 11 is where he talks about him being a slave owner. He, he had a mind. He said, I was once happy, I was happy once or more amongst my friends and brethren till November when my old friend, the celebrated Dr. Irvin, bought a remarkably fine sloop, about 150 tons. He had a mind for a new adventure in cultivating a plantation at Jamaica and the Mosquito Shore. Asked me to go with him and said that he would trust me with his estate in preference to anyone by the advice of therefore of my friends. I accepted the offer. He embarked with him. See, he's talking about under God of bringing some poor sinner to my well-beloved master. He's talking about taking these people. And if you read the book, the actual book, this is his writings. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't, don't you read Jeremiah 8, 8? The God send a lying spirit. Come on, honestly. Garfield know the Bible. So I sent a lying spirit so I would draw him out. And he fell, he fell for it. He fell for it, sis. He fell for it. I knew it. And I knew I, had, I didn't have to say anything. That's the point. So everything he said, I'm debunking right now. All right? So anyway, why would he marry to a white woman? Hmm. Very interesting, Garfield. Let's take, a, let's take a look at this right here. 2464. Let's take a look at this right here. Okay. All right. Certainly the most dramatic final proof of Equiano's successful racial assimilation is the reference included in a passage added to the six and subsequent editions of his life. So ladies and gentlemen, this was added. It's not in the first five editions. To his marriage to a what? His marriage to a what? White English woman. Garfield, you, Garfield, you got five. You got five minutes left, and then Shari's going to ask her question, make her comment. All right, Susanna Cullen, a mention that follows almost perfunctorily from his diary of engagement in the abolitionist movement. I remained in London till I heard the debate in the House of Commons on the slave trade, April the second and third, 
I then went to Soham in Cambridgeshire and was married on the 7th of April to Miss Cullen, daughter of James and Anne Cullen, late of Eli. Um, I wish... Hold on, hold on a second. You know what? I actually have the wrong slide. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this the right one? Equiano refers previously in his story to the difficulties a white man faced in the West Indies in trying to marry a free black woman. Ended up having to move the marriage ceremony. Hold on, let me make this bigger here. So everybody could see this. Garfield ain't making this up. All right. Ended up having to move the marriage ceremony away from land and onto a boat on the water. Although he does not comment on its racial implications, Equiana's own marriage to a white woman in an English country church must have been an even more extraordinary event. Indeed, Coretta considers the mention of the marriage as representing a consciously symbolic link in the text between blacks and whites, Africa and Britain, an act that Equiana uses to demonstrate that the story of his own life anticipates on a personal level the bicultural union he calls for between nations. Certainly such as an unusual alliance in the 18th century acquires more than mere matrimonial meaning. Added as it is at the very end on the last page of Equiano's narrative, it is difficult not to avoid the conclusion that he himself wanted his readers to see the occasion as the ultimate stamp of approval and racial respectability that he had achieved. The white max that he has struggled so hard to acquire seemed to make a perfect fit, making him indistinguishable from the other members of the English middle-class family into which he had married. Moreover, so successful was he that, according to Coretta, within a few years, Equiano was to become probably the wealthiest Briton of African descent living in England. All right? Let me move on. Um, 2444. Let me do this again. Um, people, he asked about the Jewish sources. Remember, he wanted the Jews, he wanted Igbos to be Jews because Igbos, he's saying they were originally white. And not black. I read the source that's actually in his book. He talks about three guys. He talks about Gill, Dr. John Gill. He talks about um, John Brown, Arthur Bedford, and saying that these people say, said that the Africans were Jews. He misquotes them. He lies. They don't say what he says because he wants to make himself better. This is why he's claiming this Jewishness. Then he's explaining how white people become black by mixing with black people. So he is trying to say that white skin is what the Jews originally had. You see this? White skin, in other words, was normal. So it was only dark skin that required an explanation. He was saying the Jews were white and they turned black. Pay attention. He is married to a white woman. He disguised as white. Took Eva out of his book. And again, I want the brother to tell us what's his parents and his sister's name when, when he comes back, since he read the book. The marriage the certificate, his name, the his name is on there. The will, the name is on there. He didn't change the name. I'm just going to say to everybody, pay attention. I am telling you what he is saying. I don't care about nobody's opinion. He said the Jews were originally white. I, somebody needs to ask Yara, did he say that? Did he say that the original if Jews? He said that, if he said that, that's a problem, period. I don't care what nobody says. If he said that in that book and that come out of his mouth, that's a problem. I'm here. I'm back. I had to run and go get my mail. You oh, I thought, I thought you were. I figured so, but no. <clears throat> Sister Sherry, but Sister Sherry, go ahead, um, J Mac. What, is that? what was the order, J Mac? Yeah, yeah. Uh, time's up. Uh, Sherry, <laughs> Sherry got a question or comment. Go ahead. I'll mute myself. Grace and peace, y'all. Y'all, excuse me, I'm super sick, so I'm going to just ask one question. Um, what does Equiano's background offer the entire Israelite community? Or in another way, well, how did, how did, why did this whole thing come up? No, 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 Who's that addressed to specifically, sister? No, 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 it's addressed to the whole panel, if, if you guys yeah, it's, yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a very good question. Well, go ahead, anybody. She said the whole. She said the whole. And plus, in the comment well, section, well, a, lot of, like a lot of when it comes to the Israelite community, most of the attractions, especially to Israelites in America, Black Israelites in America, the issue, the the, the biggest argument it is, the biggest argument that it holds is 
is that there is no evidence pre-colonial times, pre-colonialism, right, or before the slave trade that anybody or during the time of the slave trade that there are no blacks, no black or, or West African slaves that had any connection to Israel in the Americas or claim it to be of Israelite culture in the Americas. Uh, Gust uh, 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 Gustavo Vassa or AKA o o o Oladawo Equiano in his own words and his own eyewitness accounts gives us this uh, evidence, right? That he himself is the evidence that their narrative that says that there's no evidence connecting uh, 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 black Israelites uh, from the West Coast of Africa in the Americas any time during the slave trade or any material culture that existed. At that's all. important. That's important to the narrative, uh, not just the only one, but it's important to the narrative of, of quote unquote, black Hebrew Israelites in America, right? Uh, and those that profess a connection. Because what they try to say is there is absolutely no way that this is possible, that they never existed, right? Even in anything that uh, in the Hebrew Israelite community is a black person, that we have no connection, and that what we're trying to do is acculturate someone else's culture. We're trying to take over someone else's identity, much like those who claim to be Jamaican took over the Taino's culture and start calling themselves Jamaican when that's not even a, a, a African word. They stole an identity, like Garfield. His, his his family stole an identity, but they walk around calling themselves Jamaican because they were born in their land. Don't worry about it. No, I'm talking about history. Are you a Jamaican? If you want to talk about Are you a Jamaican? Are you a Jamaican? Hold on, Mary. Mary, Mary, hold on a second, Mary. Very. I know the truth hurts. Why are you bringing up my family? I know the truth hurts. I didn't say nothing bro, about bro, your family. I said you're Jamaican. You said you're Jamaican. My you said I said Jamaicans. No, Jamaicans stole the culture. Stop you being sensitive. I wasn't family. talking about you your. I wasn't talking about you. All right, all right, hold on here. We're not not your yeah. Dutch don't address the family specifically, but we don't want to get off of the subject of Equiano. She asked specifically why he was explaining that. We ain't got to blow shots at golf, and he was asking you about. About the uh, you know the sisters, you know you know you know Equiano wife and all of them. You know the wife and them name while she were going to get your mail. No, 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 he, no, the question is, does he know Equiano's parents' names? Yes. Okay, that's what we're I'm, I'm, we trying to get to that right now. Yeah. Is he asking me do I know Equiano's parents' names? Yes, correct. I, know, I, I don't. I don't recall his mother and father's name, but I know he gives their names in the book. I don't recall okay. it though. He does give their names. If anybody reads his book, their names are in there. And guess what? They're Igbo names. Okay. Why, why, you know what? Where, do you have the book beside you, bro? They're Igbo names. I want you to tell me his father and yeah, his father. I just told you I don't remember, but are they or are they not Igbo names, Garfield? What's his, what's his family? He's he not going to answer my question. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to prove that he's a fraud. He doesn't mention his father's name, his mother's name, his sister's name. This you just threw that out there. You know his sister's name. This dude is a fraud. He let me show you. Let me pull up my screen. Let me show my screen. I tell you. Let me change my screen. You are a liar. Let me change my screen right now. You are a liar. That's what you're saying. Hold on, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me share my screen right now. Hey, hey, I got him, Berean. I got him. I got him, Berean. Berean, I got him. I got him. I got him, Berean. I got him, Berean. I got him. All right, Sister Chairman, come on and finish your statement. Yeah, uh, Garfield, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, sister. Um, anytime. Go ahead, sister. Are you are you gonna still do that debate with uh, Moore on the uh, some slave possibly coming off the slave ship? Yeah, Excuse he's me. To, he's to get back. Yeah, he's supposed to get back. To oh, okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure. I was, I'm looking forward to that to that discussion. Uh, Y'all be blessed. I'm gonna go lay down. To answer your question. All right, sir. Thank you. The reason that why. Was the, yeah, I think. Good, you still answering her? Yeah, because remember, there's no reason for um, there's no reason for they they need somebody to assume that this Jewish identity, Berean, the Jewish identity is what he made up with John Gill's work. John hmm. Gill and them wrote in their commentary that Africans, like they would talk about um, Moses' wife, and said Moses' wife that he had was a Canaanite woman or Ethiopian. And said that she's African. That's what they would talk about in their commentary. So what? That's the African connection that these guys with the Bible commentaries are doing. What Equiana did was 
key source used them and said they said that Igbos are Jews. That's what he did in his book, which is a lie. So that's how he's making his connection because Jews are chosen. So as a Christian, he must have read the Bible. He reading John Gill. Nobody in that time period was black was reading John Gill Berean. That's like reading some of the top scholars, Bart Ehrman and Richard Carrion of, of today. So mm. he's reading top scholars about Christianity and Judaism. So at the end of the day, that's where he made his error because the people who read those works knew they weren't talking about Igbos. So that's how he made a connection with Igbos and Jews. Then he said the Jews were light-skinned. So he said the Jews were white. He explained it that they got they slept with African women. That kills Yara completely. He said that the Jews were white in his own writings. How much more do we spell it out for you? That's that's being totally disingenuous. He lied, and you'll never be able to show he said that. And I'll dare you to pull that source up. You just lied. Right now. Can I watch share up, my watch screen, Berean? Can I share my screen, Berean? I've been watch waiting for you to share your screen. It ain't up here yet before Sister okay, Sherry even up. I thought you should be here. The sister was talking. Watch this. When he talks about his family, right? Watch this. I'm going to show y'all what he knows about his family. This is why Garfield is a liar. Go ahead. Watch this. Uh, let me get it from my, um, let me get it from here. And uh, I got to pull this up, right? Uh, let me do well, Martha, you said you was gonna post something up too, right? What you said you was yeah, gonna pull yeah, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put it up. Yeah, right let now. me pull this Don't up. Real quick. Let me see if this link still works, real quick, right? Now, again, this is the, this the screen you want to pull up. I ain't pulled it up yet. I'm waiting to see. Make sure you're on your right screen before I just show everything on your screen. You yeah, I'm on, I'm on the right screen. I'm on the right screen. All right, it's up, it's up. Can you see? Okay, this is the most extensive work, scholarly work, anything out there regarding Equiano is right here. Not Garfield's lies, not anything I have to say. The most extensive work by the scholars is right here, right? This is called Equiano's Well. And let me show you, this is by Professor Lovejoy. I told y'all earlier, he kills anything Garfield has to say about Equiano. Now watch this. He talks about Equiano's Igbo family. Now tell us where he got that info. He gets this information from Garfield. He gets it directly from Equiano, right? Watch this. This is what he says. As a child, Oladawu Equiano was part of a family that included six siblings. How do we know he has six siblings and not just a sister? Now, this is commentary. This isn't Equiano's work. This is commentary. Oh, this, this is the top. research. This is the top. This is the top research in the field. That could be the difference. That could be the difference. That could be the difference. This is not his specific Garfield. word. Let him go, Garfield. You pull your screen up. Let me see what he's yeah. saying, though. All this right, he's just saying what a scholar is saying. Go ahead. Right. This is the top research in the field on Equiano, not Garfield's guess. No, but no, Garfield is quoting Equiano's work. No, he's not. He's misquoting Equiano's work. All right, work. go ahead then. Keep reading. Read. I'm, right. I'm, I'm he, said, he says, as a child, Oladawo Equiano was part of a family that included six siblings. Most of the times what you read about Equiano, he only ha he only mentions his sister. But Equiano goes into talked about and shared in many instances, he had more than one, just one sibling. He had six siblings who lived beyond childhood. He had one sister, and he was the youngest of five boys. Mm. While he mentions only his mother, he mentions his mother. It is possible that his father had more than one wife. His father owned many slaves and was one of the elders of the village in which they lived, as attested by the fact that he had the Ichi facial markings that designated the status. Oladawu's older brother also had received the Ichi uh, scarification, which was a further indication of the status of the family. As the youngest, he was considered his mother's favorite. Where do we get this information from on Equiano's family? From Equiano himself. And no one's able to debunk this or deny this. So when Garfield constantly says... Wait a minute, you reading this right now or you freestyling right now? Because these words are small. When Garfield, said, when Garfield makes the statement that he's not an evil, the top scholars disagree with Garfield. The top scholar in the field says he's an Igbo. How is Garfield able to come on here and say, no, he's not, simply because he doesn't think hey, so? Hey, Berin, excuse me, Berin, Berin. I'm listening. Berin. I'm listening. Let, let, me, let me know when it's my time to share my speech. Yes, let me, yeah, let me see. Let him just wrap up. Let him just wrap up. Yeah, I have his fine. actual book. I have his actual book right here. Well, I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. Now, right do here. me a favor. Hold on a minute. Do me a favor. Type of one. The top scholar saying something and the words from his own book. 
Which one? Which and I'm talking to 260 people in here. Which one? Which one? One carry more weight than y'all? Go ahead. Um, go ahead, Israel. The thing of it is, the scholars are quoting from his book. Uh, well, we got. Uh, well, we got it. All right, that was. Gonna make you know what? No, God, let him go. Let him go. Then you got to go. Let him go. Another two. I accept that. Just let me know when he's done because I got his book right here. Let me know. Okay. All right. All right. Um, right. go ahead. Israel. So. Right here, we see the, the 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 scholarly references who've taken directly from his book in what he actually what uh, uh, Oladawu talks about, right? In the home of uh, uh, home of uh, uh, Agu, when you talk about Oladawu Equiano, linguistics and anthropological uh, search, right? The Igbo roots of uh, Oladawu Equiano, right? By Catherine Ochilano. Right, these are people who are have African roots themselves that are studying this. M. H. Abrams, the Northern Anthology and English Literature, they talk about this. Right, Catherine Ochiano. If y'all really want to get into the history of Equiano, she gives the one of the one of the most extensive writings. Catherine uh, Obuju uh, Lanu, the Igbo roots of Ola Dado Equiano of the African World Press. So we have African scholars researching the African history of an African, not the white scholars that, that he keeps bringing out that says, no, he's not. And then he said he wants to go into Equiano's book. They're only taking from Equiano's work. Let me go back. Well, let's, right. well let's look at the primary Equiano work. If that's the primary, let's look at the words in, in the primary. Let's look at let's look at it. If them is his words and that's his book, let's see what his words say. They could say anything, but them words is them words is that basically a secondary versus primary argument. But go ahead, I'm mute myself. Right, right. Let's check this out. Right, it says Gustavo Vasa received the name Oludawo Equiano when he was an infant, as he notes in his autobiography. Our children were named from some event, some circumstance or fancy foreboding at the time of their birth. This is Equiano's words. If, the, if we're going to go, his, so his, on his book is the only primary that we have, then we have to go with his words. So when Garfield says he's not Igbo, you're lying. Because if, uh, if Oleano's words saying that he is, then that's what it is. You can't Make all of that big right there from where it say our children. That's his autobiography. Make all of that big right there. That's what you're reading right there. What's that saying right there? That indented the part. From our children were named. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, no, let me go back. I just missed a hold on. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Because I broke the reading list. Let me go. Somebody back. else said the same thing. The book hold most. Everybody, everybody that said the book. Everybody, at least 15, 20 people. Right. So let's check it out. This, if the book hold more weight, let's see if he, if that's the case, then. Let 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 it be written. So let it be written. So let it be done. No, no, no. You just had it up there. What happened? Right here, you go right here. It says our children. This is. Uh, but he don't take the whole screen down. No, this is it right here. It wasn't big enough. I couldn't get it to go big enough. I'm it saying I don't. Tell me, type one if y'all see the screen. I'm scared. You don't see the screen. You erased the whole screen. You don't see the screen no more. Oh, hold on. Here you go. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm it scared. did go out. I'm sorry. There you go. Right there. I got it. I got it right there. Uh, I think that's where it is. And I'll go back to it. And then I'm going to go right here. The significance of his name. This is from this, is from, this is from Equiano's book. If this then is holds the weight for the foundation of what we should go by. This is what he says in his autobiography. About Make that, but all right, go ahead. But that yeah, happened. Our children, our children, all that in there. Some cool. event, some circumstances, or fancy foreboding at the time of their birth. I was named Oluwadu, which in our language uh, signic uh, signifies vicissitude of fortune, also one favorite and having a loud voice and well spoken. I remember we never polluted the name of the object of our adoration on the country. It was always mentioned with the greatest reverence, and we were totally acquainted with swearing and all those terms of abuse and reproach which find their way so readily and copious into the language of more civilized people. The only expressions of that kind I remember were, may you rot, may you rot or may you swell, or may, uh, or may a beast take you. 
He did not comment on the second part of his name, Equiano, which was certainly not a sure name since Igbo culture did not use surnames, but rather an elaboration on the name Oludawu, his birth name, his birth name. That's in his book. You want me to continue and show you other things that he says that he says he's an Igbo? If that's what we're going by, if we go by his words, he says he's an Igbo, you don't have nothing to change it. You're not going to show us nothing in any of his writings that says he's not an Igbo. It's not a presentation time. We're doing back and forth. So can you? Yeah, I'm doing back and forth, and you'll get your turn. All right. No, Barry, this is taking way too long. That's okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you get it in. Go ahead. I yield. Now, I just proved to the whole world, and I hope y'all know, this is the five-minute and seven, five-hour, seven-minute mark. I asked him. I said, what was Equian? I mute your mic, bro. Don't interrupt. I asked you, what was Equiana's mother's name? father's name than sister name he ain't sure he said oh we got this and then he googled something right away he ain't got no name to show because he's a fraud and i keep telling y'all this this is why you can't trust any believer this is why you should trust me more than a believer because they'll fake it to win an argument all he has to say is i don't know that's it if exactly what I said. Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. Yeah, he did say it. All right. No, no, no. Don't say nothing now, brother. Let him let him go ahead, nah, nah. Go ahead. Let him go ahead, bro. Remember when the brother came on and he said he has a book about the will, the work on the ships, the Castellanos? And I said, well, what's the name of the book, bro? Because I never heard of that before. But then we found out it was Equiano. We oh, yeah, yeah. Alan, Alan. Yeah, Judah. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to Alan because I was there taking notes. I respect yeah. people. When, when, when Yara is talking, I'm taking notes. I respect anybody. But the truth of the matter is he proved he is a fraud to everybody that's the 250 people watching. And that's all. My night, my day is over just based on that alone. But let well, me God, you're going to and shit and stop all, and stop all, this, all, all this carrying on. All the same. This. Make it big. Make it big. Make it real big so we can all see. Let me show this because this was in my slides. It was in my slides. This was in my slides. And I'm going to show it right now. Okay. Basically. He says, such is imperfect sketch. My memory has furnished me with the manners and customs of people among who I first drew my breath. And here I cannot forbear suggesting what has long struck me very forcibly, namely the strong analogy, which even by this sketch, imperfect as it is, appears to prevail in the manners and customs of my countrymen and those of the Jews before they reach the land of promise and particularly the patriots while they were yet in that pastoral state, which is described in Genesis. Analogy which alone would induce me to think that the one people had sprung from the other. Indeed, this is the opinion of Dr. Gill, who in his commentary on Genesis very aptly deduces the pedigree of the Africans from Afer and Afra, the descendants of Abraham by Keturah, his wife and concubine. I'd said Moses earlier, so I was incorrect. Let me correct myself. He was talking about Abraham and Afer. All right. Now let's scroll down a little bit. And this is Equiano's book. As to the difference of color, this is in my slides. This is exactly how it's in my slides. The difference of color between the Eboan Africans and the modern Jews, I shall not presume to account for it. It is a subject which has engaged the pens of men of both genius and learning and is far above my strength. The most able and reverend Mr. T. Clarkson, however, in his much admired essay on the slavery and commerce of the human species, has ascertained the cause in a manner that at once solves every objection on that account, on, on my mind at least, has produced the fullest conviction. I shall therefore refer to that performance for the theory, contending myself with extracting, extracting a fact as related by Dr. Mitchell. The Spaniards who have inhabited America under the torrid zone for any time are become as dark colored as our native Indians are of Virginia, of which I myself have been a witness. There's also an instance of a Portuguese settlement at Mitombo, a river in Sierra Leone where the inhabitants are bred from a mixture of the first Portuguese discoverers with the natives and are now become in their complexion and in the holy quality of their here perfect Negroes, retaining, however, a smartering of the Portuguese language. These instances and a great many more which might be adduced, while they show how the complexion of the same persons vary in different climates, it is hope may tend also to remove the prejudice that some conceive against the natives of Africa on account of their color. Surely the mind of the Spaniards did not change with their complexions. Are there not causes enough to which the apparent inferiority of an African may be ascribed without limiting the goodness of God? I, I mean, if y'all want me to go down further, he talks about Europeans and comparing them to Africans because, again, 
the time period that he's in, he's saying basically Europeans mix with black people, you mix with natives, you become this, you mix with these people, you become this. And he's trying to say Africans are not bad because of their color of their skin. That's basically what he's saying. No, what else, what else, can, I, what else can I draw from Equiano's words? I didn't make it up. He made it up. And I could go to chapter 11 now. I could move on. Give me a little, little bit of time. Let me move on and show. And, I, and again, let me remind everybody, we're still waiting for those names. <laughs> oh, man. Let me stop sharing, man. Me... And then after that, and then Israel, I want you to know what question you want to ask Garfield. I want you to ask him two questions, and he can ask you two questions. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I got to show the part when he says he's an Igbo. Hold on. Oliada Equiano. Let me do this. Oliada Equiano. We're going to go to the first page and show where he says he's an Igbo. Let's share this first screen. The interesting narrative. I think he agreed with that. No, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. No, 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 this is very important. I want y'all to see something very carefully here. All right, this is chapter one. And we're going through the first verse. I am from, all right, right here, look at this. This kingdom right here, this kingdom is divided into many provinces in one of the most remote and fertile of which call Igbo. See, this is where he says he's an Igbo. I was born in the year 1745. Does everybody agree that it says that? Does everybody who what, reading the screen agree that it says call Igbo, Igbo? Watch this now. Let me share my other screen now. Watch this. Let me share this, this screen. And I want y'all to look at this now. Since, Gar since Garfield don't know what he's talking about. Look at this. This is... The interesting life of Equiano. See? The African. Look at this. Which I was born. See? The remote in one of the most remote and fertile of which I was born in the year 1745. Igbo is gone. My point is, after the first edition, he removed he was an Igbo. So Bible way community, I don't care what you say. I'm talking about what Equiano did. He removed it. I didn't move it. Now look at another edition. Here's another edition. I was born in the year 1745, da, 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 da. Again, no Igbo. Let's go to another edition. I'm going to show four, just to make my point. Five, actually, five. This is the third one. Look, see? The fertile, which I was born. Igbo is gone. It's not there. Let me show the fourth one, the fourth piece of evidence. See? Right here. From it's in one of the most remote and fertile provinces in this kingdom I was born. Where's Igbo? That's four, four witnesses. Let's go to a fifth witnesses. In the Bible, you said all you need is three witnesses, right? I'm showing five because he had nine editions of the book. After the first edition, he took it out. He took it out. See, I was born in the year 1745. Where is it? In one of the most remote and fertile of which I was born. See, he took Igbo out. That is the point I'm making. From the second edition to the ninth edition, he took out he was an Igbo. Do you want to go to a door debate? And I'll bring that information out. Why? I'll bring out the primary sources. Why? Because basically, the people in London who he grew up around, a lot of them were Igbo, including Kabuano, Kabawa, or whatever his name is, and other people. They were Igbos. There's a lot of Igbos in England. So he going around saying it's an Igbo is a problem for people who are really Igbos. Ladies and gentlemen, I, rest, I showed five witnesses. Five different editions. And if you want to get them, go to Hattie Trust and sign up. It's a free account, HattieTrust.com, and just look up the old editions of Equiano's book, and you'll see for yourself. That's all I'm saying. All right, Israel, you want to ask Garfield a question before you get out of here, before I put him out forever? Would you yeah, like to yeah, ask him a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want to hear, oh, I want to see that, that account, that the last account he was just saying about um, that there were Ebo saying that we don't want you saying that you evil because you're not evil. No, I'm not showing that. No, you, no, no, no. You just said it was it showed up in later accounts. He didn't say that. They didn't say. I don't think the way you say it, Abe. No, no, no. Okay, see, see, I, 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 when the English people I, I, say that he, he, um, he, um, what you call it, said he was. Yes, there's records out there of, of people, Igbo people in the UK having a problem. With it. Yes. And yeah, so, so that's that's hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's a very good question. Abe, no, Abe, open up your mic. Open up your mic. Let me say something to you real quick. Right. Abe, why, if you wrote a book, and I gave the analogy with Brother Berene earlier. Brother Berene says he comes from Queens. 
and he said, I represent Queens, Queensbridge, right, with Nas and Marley Mall and all of them. All of a sudden now, in edition two to nine in his book, he removed that he's from Queens. Why would, he, why would he do that? Okay, okay. So um, I know you you're not a fan of uh, 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 conspiracy theories and nothing like that. Uh, but I wouldn't. Oh uh, boy! No, nah, I, right, I mean, if you want to listen to me, you want to listen to me. If you go don't, ahead, go ahead, beloved. Beloved, go ahead, man. Go ahead. What I'm, I'm saying is, I'm I, I, I'm not I'm not against or knowing that what propaganda is, and I would ask why would it be put in the book in the first book in the first place like why was it in the first book in the first place and then it wasn't in the you could say the six books afterwards i would think that it was propaganda or i would think that it was conspiracy i'm i and again this is from a person that don't know but look, you at, can't, look, you can't. look at jay jack's question this is a no put it back put it back put it back jay jack's asked a beautiful question did he remove it or did the publishing company remove it guess what sis I went to England last year and I, and, I, and I toured all where he lived, his publishing company. He owned everything. He's the first black man ever to do that. He was the publisher. He was the publisher. That's beef right there. Yeah, I hate Garfield. I don't care what y'all say. I hate Garfield today. I used to like him before, but not no more. Brother Marine, I'm out, Brother Marine. I'm out, man. I think all right, fam. All right, fam. Hey, all hey, right, man. He going there. Let's cut him up. Come on, J-Mac. Come on, J-Mac. <laughs> Jay, like, uh, what are you on this right here? Hey, that was a very. I think that was very um, informative for the for the for the for the panel. I mean, for the uh, uh, chat, and and you know, hopefully everybody was paying attention to all the information coming forward. And um, you know, um, guys were making you know good arguments, but the 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 question is, what what does the information say and if is what garfield saying is true or is what the uh other brother was saying is true but they both can't be right at the same time no, you're gonna have to make up your mind right. you gotta make up your mind and all all of this stuff and it was it was i couldn't even get past the i didn't even get to stephen darby and every, whatever everything else i wanted to get to but I don't know. Maybe we, we'll we'll just we'll just pick it all up. But it's all from what Bishop Nathaniel shared. I'm play this and I'm gonna get out of here. Appreciate you, bro. Fair use. Next book: Pictorial History of Israel. Let's go inside. Take a look. Unto thy seed. What do y'all see? You see black Jews, black Israelites working in ancient Egypt. Let's see what this is from. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechme, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter one, verse 13 and 14. What color are these Israelites? What color are they? This is ancient artifacts, ancient black. They are painted as black in the tombs. All right, here's Harper's Bible Dictionary. This is page 331. In 701 BC, Assyrian king Sennacherib conquered most of Judah, including the fortress city of Lachish. The victory was recorded in remarkable detail on base reliefs at his Nineveh palace. This scene is poignant testimony to the plight of his victims, who were deported with only what they could carry on their backs. Let's take a look at Judah. Do y'all see this? This is the Snackling Guard. Look at the people of Judah. Look at, look at their hair. Look at their hair. This is a stone relief. Look at the little boy. These are not Caucasians. These are not Edomites. These are black men with cornrows. Two A. I'm gonna look at page, picture one, picture two A and two B. Fresco paintings from the Western Wall of the third century AD synagogues at Dura Europas, a city on the Euphrates River 
in Syria. At the right, 2B depicts Moses three times. From far right to left, Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Let's see what Moses and the ancient Israelites look like. Bang! There's Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, it said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here, and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. That don't look black to me. That's do or Europa, y'all. We pulled that up. That don't look black to me. The hand of God is black. That's Aaron. Is Menorah. Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses again. Moses with the staff held over his head and the Egyptians being drowned in the Red Sea. A study of race and environment by Maurice Fishberg. Published in 19, 1911. Going over to page 64. Watch what it says. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. And you know the original Jews, the real Jews, are a dark complexion race. I'm on page 149. It is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. Bastion speaks of Negro Jews living on the... Oh, Alton, Dunamis, I'm sorry. Jump on. Jump on if y'all want to say something in, um, in closing. Somebody said shout out to Timmy Tim Tim. That's light-skinned Tim. He did bring that up, I don't know, 18 months ago? I, I, over a year ago, he bring... That's how I'm surprised for Nathaniel to bring this up almost two years later when Timmy Tim Tim and so many others been bringing up Kevin G and them Dura Europa. Been, been bringing it up. I'm surprised, but this is Bishop Nathaniel, and he's bringing it up, trying to show them pictures and tell me that that's Black Moses. I'm good. Me, personally, I'm good. But I know if you believe something, you'll see what you want in the text and the picture, which is second century sources. That goes way, way, way back. So that throw up that 13th century, and I know those that call themselves Jews and trying to talk about light-skinned Jews are fake, and that's the only beef. Nobody on here beefing about are there Black Jews. Remember Ethiopian Jews, are there Jews that can you convert? Are there Jews of every color? Nobody debating that. But there are a few black Americans, specific, specifically the camps, that's arguing other people are fake and all of this other stuff. And this is where the beef come in because light-skinned Jews been around almost as long as this whole thing been around. And that's a problem. Longo Coast in West. I'm gonna put the link out there, Alton, if y'all wanna if y'all wanna um if you want to say something on, on that specifically or, or dunamis, I forgot. I know I cut y'all. I know I kind of cut y'all off from earlier. In Africa, they are called there Mavambu or Judeos. And these are Bantu. Okay, there's a lot more. Those of us that came to America. So I'm showing you that the real Jews are black. That's my only thing. How can you talk about the real Jews now compared to what a biblical convert? This this is where the confusion coming when y'all start coming. Well, originally the Hebrew Israelites were black. What did they talk about when they start running around here preaching that the real Jews are black? That's where some people got some people like yo. They just they put ultimately they push this in doctrine, but they say it's Hispanic people are Jews too. So when the Hispanic Jews came, if we deal with the twelve tribe circles, almost every camp. I don't know if y'all know y'all name one. I don't know a camp that don't go with the chart. Hold on again. Oh, I got a um. I forgot about this other thing here too. Let me see. Um, is this it? Let me stop. Hold on one second. I'm trying to um. 
trying to get this thing right. I don't know where this, I don't know. I should have played this one from the beginning. I don't even know how I, how I get to this right here. How I did, how I missed it. Should I say? Have you ever? All right. Let me, um, let me see if I can pull this up whilst I'm waiting for them dudes. If they're going to jump on share. All right, I think fair use. I think this is it. Never encircle an all white Christian church. We've never done it and we will not do it because it's not a part of our mission. That's um, them answering Geno Jennings. That's IUIC answering Geno Jennings. Tell me your thoughts. We don't care what goes on inside the white Christian church. We're going to answer, have we ever encircled an all-white Christian church with the scriptures? Give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them. He, a command is an order. He gave an order saying, saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. So we're not paying attention to you white Christian Gentiles. You're not Israelites. Read on. And into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. So he said, Don't go into the Samaritans. Why did Jesus talk to a Samaritan? Why didn't the gospel later on go to the Samaritans? But they say they're not worried about white folks. So they're answering questions. That's why it would encircle Geno Jennings church. That's why they blitzing and they running up in Tony Evans church. They running up on Creflo and them. They running up on different churches because they believe that they're Israelites inside the building. And I guess they want to wake them up. Not. Because we had sprinkles of Israelites there, but it wasn't. So, um, forget in light of that whole Dura Europa, forget what they're saying. They Dura Europa. Them folk look European, but they're not European. It, it's it's a bowl of confusion. Fair use. Time to get them. Northern Kingdom was there. Now they're giving you that Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom stuff. It wasn't time yet. But this is where Christ commanded us to go. Read on. But go rather to the Lord's sheep of the house of israel you know the difference of belief between so the lost sheep of the house of israel just the nine tribes that's just judah and them or was all up never mind fair use between you and the muslims so why have you never surrounded a mosque okay they started a diet and i'm gonna bring y'all um um nathaniel's video where they got a clip where Farrakhan, it's just a clip really, but where Farrakhan supposed to be rebuking Geno Jennings. But let's let's just listen to their answer. Off in the 80s and the Israelites started to rise in the 90s and now we don't even see them in the street. We bump into them and Deacon Abiel already played video of our encounters. They know nothing. And young men now are not going to join that stuff. Y'all, all you camp cats talking about Paul was a false apostle. Y'all just getting blocked right now. Ain't even no sense. In, ain't even no sense. Y'all wasting y'all time. I don't want to waste y'all time. I don't want to waste y'all time. A few stragglers, a few people my age, or the young kids that are into it now is because their parents forced them into it. But they don't have no presence inside the communities, inside the ghettos like they used to have in the 50s, 60s, 70s when they used to march. And Farrakhan used to come. Farrakhan has been exposed and trying to push Scientology and going back on most of the stuff. He don't have the influence he had before. That's the same Farrakhan they was praising for calling everybody, for calling us Israel. Farrakhan, Far Farrakhan was one of the first ones, the nation of Israel was one of the first ones talking about black folk of Israel. But they saying he ain't got no influence no more. That's how come I know about the doctrine and the war is with the black church. That's where the beef is at right there. Matter of fact, I need to, I, I can't even go on right now based on all of that right there. But if we go on and we start dealing with cults, we got to admit that cults have always been at war with God's people. Cults. Cults have always been at war with the truth of God's people, starting with Peter and the original Israelites. Their own Israelites were at war with them with the Jesus message. That's why them folk got beef with Paul. But I can show y'all what Paul preached and what Peter and them was doing. Them folk was all locked in hand in hand. Paul said, yo, I went up to Jerusalem to those that were apostles before me. They don't want the whole book. They want to give you that. They want to give you British Israelism. They want to give you British Israelism from them white folk. Because what a lot of these Israelites is teaching ain't what we see in the book of Acts. Ain't what we see in Galatians. Ain't what we see in the Gospels. But it's what we see in British Israelism with them white folk. 
Well, for, from the chart all the way down, it come from them white folk. Y'all are copycats. That's what a lot of this is. Oh, I'm going to let it play though. He has no control over the people the way the black Christian church has over them, so they are a waste. Seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers, why have you never surrounded a police station? Now listen to this right here, especially especially knowing Nathaniel and them and what and what he retired from. How come y'all ain't never surround the police station? Malcolm and the nation did that. But hell, Black Lives Matter get out there and get the get the hollering in front of the precinct, telling them cops picketing in front of the precinct. But look at the response. That's like my ass, y'all, when y'all run around talking about who feds and this and that. If I'm the feds and I see an organization and a group of black folk running around here, black men saying A, B, C, and D, I'm a one take over that organization to influence the organization. Or oh, I'm going to start the organization so I can have control of the minds of these black men. That's just me. Remember, Cohen Tell ain't never been dismantled. Gina, we don't surround police stations because we read our Bible. The Bible says this, Romans chapter 13, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. We teach so they teaching and preaching you got to be subject to the white man? Because now he quoting scripture, you got to be subject to the white man and to our oppressors. What, 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 the, what, what the hell is Daniel and them doing over there? That's what y'all teaching? That's what I you I see? Because remember, they the only ones out of all the camps got a 501c3. That, so, so now could this reply be exposing the agenda? Oh, oh, we we study secret societies over here. We study the occult tradition over here. Oh, so now, so you don't got beef with the police. You don't got beef with the government because you should subject yourself to the higher power. Well, well, well. Oh, that speak far. Oh, not to you dumb, deaf, and blind. But to those that got an air. To those that have studied the history. To those that have watched Cointel Pro. Boy, I'm thinking. Oh, no, this ain't got nothing to do with conspiracy. No, no, this got to do with facts and history. Wait a minute. They talking. They talking real. So now, Alton, they subject to the white folk. They subject to the police officers. They subject, and they want other men to be subject to them. This is real interesting for black power. This is real interesting if y'all coming back to destroy the wicked and to repay Edom. It's interesting that they can't, apparently they can't preach the fullness of the message. Or Edom ain't the white man. It's either, Nathaniel got to make his mind up. Said these Negroes can tell y'all anything. Nathaniel got to make his mind up what you're saying. Either you hear or then you can't be on the fence. Sound like he on the fence. Sound like he's subject to the police. Sound like he's telling y'all be subject. Uh, come under the authority of the police and do what's right. That's what y'all want y'all to do. Y'all don't want y'all to. Because how can y'all message and the message of these white police officers in America be the same when he's coming to enact vengeance upon Edom? Eat them, them white folk in the police department. Eat them, them white folk in the Vatican. Eat them, them white folk on Capitol Hill. Ain't that what that is? Ain't that what that is? This sound like double talk to me. I know what it is, though. When folk know how far they can go, like y'all claim them preachers, them 10% them folk that know, he know how far he could go. Y'all think, it ain't, it ain't what y'all think it is. But y'all know, y'all know y'all think it's that, but it ain't that. A lot of times it ain't that. Y'all could think of orders out there. Oh, that order is here for us. That order is here. That order is to calm y'all down. That order is just to give you enough to keep you quiet for another 50, 60 years. Trust me, ain't nothing coming to IURC. I could tell you that right now. And them folk ain't finna do nothing to the white folk. And, and their job is to keep y'all in check. You can talk all that other stuff. Talk that talk, but you ain't finna do nothing. Y'all ain't finna do nothing. I'm gonna tell y'all that right now. Y'all were meant to be subject to the higher powers. Why? For there is no power 
but of God. There's only power of God. The law enforcement exists because God gave them the power. It's got to stop. Oh, so when the white police bust them guns, let them guns go and get to hitting up black men, don't say nothing. Why, why? In, in that case, listen, why y'all going to Buffalo? Why y'all going, showing up at police shooting? Why y'all showing up in certain places? No, it's about a doctrine. You want to show up in front of church, but got to be subject to these white folk that's out here murdering? Ain't that what y'all teaching? Ain't that what y'all teaching? It sound it sounds contradictory to me. I'm surprised they would even read that scripture. Be subject to the white man in the land of your captivity. And that's what you should do. Daniel and them ain't run amok and go murdering up in the precinct when they was in Babylon. No, they sure didn't. So, you know, it, it's okay that they reading these good scriptures. Say that, read on. The powers that be are ordained of God. So why would we go and fight the police when God set the police up? Read on. All right, so hey, they're talking good right there. Don't fight the police. Let them just kill us. That sound like real camp talk to y'all? Or that sound like people is wearing fringes but really want y'all to do do do. They, they preaching exactly what police want y'all to. Listen, don't do nothing, y'all. God allowing this to happen. Boy, y'all funny today. I'm getting off here. Y'all funny today. Y'all can't see who the feds is. Y'all can't see who's influenced, who's really influencing who. Oh, I forgot. Y'all don't think the feds would go that deep to set up an organization. If, if, if these guys are talking about the awakening, we're going to have the ultimate camp bigger than all of the camps. The ultimate channels, ultimate videos. Go, this going to be the best camp of all camps. Most popular, most organized with a 501. Well, y'all go, go ahead and keep thinking crazy if y'all want to think crazy. I know why I you are see here. Oh, I know why they only in front of the churches. I know what's going on. Trust me, I know. It, it, it looks like it's that, but this ain't that. This ain't that, y'all, but y'all think it is. Oh, y'all oh, y'all do know what Nathaniel, you do know what Nathaniel used to be, right? Y'all do know what Nathaniel is, right? Y'all funny today. Whosoever, therefore, resisteth the power. Gino, come on. He's giving us instructions not to resist the power. Why would we surround a police station, Gene? That sounds just like police. That sounds just like police. That's police talk right there. That's detective talk right there. That's fed talk right there. That's Ku Klux Klan. That's white supremacist talk right there. Y'all take this murder. Y'all take us busting these guns. Y'all accept that. It's from God. God bless y'all. Berean Teach, gmail.com.